Lost Girl and the Alpha Mate, written by Alstra0807. My name is Ashlyn. I live in a small one-bedroom apartment on the edge of town. I work two jobs just to keep up with rent and my utility bills. I was a foster kid, so it's just me, no family, or anyone who cares about me. I am alone in this world. I just got home from working a 16-HR shift at the cafe. I am exhausted and hungry. But my bed I calling my name. I will eat in the morning, besides it's already 1am. I strip grab a new towel, heading into the shower to clean the day of my skin. The water is hot and trickling of my skin. I hurry to wash my hair and body and shave quickly. I turn the water of and wrap a towel around my waist and dry my hair with another towel. I walk into my room and brush my long golden brown hair and finish to dry my body. I slide red silky lace panties on and I throw on a nightgown that's silky and short I climb in bed and check my phone it's am. I fall asleep fast until I was woken by a pounding sound. I open my eyes and hear. Knock, knock, knock. Who would be at my house? At am I never get visitors. I slowly walk to the door and open it slowly. There is a very sexy man standing at the door. He is tall like six foot at least. He makes my five foot three figure look tiny. He has blonde hair, bluish green eyes that are absolutely stunning. He is tan around my age, and very muscular, almost looks like a model standing in my door. I look at him confused as he smiles at me. A can I help you? I ask him. He looks at me with a smile. Hi, I'm Kate Aya, was all he said to me. Well, I'm Ashlyn, but call me Ash, it's nice to meet you, Kate. But what are you doing at my house, Adam? I ask confidently. He pushes his way into my house, and I am shocked and for some reason, I am not scared at all. He shuts the door behind me and locks it before I can say anything. Ashlyn, I need you to grab some clothes and important things. You have to hurry up. We don't got much time, he says. What? Was all I could say. Ash, I know this will sound crazy, but there is men coming after you. I will keep you safe and protect you with my life, but I need you to get your things now, he says to me. Kate, I am not going anywhere with you or anyone. I said proud I stood up for myself. He grabs my arm pulling me towards my room. Once we make it to my room, he throws a duffel bag on my bed, and he starts to throw some panties bras in the bag. Kate, what are you doing? I am not going with you, I said as he looks at me with worry in his eyes. He starts to walk towards me, slowly pushes my back against the wall. I look into his eyes, scared he slowly leans down and captures my lips with his, and I feel like fireworks are exploding wherever he touches me. I throw my arms around his neck, not sure why. But I felt the need to touch him the kiss was needy and passionate. The most awkward but best first kiss I have ever had. He slowly breaks the kiss and looks into my scared eyes. Ash I know you have no reason to trust me. But you must come with me, I need to keep you safe. Kate says. Kate I don't even know you. I can't, was all I managed to say before I had people banging on my door. Cade, I said frantically. Cade grabs some more of my belongings and whispers to me as he opens my bedroom window. Ash, I know you're scared. I know you have no reason to trust me. But I promise to keep you safe, he said. Worried I nodded at him unsure where my voice went. There will be a wolf outside climb on its back. He won't hurt you, Ash, he said as he jumped out of my window. I heard a loud crash and ran to my window, not thinking twice about it I climb out, grabbing my duffel bag Cade packed, 
and I climb onto the huge brown blonde wolf. The wolf looked back at me. His eyes are blue-green, just like Cade's eyes. I grab tight onto the wolf, scared. The wolf starts running into the woods, not far from my house. Everything seems to become blurry. The wolf runs fast and runs for a long time, an hour or more, before coming into an opening in the woods. Wow, with stunning the moon is reflecting on the beautiful wild flowers. I gasp as I take in my surroundings. I look down to see the wolf. Suddenly stopped. I didn't notice it before. I just noticed the beautiful view around me. I climb of the wolf and stand beside it. I hear cracking around me. I look and see eyes that are slowing, coming closer. It's more wolves, more wolves stalking closer to us. I crawl under the wolf's front leg, close my eyes over tightly. I'm not scared of the wolf that brought me here, for some odd reason, but I am scared of all the other wolves that are slowly approaching us. I feel the wolf's hair turn to skin. I open my eyes, confused as to why the wolf's hair turned to skin. I look, and I am in Cade's arms. The wolf I was once holding onto is gone, and now I am in Cade's arms. I look into his eyes, confused. Ash, I know this is a lot to take in, but I will explain everything to you later. He said. I stood up, pulling myself out of his arms, even though I felt safe and like I needed to stay in his arms. Cade stood up and looked at me with worry in his eyes. I look down and I see that Cade is naked. Cade, you're naked, I said shyly. He chuckles at me. Yes, I am. Um, Cade begins to say, as I start to feel dizzy and unsure what's going on. Cade rushed to me, grabbing onto me. Cade, help! Was all I was able to say. His grip tightening on me, as the ground from under my feet disappears. I hear people talking, not able to understand them. Before it all goes black. Beep, beep, beep. Was what I first heard, followed by two men talking amongst each other. Cade, why did you bring her here? The one man said, "Dad, she was in danger." She is my mate. I had to protect her. Cade yells at his dad. I open my eyes and look at them, stare at each other intensely. Excuse me. Where am I? I ask them. Cade rushes to my side and grabs my hand, slowly bringing it to his lips, kissing it gently, like my hand is fragile and will break. Ash, you passed out. You're at the hospital. Cade says. But what happened? I ask quietly. Cade give me a gentle smile while tightening his grip on my hand gently. You were in danger. Cade begins, but I cut him off. Cade, I remember the wolves, the men breaking into my house. I remember being in your arms. I remember you being naked, and I remember you holding me against you. As I started to get dizzy, I said. Cade gives me a warm, loving smile. I pull my hand away. Who is your mate? Why am I here? Why did I paw out? I asked. Cade went to talk, but the older man cuts him off. Hello, dear. I am Cade's father, Ace Alpha of the Misty Falls Pack. He says I nod. I am Ashlyn, but please call me Ash. I said with a smile. Ash, you're my mate. Cade says with a smirk, love clear in his eyes. I look at him shocked. Mate, I said. Cade nods his head. Yes, mate. Cade says with a smile. Cade, what's a mate? I asked, sounding confused and probably dumb to them. Ash, a mate is when two people are fated to be together. You're my mate. My other half, you make me whole and complete me. Cade says with a smile. I was all I could say. It remains quiet until a woman in all white walks in with a smile. Are you awake? Hello. I am Dra. She says confidently. Um, hi. I am Ashlyn. But tell me, Ash. Um, when can I go home? I asked. They all looked at me. 
I want to go home as soon as possible, please, I said again. Ash, you can't go home. It's no longer safe, Kate says with a smile, the hurt evident in his face. Why can't I go home? I asked tears welling in my eyes. It's not safe, dear. You will stay with my family from now on. We will take care of you. Ace tells me. I bring my legs up and lay my head into my legs and begin to sob hard. I feel arms holding me and sparks and tingling. What is going on? Why am I feeling this? I look up to see Kate is holding on to me. Kate, why do I feel sparks and tingling when you touch me? What is wrong with me? I ask crying. He slowly grabs my face, so I look into his eyes. Baby, it's the mate bond. Kate says. I nod at him unsure what to say. Well, I shall leave you two alone. It was nice to meet you, Ash. I will get your room ready for your arrival. Ace say. It was nice to meet you, Ace ABD, thank you. Was all I could say, he smiles and leaves the room. Ash after you eat. And if you can keep it down, you may go home with Cade, Dr. Ray says to me. Why did I pull out? I asked looking at the DR. Well, it seems you haven't ate for a few days and your body couldn't handle it plus the shock of all you seen was too much for your body, Dr. Ray stated I nod at her. Okay, I would like to eat to go home please, I asked stated to them. Ash, they will be bringing food in a few, Cade says with hurt in his eyes I nod. I will send the nurse in with food, Dr. Ray said before she left the room. Cade grabbed my hand holding it as if it would break, if he wasn't gentle. I was locked with his eyes. I couldn't pull my eyes from his until someone knocked on the door before entering. Hello young Alpha, hello young Luna, the nurse greeted. I looked at Cade confused, he smiled. My name is Ash, I stated she looked at me with a smile and nodded. I brought you food, she says as she sets it on the table beside me. I sit up immediately walking over to the table, and I sat in the chair. I removed the lid. There was so much food enough for a few people. There was pancakes, eggs, sausage, bacon, waffles, toast, apple juice, coffee, orange juice, and water. I looked at them confused. Before I dug into the food, I took a couple bites before drinking some coffee. I was full. I pushed the tray away as Cade walked over to me. Ash, you need to eat more, he firmly stated. I am full, I said. Cade scoffed at me. Ashlyn, you hardly ate anything. You weigh LVS. You need to eat more. Your body needs it. He calmly yells at me. I am getting pissed now. Cade, I don't care if I am LBS. Well, LBS, my weight is my problem, not yours. I am full and that's final. I will not force myself to eat. I yelled at him. But was all I let him say before I cut him of. But nothing I am full. And if I eat too much I may make myself sick from my nerves. I am confused. And it will take time for me to adjust to losing all I am used to and moving in with a stanger. I told him his eyes beam of hurt and confusion but he leaves it alone. I am sorry, he says I smile. It's okay, I say. Now, let's get you home Ashlyn, Kate smiles at me. Kate, and I walked out of the hospital, and I looked around there was kids running and playing well. It was beautiful here lots of beautiful smaller homes, and a ways away there was a huge beautiful house. Kate grabs my hand slowly walking towards the huge house. It is stories high with big windows and balconies it looked like a mansion. Welcome home baby, Kate tells me with a huge teenage boy smile on her face. This is your house? I asked confused. Well babe it's our house, but there is a bunch of people who live here, he says. We walk inside and it's even more beautiful than I ever could have imagined. Wow, 
I said in a whisper, but Cade must have heard me cause he chuckled. He led me upstairs to the fifth floor, he opened a double door, and he led me inside. Whoa it's absolutely stunning, I said. Kate smiles with a chuckle. This is your room babe, Kate says. It's a light gray room it's huge and beautiful looks like it's made for a queen. It has a huge king bed, with a canopy a huge TV, and vanity with makeup on it. I open another door, and it's an attached bathroom it's huge and beautiful with a double sink, big person tub, and a huge shower the toilet is even nicer than the one that was back home. I chuckle to myself. At that thought I walk out of the bathroom, and open the double doors, it's as huge closet full of clothes, full of clothes, Cade walks to me, and wraps his arms round my waist. The clothes are yours I didn't, know what you like so I bought a bunch of different kinds, he says with a smile. I reach up on my tippy toes and place my lips against his. I have no idea, why? but it just felt right the kiss, soon turns heated, and passionate, before I know what's going on Cade, is laying me down on the bed, with his head moving up my shirt, Cade stop, I said, I'm so sorry, Cade said, Cade it's not you it's me, I am a virgin and I don't want to rush anything, I said he smiled gently at me, I understand babe I am sorry, but that kiss made me weak. I didn't hurt you, did I? Cade asked worried. No, you didn't hurt me. Don't he sorry I really like it. But I'm a scared. I have never do this, I said shyly. Cade grabbed me up placing his arms around me and holding me tight. I won't rush you, babe. He said I hussed, stood in his arms, with my head tightly against his chest. Kate, I am going to get a shower. Can you please stay? I asked. Kate smiled warmly at me. Well, baby, I will go grab a shower, and I will meet you back here. Is that okay, baby? He asked. Yes, I said. He kissed my forehead before walking out of the room. I went into the bathroom and stripped down placing my clothes in the hamper. I turned the water on in the shower and stepped in I was washing my hair. I was it twice in condition. It I wash my body scrubbing away any dirt that might be on my skin. Then I shave real fast and wash my body again. I feel so much better now. I shut the water of and step out of the shower to grab my towel. I dry my body, and my hair, I wrap the towel around my body. When I look up to see the bathroom door open, I jump a man with red eyes. Comes in, I scream, the man grabs me, and slams me against the wall. I hit my head and feel dizzy, but fight the pain away. I go to scream again, when he covers my mouth, and rips my towel off of my body. I am crying and screaming. He is running his hands all over my body. I hold my legs shut tight as I can. He forces his hands between my legs touching me. Such a pretty girl with a sweet pussy, he said as he pulls his fingers into his mouth moaning as he licks them. He is grabbing my boobs roughly and kissing my neck. I scream the best I can since he has my mouth covered. Cade comes charging into the bathroom. Get of her, Kate growls. The man looks at Kate and laughs. She tastes so good, Kate, I think it will make her mine, he said. Kate grabs the man on me as I fall to the floor and cry hard not caring I am still naked on the floor. Kate and the other man are fighting when more men rush into the bathroom. Kate pushes the man to the men rushing in. Take him to the dungeons, Kate says. Yes, Alpha, they all say in unison. The men all go taking my attacker with them. Kate walks my way looking hurt and pissed. Did he hurt you, baby? Kate asked worried. He he, was all I could say. Before I grabbed Kate pulling him to me. He slides of his shirt, 
gently pulling it over my head, and he covers my body with his shirt, he then picks me up and carries me to the bed. I am so sorry I wasn't there baby I should have stayed, Cade said with guilt evident. Cade who was that? I asked. A rouge was all he said before he got up to leave. Cade stay with me, I begged he turned and nodded his head. Of course baby I will stay, he said sitting down next to me. I pulled him close to me. Cade he touched me, he forced his fingers in me, I said crying. Cade grabbed my face gently kissing away my tears. S.H. Baby it's okay, I will take care of him. Are you hurt? He asked I shook my head no even though between my legs and my breast hurt. Baby don't lie, he said I looked at him. I hurt a little he hurt my thighs, and I'm sore I'm sure I will have bruises and my breasts hurt, I said shyly. Cade lays me down pulling my legs apart gently, looking me over he then lifts his shirt. I am wearing checking my chest and my entire body over. Your thighs are bruised and your breasts are bruised, eh, he says sadly. All I could do was nod. Cade gets up heading to the bathroom, he returns with a washcloth and towel. I look at him confused. Baby, do you trust me? He asked I nod yes to him. He sits beside me pulling my legs gently apart and begins to wipe the blood with the washcloth. I couldn't help the moan escaping my lips. Kate, I moaned out. Yes, baby, he sighed looking at me. Why does it feel so good when you touch me? I asked shyly he chuckled. Cause I am your mate babe and you like when I touch you. He said. I smile and he keeps washing me gently. As I moan, I can feel myself becoming wet soaking wet. I felt him move my legs, pulling them wider, apart his eyes, filled with lust a dark blue. He slowly pushed open my folds as he moaned. I lifted my hips towards him. He slid a finger into me, and I screamed in pleasure with a tint of pain. I move my hips, making it move in me. I moan loudly, and he pulls his finger out looking into my eyes. I am sorry. You're so sexy and I lost control, babe. Please forgive me, he said sounding guilty. Please don't be sorry, please don't stop, I said shyly. He looked esty me lust coming back into his eyes. Baby, are you sure? He asked. Yes. I have never felt snithing like this before, but I want to feel more just no sex please, I said. He grabbed my hips pulling me to him. His lips crashing against mine the kiss intense and very passionate. We must stop babe we will finish when you're really ready, he said. He licked his finger that was inside my and he moans. Ah you taste so good, he said I smiles. Kate, I want to feel more, I said. Ash, I do too, but we need to go have lunch and you need a shower, he said. Will you come with me? I asked. In the shower? He asked. Yes, please, I am scared, please don't leave me. I said tears welling in my eyes. He kissed me gently. Babe, I will never leave you no matter what, he said and paused. But yes, I will come with you. But I will wait by the door, he said. I nodded getting up heading into the bathroom, with him following me. He closes the door behind him, and turns to face the door, not looking at me. Cade look at me, I said. He turns his head looking at my naked body, he growls. But not a growl, I have heard his eyes full of lust. Ash you're going to make me lose control. Damn you're sexy, he said. I smiled at him. I will hurry okay. He nodded. I smirked as I turned on the shower and stepped in. I quickly washed my hair and body scrubbing the touch of Kai attacker of me. Once I am done I step out of the shower and Cade is looking at me with love and lust. 
I smile wrapping a towel around me and smile at him walking towards him. He opens the door and I walk out heading for my closet. I start to look it's full of so many adorable outfits I finally find a cute sundress that's sexy and shorter mid-thigh and a cute sandals. I quickly get dressed and go to brush my hair. I look at Cade and he smiles at me. You look so beautiful. He says I smile shyly at him. He walks close to me and pulls me into a hug. He rests his head against my neck. I am in love. Ready to go have lunch. He asks and I nod. Cade and I walk through the hall to the stairs. We start to head down the steps with him holding my hand. I can hear a lot of people downstairs talking and laughing. Cade must have noticed that I was nervous cause he stopped me on the steps. Baby it will be alright. They will absolutely adore you just like I do. I won't leave your side I promise. He tells me I smile wide at him. You adore me. I ask him he smiles at me. If only you knew all my feelings for you then you would know I am where I want to be. You're my only reason for life. I'd take on the world to keep you safe. I would take a million bullets for you. I'd give my last breath if it meant you would live. He said as tears roll down my face. Kate I feel the same way. I mumble he kisses my forehead and hugs me tight. We stay like that for what feels like a long time, until we hear someone clear their throat. Kate your father sent me to get you to love birds, a man says with a smirk. Hello Luna my name is Kyle I am Cade's Betts. The man tells me who I now know as Kyle. Hi Kyle my name is not Luna. My name is Ashlyn Oyash for short. I state to him as nice as possible wondering why everyone keeps calling me Luna. It's frustrating. Am I being compared to one of his ex-girlfriends or someone else I wonder? Why does everyone keep calling me Luna? Am I being confused with one of your exes? I ask sadly Kyle and Kate both chuckle. It's not funny. I shout at them as calm as I could quickly becoming annoyed. Sorry Luash, Kyle says to me. Babe Luna is a title, not an ex-girlfriend. It's kinda like a queen. But different I will explain it more in detail in the near future, Cade tells me while chuckling at me. Boo, I tell him as I hide my face and look at the floor. Well, we really should make our way to the dining room for lunch. Everyone is waiting, Cade says as he grabs my hand. And we descend the last steps, making our way to the dining room to eat lunch. So many people talk to me some making me feel out of place. Other welcoming me with open arms. One girl who I learned is named Kylie kept giving me dirty looks and making rude comments to me. Did you want me to come to your office tonight? Like last night, Kylie said to Cade. No Kylie I don't. Cade sternly stated to her. Well I see your lil whore. Has you wrapped around her funger, Kylie tell Cade. Cade went to say something, but I held a finger up. Kylie is it. Well honey I'm sorry that I have what Cade wants. I'm sorry that Cade has finally taken out the trash, and he no longer needs, nor wants what you offer. But I am not you so I am not a whore. I state as to her. Cade begins to laugh as Kylie storms away. Ugh thank gosh she smelled like she dipped herself into a tank of perfume. It was too much. Wow baby you sure can handle yourself my love, Cade compliments me, as he leans in to meet my lips in a quick gentle kiss. We finish eating and excuse ourselves, can I take you somewhere babe? Cade asks me I grab his hand and nod he leads up outside and into the woods, to a beautiful open space full of beautiful wild flowers. I lay down in the middle of the flower patch, looking up at the sky Kate, soon follows me, 
so beautiful, Cade says. Yes, it is thanks for bringing me here. I tell him I was meaning you. But yes, this place is also and any time, babe, Cade says, and I blush. I lay my head on Cade's chest as I watch into the sky. Cade jumps up grabbing me, pulling me to my feet. Ash, we have to get you back to the pack house now. He says, why, I ask, we are being attacked. You're not safe out here when I shift get on my back. He says I go to respond. But I am cut of by a loud growl. And then Cade goes from being s human and turns into a wolf, a huge wolf. The same wolf who I rode on is Cade. I am so confused and lost. Cade jumps in front of me kneeling down, so I can climb on, but I am soon hit by something so hard I fly about four feet from Cade. I am dizzy and my body hurts. I slowly try to stand only to cry out in pain. I look up and Cade is fighting two wolves, one black with red eyes and a sandy gray color. They are big, but not as big as Cade. Cade soon throws the sandy gray wolf into a tree, and it's no longer moving just laying there against the tree. I look around I see a sharp broken stick I grab it and stand up steaded myself. I walk over to Cade and the other black wolf. He is fighting I stab the black wolf with the stick it howls in what I assume is a pain howl. Cade rips open the wolf's throat. It makes a sickening sound, but soon the black wolf slumps over and not moving. Cade shifts to his human form. What were you thinking, Ash? You could have been killed. He yells at me. I couldn't sust. Watch you fight and risk you get hurt. When I was capable of helping you, I yelled back with tears in my eyes. I'm going to shift. Get on my back and hold on. I need to get you to the safe house. He says I nod with tears running down my face, like a river he shifts, and I grab the sharp stick and climb on him holding on tightly with one hand. He keeps running as we approach the edge of the trees. I can see many wolves fighting I am watching and not looking around, like I should have been four wolves approach us and begin to attack Cade, while I am on his back. I lost my grip and fell off of him, and two wolves stuck, slowly towards me like they are hunting prey. I am scared. I won't, lie Cade, lets out a growl as they get closer to me. But Cade is busy fighting two wolves himself. I stand up holding the stick telling the wolves to stay away from me. Leave me alone, I yell at the wolves one wolf. That is dirty looking with dry blood on it brown in color lunges at me, and I stab the stick into the wolf. I must have hit something vital on him, because it falls and lands on me. I yell out in pain, as the wolf lands, on top of me suge, turning into a human form I scream, as a naked man is on top of me. I think dead, I am too busy screaming trying to get the unconscious man of of me. I don't even notice Cade and a few other men are in their human form rushing to me. The pull the man's limp body of me as Cade gently grabs me looking over my body as if he is looking if I am hurt, ow, I say, as he touches my stomach. I look down and see blood covering my shirt. I slowly lift my shirt, seeing a gash on my stomach, about inches long, and it looks pretty deep. Cade scoops me into his arms, running with me to the hospital. Cade, I am all right. I can walk, I tell him. No, I will carry you, he says. We soon make it to the hospital, he lays me on the bed. Dr. Ray rushes in with two male nurses right behind her. She lifts my shirt and gasps. What happened? She asked, but before I could answer, Cade is growling, pulling my shirt down. No man will see my mate half naked. 
He yells at the men. Kate, it's okay. It is their job. I tell him he is not happy, but I reach for him, and he comes closer to me. You're going to need stitches, and I will get you pain medicine, so it doesn't hurt so much. Dr. Ray tells me, just stitch it. I don't want no meds. I tell her, but baby, it will hurt you a lot without them. Kate tells me I smile at him, and shake my head. No, you fought. Two wolves and you're refusing pain meds. Damn, my girl is a tough human. Kate states proudly. I smile. You fought two wolves being a human. The one male nurse asks. I nod my head yes to them. Okay, dear, stitch me up. I want to go home. I am tired. I tell her with a worn smile. Okay, this will hurt, she says as she starts to stitch me up. I grab tightly onto Cade's hand. He rubs my cheek gently, with a worried expression on his face. All done. Thirty-four stitches later, Dra tells me I slowly sit up. Come back in two weeks, and I will remove them, keep them clean, and rest. She says, "Oh, and no more fighting wolves till you're healed." She says with a chuckle. Cade, can we go home now? I ask him. Yes, baby, he says. I go to stand up, but Cade soon sweeps me of me feet. Cade put me down. I can walk. I say he smiles at me. I know, but I like carrying you. He tells me I smile, and wrap my arms around his neck, pulling my face to his neck, slowly kissing it. You don't stop doing that. I may end up dropping you. He chuckles as he tells me, "Why is that?" I ask. Well, that's a wolf's sweet spot. It is where I would wear your mark and you will wear mine. When we complete the mating and marking bond, he states, "Oh, please explain more." After I take a shower and a nap, I tell him we finally make it to my room, and he puts me down. Kate, I am going to take a shower. Please stay here. I ask him. I won't go anywhere, but after you're done, I will use your shower. He says I walk into the bathroom and close the door, thinking to myself, he already seen me naked. He might as well shower with me. I slowly open the bathroom door. Cade, I say, yes, babe. He responds. Do you want to just shower with me? I am a little nervous to be alone. I ask him. But he doesn't say anything back to me. Instead, I look up to see him standing in front of me, with a smile. We go into the bathroom, and I start the shower water, while I undress Cade's eyes, roaming my entire body, while licking his lips and undressing himself. I step into the shower and yelp as the water hits my stitches. Cade comes rushing to me. Babe, are you okay? He frantically asks. Yes, the water just hit my stitches. I said calmly while wetting my hair. I move away from the shower head and put soap in my hair and onto my was cloth and scrub my hair and start to wash my body as Cade takes the washcloth from me washing my body for me. He is careful not to hurt me, but he washes me good. He taps my thigh as if asking me to open them. I do, and he gently washes my pussy. I moan out as he turns me on. Am babe, I can smell your arousal. He states, and I blush hard. Uh, was all I could say, and he chuckles, washing himself, and then pulling me to him gently. I love the smell of you, baby. Don't ever be embarrassed by being turned on by me. I smile and nod. We soon finish showering, and we step out, where he wraps me in a towel and then wraps himself into a towel. I walk to the bathroom door and head into my room and then to my closet to find clothes to wear. I find a cute but sexy nighty. It's black silky with blue lace, very low cut, making my boobs pop out of it. And I find matching lace panties and slide them on. I walk into my room, 
to see Cade standing in his towel. I need to go get dressed. I will see you later, he says. Cade, will you come back and sleep in my bed? I asked him. Yes, baby, my room is next to yours. Let me get dressed. And I will be right back. He says, coming over to me, kissing my head. Thank you, I say, as he walks out of my room. Knock, knock. Before I could even say come in Kylie, came charging into my room. I don't know who you think you are. Kylie yells at me, I smile. Well, I'm Ashlyn. Also, I am Cade's mate, I said. Odd, you will not take the Luna title from me. You came from nowhere, and all of a sudden you're his everything. She yells, stalking over to me fast. I stand from the bed ready to defend myself if needed. What is going on here? Cade yells as he walks in. Well, seems like someone is a little obsessed with becoming Luna and being with you. I state, Kylie, I think it's time you leave Ash and I alone. I told you many years now that I only wanted my mate. You were not my mate and never who I wanted. But Ashlyn is everything I wanted and more, Kate tells her, or Kylie mumbles, as she heads for the door to show herself out slamming the door shut. Well, that was interesting. I say as Kate smiles. She has been after me for years and my answer is always no, he says. Ashlyn May Jose, will you be my official girlfriend? I know it's like we already are together. But I want it official, Cade asks me shyly. Cade, um, how did you know my full name? And I don't even know yours. I ask, he chuckles. I ran into you, and I had to know more about you. I had a background check done that's how I know your full name and where you lived. Also, how I knew you were in danger, I could smell the rouges, he says. Oh well, what's your full name? I ask. Kate Tyler White, he says while laughing. Kate Tyler White, I would be honored to become your girlfriend. As long as you promise to take it slow with me, this is all new to me, I say shyly. Of course, baby, he says making his way to me. He lifts me up, and I wrap my legs around his waist, and my arms around his neck. He slowly kisses me the kiss, soon becoming unbearable to resist him. He lays me down gently climbing on top of me the kiss, never stopping. I feel myself becoming soaking wet, and I can't resist him. As I try to pull his shirt off he lets me, baby we can't go any further, he said. Why Kate? I tout. I promised I would take it slow with you when you became my girlfriend, he says with a smile. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I said. Baby, don't be sorry. I know it's hard to resist wanting more. I am having a hard time, as well my wolf is itching to take control, he says. Why would he need control? I asked. Babe, he wants to complete the mating and making and he wants more than kisses. But I can control him, my love, he says. Oh, does he have a name? I asked. Yes, baby, his name is Colt, he says. Can I only see him in wolf form? I ask. No, baby, you can see him in human too. My eyes will change color and you will know, he says. Can I meet him? I asked. Baby, I don't know if tonight is a good idea, he says. Please. I beg him really wanting to meet him, okay, but if he triss anything you don't, want to man me to take over and smack him, he says, okay babe, I said he smiles wide kissing me real fast, before sitting back, and I see his eyes flickering colors from blue green to green with blue spots, hello my lady, Colt says in a deep voice, hi, I answer shyly, before I could say in e more cold, was pushing me to the bed kising my lips, and before long he is kissing my jaw l i n e I can't, help, but moan in pure pleasure. I feel myself, becoming more wet it's making my thighs, damp, 
I tighten my legs together, as he whispers against my skin, You smell so good, baby. I blush my face heating up he moves to my neck, and my hips lift towards his body brushing against his hardened shaft. Stop cold, please. I moan out he covers my mouth, moving down towards my breasts. He grabs them through my night and kissing the exposed parts. Kate, I want Kate now. I demand Colt his eyes dark with lust as he chuckles. Cade, please come back to me. I say pushing him of me, but he is too strong I can't even move him. Colt pulls my breast out and starts to suck on it I moan at the new feeling. I am getting before realizing. I need this to stop it's too much and too fast for me. I smack him and it echoes through my room and he grabs my hands, pinning them above my head. You like it rough then, baby, he says. Colt, give me back Cade now. I yell at him, his eyes start to flicker, but flicker back. He is trying to gain control, Colt chuckles. I am getting a little scared. I close my eyes, over tightly feeling my eyes welling up, and tears trying to escape. I am lost in my thoughts. When my hands are released I slowly open my eyes. As I see Kate is back he grabs me pulling me to him with tears in his eyes. Baby I am so sorry did he hurt you? He asked searching my body. I am fine was all I managed to say. I'm sorry babe. He won't get Conroll again. He says hugging me. It's okay I liked it. But I want my firsts to all be with you. I say shyly, I love you. He tells me pulling me closer I know it seems weird. But I think I love him, to all the feelings. I am feeling I have never felt before him. I think I love you too. I say he looks into my eyes smiling at me. Cade I don't really know what love is but I am willing to try to figure it out with you. I grew up with never getting love. My parents left me as a baby I was an orphan I grew up in many foster homes. Some treated me okay, but most I was treated awful. I told him as he leans in to kiss tears, I didn't, even no fell down my cheeks. You will never be hurt again. I will always treat you right. I will always do my best to protect you. I will always love you. He tells me with a smile, let's go to bed baby, he finishes, okay, I say with a smile. I lay down on the bed covering up, soon I can feel Cade's body next to mine, holding my waist, pulling me to him. I feel so safe this is a feeling I have never had I feel at home in his arms. My eyes start becoming very heavy and before long I am out. Kate's POV. Since I found Ashlyn in the store, I haven't left her. She is so beautiful about 5 foot 3 tan skin that looks like it glistens. She is a tiny girl, but has curves in all the right places. Gosh, how did I get so lucky I find myself thanking the moon goddess all the time. Man I am so lucky. Since I found Ash I have not let her out of my sight. I followed her home. That's when I smelt the rouges, and I refused to let them have her. She is my mate. I watch her as she sleeps soon my eyes become heavy, and I kiss her cheek and fall asleep. Waity waity, I hear Ash say while she giggles. Gosh her giggle is breathtaking. I smile and open my eyes. Good morning, how did you sleep? I asked her. I slept so good. Best sleep I have ever gotten in my life, she says and I chuckle. I'm going to get a shower, she says and I nod. I sit up on the bed to watch her walk to the bathroom her hips sway, and my eyes are locked on her she soon shuts the bathroom door, and I hear the water running. Ash screams and I go rushing into the bathroom to see her standing by the shower. It healed 
She yells, I look over her very sexy naked body, and her wound is healed, and all that remains is the stitches. No scar, no blood, just perfect skin and stitches. I look at her confused. After your shower, we are going to the pack DR. This isn't possible. I say, finish your shower, babe. Then we will head to Dr. Ray's clinic to see what's going on. I say kissing her for it and heading out of the bathroom. I head to sit on her bed thinking to myself, how is this possible? She is a human and humans don't heal that fast. What is going on? I am so confused I hear the bathroom door open. Looking up and a very sexy and very naked Ash comes out she has a look in her eyes and I just want to take her. But I know I can't. Damn baby. You make it hard for me to control myself and to take it slow. I say in a moan, she just chuckles walking to me. In a very sexy seductive manner, she grabs my shoulders, pulling me to her, and kissing me passionately, wrapping her arms around my neck, and my arms find her waist, and begin to wonder to her very sexy round as I give it a gentle squeeze, and she whimpers in my ear, Babe, we need to see why you healed so fast. I tell her she smiles, head nods she heads to her closet, and soon comes out in short crop top, that shows half her flat stomach, and very short shorts, that shows the bottom of her butt cheeks, I growl. You're not wearing that, I say she smiles walking to me, oh, but I am Mr. Possessive. Let them look cause I am yours and only yours, she says and I growl. But not not wanting to scare her. But I am far from okay with her outfit choice. She grabs my hand pulling me towards the door. We head down the hall and soon down the steps. MMHM I smell bacon. Ash says I smile at her. Let's eat then head to the DRS. I tell her she smiles walking faster down the steps and heads to the kitchen. Good morning everyone, she says everyone greets her back. She sits down and I sit next to her Kyle walking over to me. Someone is in a good mood and I don't see a mark. So I can only assume what you guys did to be so chipper, he says with a smirk I smile at him. I'm sure you would love to know, but we didn't do much. I said not going into details we eat and she stands, ready Cade. She asks me in a nod saying, Yes I am babe. We head outside and begin to walk to the clinic and men are gawking at her like they are starving and she is a chunk of meat. I growl she looks at me. What's wrong? She asks. What's wrong Ash? Maybe all these men gawking at you like they are staving and you're a chunk of meat. I yell at her not meaning to but I am a wolf and I am very possessive over what is mine. She walks to me pulling me to her and my head soon resting in her neck, taking in her scent and I calm down. Baby I am sorry. I say she shakes her head no. No I am sorry I didn't even notice anyone looking at me. My day starts with you and ends with you. No other man will ever gain my attention other than you. She says and my heart begins to race. I kiss her gently and grab her hand, slowly pulling her towards the DRS clinic. We soon arrive. Back so soon, DR Ray asks. Yes, well it seems Ash is all healed and all that remains is her stitches. I say DR Ray looks at us confused. That's not possible. She says, Ash may I have a look? She finishes. Ashlyn climbs onto the table and lays back pulling her shirt up. And the DR looks at me then Ash. This is not possible, she says. Is everything okay? Ash asks sounding scared. Yes, but I don't know how you're healed. Humans don't heal this fast. She says and Ash becomes worried looking at me. 
Ash, can you tell me about your parents? Dear Ray asks. Um, I don't know. I was left as a baby. I lived in foster homes. I don't know my parents. She says with tears welling in her eyes. I hate when she cries it breaks my heart. Um, okay, well, we will run a DNA test and see what your genes consist of, DR says to us, and we nod. I will remove the stitches. Then, I will do a mouth swab and blood work, DR says. All right, Ash says the DR starts to remove the stitches and Ash holds my hand looking into my eyes. All done, the DR says pulling our attention back to her. This might hurt a little, DR says, as she is getting ready to take blood. But Ash doesn't even flinch when the DR does the mouth swab. All right, you're all done. It will take a bit to run the tests. I will let you know in days max what I find out, DR says. Sounds great. Ash says we head out of the room, making out way to the exit. So I might not be human. Ash asks me. I don't know, baby. I honestly say, Cade, can we go for a run? I mean with your wolf, she asks me, sure. But oh me if you hold on tight, I say, and she nods we walk to the tree line, and I strip out of my clothes, placing them by the tree nearby. Then I shift into my wolf, and Ash climbs onto me, and I start running taking her deeper into the woods, to a special spot. Wow, this is beautiful. She says you brought her to the falls, and there is three falls that glisten in the sun's light. Looks like it's glittery. We make our way closer. She takes her short sub and her shirt of stepping into the water. I soon turn into my human form and follow her. She looks so sexy in her lace bra and panties. We begin to swim and I scoop her in my arms, kissing her gently before she pulls away and disappears under the water. Soon coming back up. Gosh. She looks like a goddess we swim for a while before climbing out, and she puts her clothes back on. Cade, can we walk back together? She asks. Yes, we can, babe. It's about three miles. I say she smiles and nods, grabbing my hand. As we walk back to the house, it's so peaceful and the feeling I am having is unreal. This girl has my heart, my soul, and my everything. About two hours later we made it back to the pack house, and I smile at her. Ash, do you want to go to town later with me, and a two other to have dinner and a movie? I ask, yes. But who all is going? She asks. Well, it will be you and I then Kyle and his mate Bella, Ben, and his mate Kate Zack, and his sister Ken's. I say she smiles and nods. Okay, sounds great. She says, we will leave around 4 p.m. I tell her looking at the time it's already p.m. Well, let's get inside and have lunch. I tell her, sounds good, I am hungry. She says, running inside, we eat lunch. Kate, I need to start getting ready. She says, okay, I will be up shortly. I need to check in with my dad to see if he needs anything. She smiles and nods as we head up the steps. Ash, I will be down the hall in the office, I tell her, and she nods heading into her room as I head to the office. I knock before entering. Hey, Dad. Any word on the rouge attack? I asked him. Well, son, during interrogation, the rouge said it's just the beginning. They will not stop until they get what their alpha wants, he says honestly and worry taking over him. What do they want, Dad? I ask. They want Ashlyn, he mumbles. What? They are not getting her. We are a strong pack with over warriors, I said trying to remain calm. Yes, son, but we are holding a party to sing our yearly treaties, and I will be asking for them to send more warriors, he said. When is this taking place? I ask. In three days he says.
Well then I will get Ashlyn a dress, and until then I won't let her out of my sight. I say my dad nods. Also son since you found your mate we will be giving you the alpha title, sooner than planned, he said. How soon? Ash wants to take it slow cause of her past, and everything being new to her. I said my dad nods. Son I heard that Ash has already healed. He said I nod. Yes dad she has they are running tests to find out why cause she doesn't know her parents. I say honestly. Well she might not be human son, she may be more. Humans don't typically stand up to rouges without fear consuming them. He says and I nod to him we continue to talk for a while. Before I notice it, well dad I have to go get ready. We are heading to town to have dinner and to watch a movie. I tell him, have fun. He says I nod and walk out of his office, heading to my room, to get a shower and get changed. Ash's POV. I decided to wear a casual dress that is mid-thigh and a sky blue in color. It was absolutely stunning. I also am wearing light blue bra and panties. But the panties are a thong. I put on a pair of black three-inch heels. And my hair is down and long. I curl the bottom of my naturally straight hair to add volume to my hair. I don't apply much makeup cuz. I feel natural beauty is so much prettier than looking fake. Knock, knock, knock. Come in, I say. The door slowly opens and a girl pops her head. In who I know as Ken's. She is s pretty girl 16 about my height dark brown hair pale skin. She is pretty. She walks in. I hope you don't mind. But the girls and I wanted to help you get ready. But I see you heat us to it. She smiles I smile back at her. Please come in, and we can chat, while you guys finish getting ready, I say, and they all come in tens, followed by Kate, then Bella, we all share smiles, Bella, is about my age, blonde hair, tan skin, and she is beautiful, Bella, is also my age, brown hair, short, but adorable, she is shorter than us, but she has adorable curves, and a beautiful smile, man. Are all the girls here models I think to am myself? Ken's I will do your hair, I say, and I began to do her hair Bella, but Kate's hair, and I finish up Ken's hair, and I offer to do Bella's hair she smiles, and sits down it's and we are all talking, and finishing getting ready Bella, puts on a light red dress, with matching red heels, she looks lovely Ken's, wears a black dress with white heels and it makes her skin pop and her eyes. Then Kate puts on a emerald green dress and I am stunned. She looks so gorgeous I am lost for words. While you all look perfect and absolutely beautiful, I tell them they all smile and we chuckle and think it's safe to say we will be the best looking women round, Ken says. And we laugh it's five minutes till four and I say, well, we better head down to meet the men, before they break the door down, Kate says, as we all head for the door. We head down the hall, to the steps, and slowly head down the steps, while the men look at us like they can't, take their eyes of us. As I finish taking THR, last few steps, I am grabbed and pulled of my feet by Kate. He spins me and pulls me close to him. Well, I am the luckiest man alive, he says, and I blush kissing his cheek. But he turns and out lips meet, and it quickly turns heated and very needy. Okay, lovebirds, we are going to he late, Bella says with a smile, as everyone chuckles Kate puts me down, and we head to the front door, and head outside a car is waiting for us it's big it's a cadillac suv jet black and it's beautiful i'm driving 
Ash, you're in the front next to me, Cade says, and I climb into the front passenger seat as everyone else climbs in. Cade shuts my door before heading around and getting into the driver's seat. He winks at me before starting the car, putting it into drive, and putting his hand on my fight, slowly sliding it up under my dress, and he squeezes my upper thigh, and I moan out, and everyone in the car beings to laugh, and I give Kate a death glare. I will get you back for this. I tell him, and he smirks at me the drive, takes over an hour, before we pull up in front of the movie theater. Cade parks the car and we all climb out. Wow, what's busy here? I say, it always is baby, Cade says grabbing my hand, and leading me to the doors, to enter the movie theater. Once inside I see like ten different movies, that are playing tonight. Man, this place is huge. I say not realizing I said it out loud and everyone chuckles. What movie does everyone want to see? Kate asks. We seen them all but the new horror movie, called Lost Boy. Kyle states, well does everyone want to watch that? Kyle asks. Yes, was everyone's answer. But mine I tightened my grip on Kate's hand. What's wrong baby? Kate asks me. Nothing I am fine. Just nervous. I say. Are you scared? He asks and I nod. But I will try to watch it but don't let go of me. I say and he smiles widely and nods. Kyle walks back with our tickets as we head into the movie. Where does everyone want to sit? Kyle asks. The back? I say pulling Cade towards the back. The back row was open. So I go down to the middle and take a seat. Cade, sitting next to me holding my hand. Still he leans to my ear. Baby, if you get too scared, let me know. I nod at him with a smile. The movie is about to start. But I find myself lost in Cade's eyes. And he is lost in mine. I slowly let go of his hand, moving it up to cares his cheek, and I run a finger over his lips, then down his neck, pulling him towards me kissing his neck, and moving up to H's jawline then to his lips, he is moaning, and I pull away and smirk as I move my hand and place it on his upper thigh, I gently squeeze, and move my hand up slowly making him let out a load moan everyone with us chuckles and people turn to look at us from all around i smirk at him before laying my head on his shoulder the movie is soon over and i didn't watch any of it we all stand and head out of the theater and outside when i stop feeling like i am being watched what's wrong baby Cade asks me, I feel like someone is watching me, I say scared Cade looks around, I don't see anything out of the ordinary, but stay with me promise me you won't leave my side, Cade asks me I nod, and we head to the car, as he pulls me to his side he opens my door, and I get in the car, and he shuts the door, and walks around to get in the car, he starts it, and he drive of about thirty mints. Later we park at a restaurant called Lucian's, and the valet parks the car as we head in. It's beautiful and very fancy. Welcome to Lucian's, the waiter greeted. Reservations for White, Cade says. Right this way, Mr. White, the waiter says, and we all follow. The waiter takes us to a private room with a big table, and it's well lit, and has candles on the table, it's beautiful Cade, leads me to a chair, and pulls it out for me, and I sit, and he slides me in, I smile at him, as he sight beside me, we all talk, and look over the menu, what are you getting babe, Cade asks me, I think the chicken and steak salad with bacon added, I said, and he smiles widely, we all order our food, and the waiter comes back in shortly with our drinks, and shortly our food arrives. Hey, we should go to the club, 
Bella says, and everyone cheers agreeing with Bella. Ash, do you want to go? Bella asks me I nod. Sure, let's go. I say we finish eating and Cade pays the bill, and we head out to the car heading to the club. We soon arrive at the club and head towards the doors. Mr. White please come in, the bouncer says, and we all walk in but, having to wait in the long line. Who is Cade and why does everyone know him so well, I think to myself. Once in the club the music is loud the lights are bright, and everyone is dancing we head up to a private room, and all relax. Ash come with us girls to get a drink, Kate says. Okay, I agree walking towards them we head to the bar, and all order drinks, and Kate grabs my arm, pulling me to the dance floor to dance with her I look up at Kate, giving him my best seductive look, and grind on Kate. She does the same in return soon Kate, and I begin to laugh and continue to dance Belf and Ken's joining us all of a sudden. I feel hands roughly grip my waist, and a deep dark voice whisper in my ear, What's a sexy lil pup like you doing here alone? He asks I try to pull his hands of me, but his grip tightens on me. Oh, you're hurting me. Get of me. I yell suddenly I hear a loud growl and Cade is in front of me. Get of her you filthy mutt. Cade yells the man lets go of me, and I rush to Cade's arms. Sorry Alpha I didn't know she was claimed. You should mark her. The man says. She is mine. I don't need you to tell me what to do. Cade yells at him pulling me away with him. We all head back up to the private room and sit down. So I was thinking maybe tomorrow we can have a girl's day. Go shopping and have lunch together. Bella asks. Yes, that would be great. Ken says and Kate nods. Ash, are you in? Kate asks me. I look at Kate and he nods. I don't have any money on me. It's all back home. I tell them. Baby, you can have one of my cards to buy anything you want. You're now my responsibility and I will take care of all your needs and wants. Kate tells me and I smile. I guess I am in, but I won't spend much since it's not mine. I say proudly. You will it's your money as well what's mine is yours baby. Kate tells me I just nod we spend a few hours here. And all having a good time. Well I think it's time we get these ladies back home. Kate says and we all nod. Kate's POV. We pull up to the house, and everyone gets out, I head around to grab Ash. She fell asleep on the way home. I grab her into my arms, and she wraps her arms, lazily around my neck, and moans in my ear, I chuckle, and take her in the house, and climb the stairs, I gently, lay her on her bed, and remove her dress, and bra, I pull my shirt, a van put it on her gently, and cover her up, I head, to the door, when I hear her voice, Kate please stay, she says, of course, I say heading back to the bed, and climbing in next to her, she rolls over to face me, sleep with me from now on, she says, and I nod with a smile, when I am in your arms, I have no nightmares, just good dreams, and I like being next to you, I feel like I am safe and untouchable. She says sleepily, I kiss her head, pulling her closer to me. Good night, baby, I love you. I say, I love you, Cade. She says my heart speeds up, she loves me, yes, yes, yes. I kiss her a few times, snuggling her closer to me, and I start to fall asleep, gosh, this girl is like heaven. She is absolutely perfect. How did I get so lucky? I am the luckiest man in the world to get to Cal Hermine. I close my eyes and sleep overtakes me. Ash's POV. When I woke up, I felt so alone I didn't feel Cade's arm around me. I looked over and his side was empty. I look at the time it's am. Well, I slept in, 
I say to myself out loud I head to the bathroom to grab a fast shower and rush to get dressed I throw on shorts and a crop tank. I head into the hall and think where could Cade be. Hum in the office or downstairs. I head for the office and I walk in forgetting to knock and I see Kylie sitting on the desk, leaned back, and I see Cade sitting in front of her. I feel anger, betrayal and hurt all the sudden. Cade we are done. I yelled and stormed out slamming the door running to my room and locking the door. I grab my duffel bag and only grab the items I came with and toss it out my balcony window. Open the door now or I will break it down, Cade yells. Do whatever you want but I am truly done. I say with tears streaming down my face. I hear a loud crack and Cade is standing in my room, looking hurt and pissed. Nothing happened, Ash. She was trying and I turned her down. He says with hurt in his voice, sure, and I am supposed to believe nothing happened. I said, sorry I wasn't as easy as she was. I shout at him wiping tears away. Baby nothing happened. He says tears welling in his eyes, yeah? Kinda like I was never molested by my foster parents, and sometimes their kids right. I yell not meaning to bring up my hurtful past. I'm leaving, I said. No you are not, he says. Kate you do not own me. I am my own person. I say walking towards the door. Please don't leave, he says crying a part of me believes nothing happened. But another part doesn't, want to I was molested by a few different foster parents, over my years, I was even almost raped once. I don't trust men, fully, but Kate I did trust with everything I had. I know I don't own you, but please stay I need you, he begs me. I need to go for a walk. I say, it's not safe to go alone. He says, you're not coming. I tell him, fine, but at least take a warrior with you. He asks, fine. I tell him heading for the steps. Ash, there will be a party here tomorrow. He tells me for what? I ask, to introduce me and you, and to get more packs on our side. He calmly says to me and I nod. I have taken care of everything for you, he tells me, and I walk down the steps and a man stands esty the bottom of the steps, hello Luna, I am Dom the pack warrior leader, he says with a smile, reaching his hand out to me, instead I grab him, and hug him I hear a viscous growl, and turn to look at a pissed of Cade, what nothing happened? I coldly state, Dom plea call me Ash, as I am no longer Luna. I tell him and he nods, looking very shocked. She is Luna, Cade yells, Dom protect her with your life. If any problems mind link me first, Cade says and Dom nods. I head out the back door and begin to walk heading to the tree line. Twenty minutes of walking, and I found a downed log and I sat on it. I have a weird feeling in my body. I can't seem to shake it. I stand up as I get a pain shooting through my whole body. What is it, Luna? Dom asks as I cry out in pain. It hurts. I say tears welling in my eyes. I hit the ground. Next thing I know, Cade and Ace, Cade's father, and Mary, the lunacade's mother, or by me I am screaming in pain. Make it stop, I scream. Uh, I think she is having her first shift, Ace calmly says. I am human, I yell. You can't be human, honey, Mary tells me. Someone help me, I cry in pain. I am here, baby, Cade says as his arms wrap around me, and for a little bit it does seem to help me. Suddenly, I feel my skin stretched to the max and bones. Popping, I scream out in pain. It's okay, baby, Cade coos to me, but I can't handle the pain, I just scream. It's almost over, 
he says, and I continue to feel my skin rip and bones, snapping the pain eases up, and I open my eyes, still hurts a little, but it's manageable. I look around everything is so clear, and I can hear everything I look around everyone is looking at me as hot. I went to ask, what was the matter for it to come out, as a growl Cade, must have understood. Taking out his phone, he takes a picture of me. I am now a huge white wolf, with a red heart patch on my shoulder. But my fur looks like it has glitter throughout it. And on my nose, I have a red star. My wolf is beautiful. I shake my head, feeling a sudden urge to run. I take of running soon. Kate is beside me. Slow down, Ash. I hear it sounds like Kate. It is me, Ash. He says once more. How do I shift back to human? I think to him. Why, self? Just think of your human self. A female voice says. What? Who are you? I ask. I am Kara, your wolf, she says, and will you always be with me? I asked. Yes, I have always been with you through it all, she says. I stop running, and I stop thinking of my human for my long legs, my beautiful hair, my eyes, and suddenly I feel myself shifting back. It doesn't hurt anymore. It just feels strange. I am standing in my human form. And I see Kate shifting. Wow, he says. What? I say rudely. You look so sexy naked. He chuckles. And I look down to realize. I am naked. But I don't cover myself. Because I honestly don't care. Maybe it will make him realize what he did have but low SD over a dumb girl. And using the wrong head. I'm glad you're enjoying the view. I coldly said he starts walking to me, but I think of my wolf shifting and run back to the house, leaving him in my dust. I soon hear a viscous growl, and I stop and turn around to see Cade being attacked by five wolves. Cade, I yell, but I just growl running to him. Yes, I may be mad and hurt by him, but Noon deserves to die. I take on two of the wolves and quickly kill them, and there is just three left. I take on one more he is stronger than the other two, but after a while I kill him, and look and Kate is bloody, but he took down the other two wolves. I shift to my human form fastly and rush to him, and he shifts I see he is cut but nothing looks deep. That was incredible, he tells me. What was? I ask. You taking on three dangerous wolves to save me with absolutely no training, he says proudly. I smiles, let's get you home, I say. Okay, they are bringing us clothes, he tells me I start helping him to the house cuz he is limping his leg, must have got bit, or something soon about ten warriors come rushing to us with clothes Cade grabs me pushing me behind him, and he hurts me, because he is too rough, I, I say, I'm sorry but no man will see you naked you're mine, he says in almost a growl, I am not yours, I say, you're mine, he yells, go tell Kylie, that because I am not yours no more, I say I walk around Kate, grabbing my clothes, all the warriors, freeze staring at me, with lust in their eyes. I ignore the looks, and quickly get dressed, throwing on a sun dress and panties. She is mine, Cade growls, sorry Alpha, they say, I was his, I coldly tell them, walking away from them. All heading to the house, Cade, soon catching up to me, he grabs my arm to stop me, what do you want now? I shout at him, as he pushes me against a nearby tree, and I am struggling I hit my head of the tree. I want you. He confidently tells me. Should have been thinking of me, but no Kylie got the best of you. I say. Nothing happened I promise she came in sat on the desk, and tried to seduce me, but it didn't work it never works, 
he says, never worked. Then why did she say like old times? I ask with a chuckle. Ash this may come to you as a shock. But I am a virgin no sex no oral nothing. I was waiting for my mate for you. He says and I feel my heart flutter and my eyes water man. Maybe I did jump to conclusions. I feel the sudden urge to kiss him. But I fight it. Promise me nothing happened. I ask. I promise baby nothing happened. The only one I want is you it's always been you. He says as he moves closer to me, putting his head to my neck, and I do the same. And you smell that? I ask. Smell what babe? He asks me. It smells like heaven like dark chocolate and strawberries. I say almost in a moan he chuckles. That's my scent babe. Kinda like you smell like cherry blossoms and lilacs. He says I push my nose, closer to him taking in his scent. I feel the urge to rip his clothes of him. I start to kiss him passionately. He is following my lead. I feel myself becoming wet, and I move my head to his neck kissing roughly. But gently he moans out in pleasure, and I feel myself dripping what I grab his hand and push it to my panties and under my dress. I pull away from his neck. Look what you do to me, I say, as he moves his fingers, and I moan pushing more into his fingers. I grab his shirt and remove it. He suddenly stops, and I can't handle him not touching me. Why did you stop? I say kinds irritated. Our first time will not be outside, he says grabbing my hand and leading us to the house. Once we make it in the house, I rush up the stairs to my room, and Cade is following me. We shut the door, and he locks it, and I jump in his arms, kissing him, with all I have moaning against his lips, he lays me on the bed. Baby, are you sure? He asks, and I smile. As sure as I have ever been, I say pulling him to me, let's take it slow, he says and I nod as he kisses my neck. I moan out in pleasure. He tears of my dress, ripping it in half, before his eyes look at me and he moans, like the view. I say he moans, I love it. You're absolutely perfect, babe, he says as he slowly tugs of my panties, among. Um, he says, as he sees my wet pussy, he starts kissing my belly and works his way down to my now dripping wet pussy, and he slowly licks it, and my back arches of the bed, pushing further into his head his tongue dances over my clit, and I can't stop from scream moaning, the feeling he is giving me I have never felt before, you taste so good, he says I sit up wondering what I taste like I pull his head up and kiss him, and among, um, I do taste good it is so sweet and heavenly, you like the way you taste, he says with a smirk. Yes, I moan out, as he keeps kissing me, he slowly pushes one finger into my dripping wet hole, damn you're so tight. He moans as he moves faster I scream out in pleasure. I feel my body tensing, and my pussy walls, tightening around his finger. Don't stop, I moan, as I start to ride his finger faster and harder, comb for me baby, he says as I scream in pleasure my orgasm. Taking over my body, I start shaking hard he keeps fingering me letting me ride out my high I am in heaven this is amazing. Knock knock. Go away. Kate says to whoever is knocking at our door. Alpha we are being attacked, the man states. On my way, I got to take Ash to the safe house, Cade says. Hurry, the man states, Ash get dressed now, Cade states, as I rush to get dressed I throw in a dress and clean panties, ready, I tell Cade, as he unlocks the door, to grab my arm, dragging me down the steps, we see a wolf, in the downstairs, and Cade pushes me up the steps back to my room,
and he pushes me inside. Lock the door now, and do not open it. Go in your closet, behind the dresses, and lock yourself in the hideaway room. He says I kiss him, now go, he says, and I lock the door, and head to my closet to find thee. Hideaway room, but I am suddenly stopped by a wolf crashing through my balcony door, I scream, but I soon feel funny, and everything is becoming dark. I wake up and I am cuffed to a pole. Where am I? I ask I hear men chuckle. In hell, one says, you were captured by us now, you will satisfy us. Another says, please don't hurt me. I say when suddenly the doors open, oh you're awake. A man asks, I am Jeremy, the reason you're here is because your lover will pay with his life or yours. He coldly says walking towards me. He kicks me hard in the ribs. Yelp, refusing to cry in front of him. He grabs me by my hair. Alpha, I have you pretty little mate. She smells so good. My men must have interrupted a good time. But don't worry, I will finish what you started. I look up more and see he is recording. Kate, don't come, it's a trap. Let them kill me. I shout earning myself a kick to the face Jeremy grabs my shirt and rips it of me and cuts my shorts of me, leaving me in my bra and panties. Do as you wish with me, but just know you won't get my pack or cade. I shout, oh baby I got you he will come for you. My informant helped me get you. Seems you have a traitor in your pack. He says laughing kicking me in the ribs again, and again, I close my eyes, over, and I feel a few kicks to the head I open my eyes, and I get one more kick to the head, everything goes black, I feel myself losing consciousness. Aids POV. After Ash is locked in her room, I attack the wolf in the house, killing it, and head outside begin fighting, soon all the rouges, soon leave, I am confused, why they left I shift, and run into the house, and rush upstairs, Ash open up, I tell her, but she isn't answering me, Ashlyn open up now, I shout I still don't get a reply, I bust open the door, and head for the closet, Ashlyn, I scream opening the hideaway, but nothing she is nowhere I mind link the whole pack, telling everyone I can't find Ashlyn, and we search the entire house, she is nowhere to be found, we found a duffel with a weak scent of her on it, one warrior said bringing me the bag, no she wouldn't run away she loves me it must be from earlier, search and keep searching for her till, she is back safe in my arms, I shout they all nod, dad they took her I know it, I tell my dad the alpha, yes son they captured her, he says sad, how do you know, I ask, the left this behind, he says holding a small box, what's in it, I ask him and he hands me the box, I don't know open it, he says, I open the box and there is a paper that says, dear alpha Cade, I have your mate and the terms are simple, I have a tape of her showing, she is alive for now. Watch the tape to learn more. Sincerely yours, Alpha Jeremy. No. I shout. What's wrong? My dad asks me. They have her. Jeremy took Ash. I shout with tears in my eyes. We need to watch this tape, I tell him holding up the tape. Let's head to the office, he says and I nod. We walk to his office and we are greeted by my mom, the Luna Mary, two pack warriors Dom, and Jake my dad, the current Alpha Ace, and myself I hand my dad the tape taking a seat. Alpha I have your lil mate, and she is absolutely gorgeous. Jeremy says. Then we see Ash chained to a pole in a dungeon. Oh you're awake, Jeremy asks Ash. 
I am Jeremy. The reason you're here is because your lover will pay with his life or yours. He coldly says to her walking towards her he kicks her hard in the ribs. She yelps in pain. He grabs her by her hair. Alpha I have you pretty little mate. She smells so good. My men must have interrupted a good time. But don't worry I will finish what you started. She looks up more. Kay don't come it's a trap. Let them kill me. She shout Jeremy kicks her to the face Jeremy grabs her shirt and rips it of her and cuts her shorts of her leaving her in her bra and panties. I growl from anger and hurt. Do as you wish with me, but just know you won't get my pack or Cade. She shouts, oh baby I got you he will come for you. My informant helped me get you. Seems you have a traitor in your pack, he says laughing. He kicks her in the ribs again and again, and he keeps kicking her in the face and ribs until her body goes limp. You have 24 hours to find me. After 24 hours, I will start by taking her virginity. Then, I will abuse her and rape her making her bear my pups. Jeremy states laughing before it goes black. No. I scream my dad grabbing me. We will find her, he tells me. Interrogate the rouge we captured and get a location. I shout pacing the office with my fists clenched. We will find her now. I shout. Cade calm down you need to be able to think straight. So we can get her safely, my dad states. Calm down. How can I be calm? He has my mate and he is hurting my mate. I shout. Over the next two hours, we interrogate the captured Rouge. He gives up their location. Alpha Jeremy has my pups and mate. The Rouge we learned is named Tom tells us. If you fight with us we will get your pups and mate. I tell him, you tell the rest if they fight with us. They will be kept alive along with their families, I tell him, and he nods with a smile. We are gathering our men, and we all say our goodbyes, and we shift following the rouge, as he leads us through the forest deep into the woods, about three hours of running, and Tom stops, shifting to his human form. We are about ten minutes from the border. I will go first and talk to the other warriors, he says before shifting I mind link my warriors, watch close do not trust th. E rouges yet. Kill anyone who attacks you only. No women or pups are to be harmed, I shout through the mind link. They all nod my dad, and I start running again, and our warriors follow behind us, all ready for a fight. Once arriving there is rouges, bowing down to us. This might be easier than planned. I link my dad, and he nods about rouges joining with us to help us take down the other rouge wolves that refuse to join us. I rush towards a dungeon dungeon, looking building, but I am soon stopped by ten rouges, ready to fight me. Soon joining me in the fight is Kyle. We take them down and cautiously head in. Ash POV. I slowly open my eyes hearing wolves howl. I am alone I shout. Help me I am in here. When the door suddenly opens and Jeremy rushes in locking him. And I in the cage. He is here to get you. He chuckles telling me. And I feel a sudden urge to shift. Let me take control shift. My wolf tells me, and I let my body shift, and I hear the chains shatter and Jeremy looking at me confused. You're a queen wolf, he says quickly shifting into his wolf it's s dingy brown, and we begin fighting and his claws meet across my face, making my wolf yelp. I claw his back, and he bites my shoulder mocking me limp, and he bites my back leg, I howling pain. I fall to the ground, he pounces on me, and I hear the door break, and a viscous growl, and I know it's Cade my heart speed up I am hurt, and hurt bad, 
I shift to my human form, crawling to the wall to prop myself up on. Luna, Kyle yells as he is throwing a blanket over me, wrapping me tightly in it. ABD, picking me up off the floor. Ow, I wince out. I'm sorry, Luna, but we must go now, Kyle says. Not we can't leave, Kate, I say. Luna, I have orders to follow he is stro. And gee, he will he all right. Kyle says as he take me out and upstairs, and outside it's so bright out I close my eyes, and I am carried away in Kyle's arms. Cade, I scream I hear growls echoing. I know the ones is Cade. I can feel his pain I know he is hurt. Kyle put me down. I demand him and he puts me down on my feet, and I take off running. I don't even notice I lost the blanket, and I am now naked. I run through fighting wolves, ABD, I have seen enough, I scream, that is enough. Everyone stop fighting now. Everyone soon stops fighting bowing down to me, and I am suddenly confused as to what is going on. Everyone shift now. No more fighting, I demand I see everyone turn back into human form. I start running again to the dungeon, and I hear nothing I am scared I rush down to see Cade, and Jeremy both bow down to me, as I enter, Cade, I scream as I see blood all over him, he lifts his head, and looks at me I jump into his arms, I love you, I say kissing him all over his face, I want Jeremy taken to our dungeons alive, I say, Yes, my queen, Cade tells me with a smile. I am your equal, I tell him. Why does everyone keep calling me queen? I ask. Well, I will explain it all later, babe. Cade tells me, as I stand pulling him up with me. Cade, let's go home, I tell him, and he smiles. Did he hurt you? Cade calmly asks. I am fine, babe. I can handle the kicks and hits. But I couldn't handle you getting hurt. I tell him and he smiles kissing me. You're so strong, he says. Jeremy head outside now. I tell him and he heads out of the dungeon. And we follow once outside I see everyone is still bowed. To all rouges who wish to have a safe place to live you may join our pack. You must be sworn into out pack by a blood oath ceremony. I say with a smile, yes, queen, they almost all state, grab your families and let's head home. I state as we began to leave more and more wolves decide to join us, until there is none left, Jeremy will be held prisoner and killed as a punishment. I calmly state everyone nods, I am so proud of you, babe. Where did you learn all the pack terms? He asks, I have no idea. I tell him we head home. After we arrive to our pack land, we are greeted by the pups and women and Luna Mary. Queen Ash. You're all right, Luna tells me. Yes, I am fine. But please tell me Ash. I tell her. Do you need to see the pack DR? I tell him. Yes, babe, but so do you. He says looking at me. Why I am fine. I tell him he looks at me stunned. You're healed. He says. Yes, baby, I healed a long time ago, babe. I say with a smile. I start leading him to the clinic to get his wounds cleaned and assessed once inside I take him to a bed. Here, sit, I say, and the DR comes rushing in. Alpha, are you okay? She asks. Yes, I am fine. He tells her after he is cleaned up. He has now minor cuts and bruises nothing severe. Why did Ash heal already? Cade asks the DR. I have no idea must be the royal blood. She states I smile. Well, Alf's you're good to go. She states. Cade, I think we were in the middle of something before I got taken away. I say walking in between his legs, putting my arms around his neck, kissing him, and he responds but pulls away, let's go home and get you food it's late, Cade says.
and I nod we walk out of the clinic and head outside, Queen. Alpha all the new members are in the empty houses on our land, and are settled in, Dom tells us, and I nod, did they take oath? I ask. Tomorrow before the party, they all will be sworn to our pack, Dom tells me, and I nod heading to the house, with Cade. Once inside everyone bows as we enter, stop bowing. I say they all stand. Thank you, I tell them and head to the kitchen making Cade, and I both a very meaty sub we sit at the island, and eat our sub, and I get up to grab us both a soda, and after we are done we head upstairs, Cade I don't want to sleep in my room. I tell him, we will sleep in our room. He says I look at him confused. He leads me into his bedroom, and I look around it's bigger than my room, and it's beautiful I head, over stripping the clothes, I have on of and head, for the shower, I take a fast shower, and wrap a towel, around my body waking, slowly over to the bed, where Kate is sitting lost in his thought. Cade, I call to him as he looks up, I drop the towel, damn baby you are going to be the death of me. Get that fine is over here, he says with lust filling his eyes. I walk, swaying my hips, very sexily, and once I get to him I push him down on the bed climbing, on top of him kising him, for a while, until I need to pull away for air, I need a shower. Cade whispers, and I nod climbing of him, and watching him head to the bathroom, I climb into bed, and cover up laying waiting for him to get done, but sleep overtakes me. Cade's POV. I am lost in thought thinking how I almost lost Ash, and suddenly her sweet voice rings in my ears. Cade, she says I look up and she drops the towel that was covering her. The sight I seen was the best sight in the world her very sexy body, completely naked her eyes, looking at me full of lust and love, damn baby you are going to be the death of me. Get that fine is over here, I tell her feeling my cock throbbing, and hard as a rock. She sways her hips, walking towards me making my cock bounce in my pants gosh this girl, is going to kill me. I think to myself, and she pushes me to the bed climbing, on top of me kissing me, she pulls away, so we both can get some air, and I tell her I need a shower, I need a shower, I tell her in a whisper, she nods climbing of me, and I head to get into the shower, and I take a cold shower, to calm myself. Once I am done I walk out of the bathroom my lower half wrapped in a towel, and she is sleeping in bed. I drop the towel and head to the closet. I throw a pair of boxers on and head into bed. Next to her I put my arm over her, and she snuggle further into me, and I feel she is still naked. And I slide into her holding her tight, and I close my eyes and think how lucky I am. She is absolutely perfect, Colt my wolf says. Yes, she is, and she is ours. I tell him, and he purrs I smile, and soon I am drifting of to sleep. Aids POV. I woke up to Ash kissing my lips, and I put my arms around her neck, deepening the kiss. She moans out pulling away from me. Kate, I want you to mate and mark me. She says confidently. Baby I really want the same, but I want it to be special for you for us. I tell her with a smile. After the party tonight we are leaving for a few days. I finish telling her. Where are we going babe? She asks me shyly. I can't tell you but your bags are already packed. And I already planned it. I tell her with a smile. She nods, not pushing me any more. The party is soon we need to get ready, I tell her, and I get up of the bed, and she pulls me towards the shower, shower with me please, she begs me and I smile, yes baby, 
I tell her, and she starts the water and climbs in since she was still naked from last night. I slide my boxers of letting them hit the floor and stepping out of them and heading into the shower on. D climbing in next to her. I can't resist her my hands move to her hips, pulling her as to my throbbing cock. She moans as she feels my cock against her, as Anne back I whisper in her ear, Tonight you're mine. She turns to face me quickly kissing my lips, and dropping to her knees, looking up at me. But right now you're mine. She tells me licking the tip of my cock. I moan out load, tangling my hands in her hair. She takes my cock in her mouth, like a pro moaning on my cock. Gosh, you're a pro. I tell her she looks up at me and pulls of me. That's what I thought about you to babe. She says taking my cock back in her mouth. And I thrust my hips and force it down her throat. I watch as she looks at me tears streaming down her face as she moans on my cock. I ram my cock down her throat again, making her gag on my cock. And she moans louder against my cock. I do it a couple more times, feeling my end near my balls tighten, and I shoot my comb down her throat and ride it out in her mouth. Once I am done she cleans every last drop up and stands up. You're amazing babe, but no, W it's my turn, I tell her, and she smiles. I grab her waist, pushing her to the wall. I kneel down pulling her one leg placing it on my shoulder, and I do the same with the other so she is squatting on my shoulders, putting her pussy right to my face. I slowly start eating her pussy, like it's my last meal, and babe, I moan and slide a finger in her tight pussy, and she screams in pleasure. She is very loud and she rides my face and finger I slide another finger in her, and she screams again forcing herself down on me. Well, I slowly slide a finger to her, as and I slide a finger in her, as and she cries loudly in pleasure. You like that baby? I ask her and she screams riding me harder and faster. Yes, baby, give me more. She begs, so I slide another finger in her, as and another I make my fingers move faster in her, as and pussy, and eating her clit, I suddenly stop, making her whimper at loss of contact. I flip her around, and I eat her, as and she is screaming in pleasure. I slide two fingers in her pussy, use my other hand to smack H. Her as and she moans so loud I swear the shower door shook, oh baby. She screams and move my mouth from her, as and I slide my free hand up and slide two fingers into her, as moving them in and out of her pussy, and as fast and hard, I'm going to comb, she yells and I slide my fingers out of her pussy, ramming my tongue into her soaked hole, moving it fast, rubbing her clit with my hand, and I feel her walls, clench around my tongue, and she squirts, all over my tongue, forcing my tongue out of head exploding, all over my face, I slide my fingers back in her, and finger, fuck the shit out of her pussy and is letting her ride out her high, but before she is done, she is coming again, with even more force, Cade, she screams, don't stop, she pants as she starts forcing herself harder down onto my fingers, rolling her hips in circles, until she ride out her high I slowly pull my fingers out of her licking her pussy juice of my fingers. Then I lick her pussy clean, and smack her, as as I put her down, and turn her to face me. You're my little freak, I tell her with a proud smile. That was amazing, she says. Just wait till tonight, babe. I will have you never wanting to leave my dick. I tell her, and she smiles I kiss her for it, grabbing the washcloth and soap it up and I wash her body gently, and I wash her hair, then I wash myself, and my hair, then, I shut the water of and have her step out of the shower, 
and I wrap her in a towel, and then myself. Kate, I don't have clothes in here. She says I smile. In our closet you do. I tell her, and she heads to the closet, and I follow her grabbing a pair of my boxers and dropping my towel and sliding them on me. I then grab a tux and head to the bed. Ash, your dress is on the bed. I tell her, okay, let me get panties and a bra on, and I will be out. She said I laid my tickets down and start putting the pants on and then the shirt and I wrap the tie around me as Ash comes over to me. Pulling the tie from my hands away from the tie she ties it for me I smile, thank you, I tell her. You're welcome, she says and she looks sexy in lace panties that are brown with blue trim with a matching bra. She sees her dress laying on the bed. Well, this is beautiful. She says it's a slim, knee-length dress. It's silky brown with blue trim and matches her bra and panties perfectly. Seems you chose the perfect bra and panties. I tell her with a chuckle. She nods, pulling the dress over her head. The back of the dress is open and she looks stunning. Wow, you look absolutely beautiful. I tell her as she smiles I lean in and kiss her gently before I slide on my shoes and she puts on her heels heading to the vanity to brush her already beautiful hair and she applies light makeup and comes over to me. I am all ready, she says. Well, let's go, babe. We head out to the hall and to the steps heading down the steps. We can tell it's packed and guests H. Ave already shown up. We reach the bottom and are greeted by many guests. The party is already going well and it's very elegant. Ash's POV the whole house is decorated so perfectly guests are greeting Cade and I. I hold his hand firmly not wanting him to let go. Cade and Ashlyn can you both please make your way up here, Ace says from the stage. Cade and I begin to head up to the stage, where Ace and Mary are waiting. We are brought here to honor Cade and his mate Ashlyn, who will become Luna and Alpha. But first Ashlyn, you need to be sworn into out pack, Ace says. He cute his hand, and I follow cutting my hand, and with that I am flooded with mind links from the pack. I see an SD, get it to stop. I slowly figure out how to block them all out. Cade and Ashlyn will now be Alpha and Luna it's with great honor. I turn down the title and give it to my son and his perfect mate. The crowd cheers. She is the queen. One man yells from another pack others are gasping and in disbelief. Yes, she is but she is also Luna. Cade yells soon everyone begins to yell and I have honestly had enough of it. Everyone that will be enough. I shout as everyone bows down to me including Cade, Ace and Mary. Everyone please stand. There will be no fighting. Am I understood? I ask everyone they all nod. We are going to enjoy this night. I don't care if I am queen or not I will always be Cade's mate first, and we will run this pack with pride. I shout they all nod. Cade grabs my hand as the music starts back up. May I have this dance? Cade asks me, of course. I tell him as he pulls me towards the dance floor. He pulls me to him and slowly spins me around. Holding me tight to him we dance for a while. And it's perfect I love being in his arms. It's getting late and packs are starting to leave and soon it's just our pack left. Well, everyone, it was a great time. But it's time I take Ash away for a few days, Cade says, and everyone smiles. Have fun, kids. Ace states with a warm smile as Cade pulls me towards the door. Wait, we need clothes. I say they are already on the plane waiting for us. He tells me I smile and nod, telling everyone by we head outside.
and there is a limo waiting for us. He opens the door for me, and I climb in, and he climbs in sitting an extension to me, pulling me close to him. Where are we going? I asked him, to the plane. He cockily states I smirk. You know I can make you tell me where we are going, I tell him. Please don't. I want to keep it a surprise, he says. Okay, I say kissing his cheek resting my head on his chest. Kate's POV. We are pulling up to the private plane the car stops, and we head out, and head on to the plane, and I take her to the back, where there is a private room, and I sit down, and pull her next to me on the bed. Babe take a nap it will be around four hours before we arrive, I tell her. Okay, but stay with me, she says and I nod laying down pulling her with me. I pull the covers over us, and snuggle into her neck, she soon falls asleep, and I lay there watching her sleep. Sir, we will he landing in ten minutes, the pilot tells over the loudspeaker. Ash wake up we will be landing, I tell her, and she moans loud, and pulls me closer I chuckle. Baby we are almost to the surprise, I say as her eyes shoot open. Where? She asks sleepily. Cancun, I tell her and her eyes get big and she shoots out of the bed kissing me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, she says and I laugh. The plane soon lands and we make our way to the lumbo, waiting for us. I throw our bags in the car and help her in the car and shut her door and walk to the driver's seat and start the car. It takes about 45 minutes to make it to the beach house, but once we pull up she looks at me. This is where we will be staying, she says. Yes, this is one of many homes we own, I tell her, and she nods it's a big 10 BDRM house with 15 full baths and a heated indoor pool and outdoor pool and it's on the beach it's absolutely beautiful here. I park the car and run around to open her door, then I grab our bags, and we head for the front door, and inside open the door, she is stunned. Well thank you, she says I smile and nod at her, anything for my mate, my love, my other half. I tell her and she smiles, I love you, she whisper to me, and I give her a tour first heading to the master bath to drop of our bags, then I show her the rest of the rooms, and the kitchen that's fully stocked, and the living room, I show her everything she is so happy to be here, and I am happy I brought her here, gosh I love this girl, hey let's get a bite to eat, I tell her, okay babe, she says, do you want an omelet, I ask her, Yes, she says, and I nod getting all the ingredients out, and I start to make us both one, and soon we are eating them. These are amazing, she says, and I smile. I wash the plates and dry them, putting them away where they belong. I'm going to go get a shower, she says, and I nod and follow her. Ash POV. Cade and I head into the shower, and we both grab fast showers. I finish before him, and I rush to my bag. Finding the sexy lingerie, I asked Katie to buy and pack for me. I slide it on, with matching underwear it's a baby doll. See through very sexy it's black, with baby pink lace a garter, for my leg and matching thong. I stand by the bed waiting for Kate to come out of the bathroom a few minutes later. I hear the bathroom door open, and Cade walking into the room, looking at me with pure love and lust in his eyes. Wow, he says in a whisper I smile. Come here naughty boy, I tell him in a very sexy voice, and he slowly walks to me, and I sit in the bed, putting my arms behind me leaning back and spreading my legs to tease him. I slowly start rubbing my pussy moaning. Cade grabs my arm, pulling it away from rubbing my pussy, and he starts to rub it for me,
you're a very dirty little girl. He whispers in my ear, biting my ear lobe, and I moan my arms become weak and give out causing me to fall onto the bed. He climbs on top of me, supporting himself on his hands. Baby, are you sure you want to go through with this? He asks me. Yes, I am sure I want to do this. Do you want to? I ask. Yes, more than anything in the world, he says. He stands throwing the towel of his waist and pulls my panties of and then takes of my lingerie. If you change your mind, tell me, and I will always stop, he says kissing me. I nod wrapping my fingers in his hair. He kisses down my neck, and my back lifts of the bed, and I moan, quickly grabbing his hard cock, rubbing the head of it causing him to moan against my skin, making my already soaked pussy feel like an ocean. Baby please, I moan out. Please what? Kate asks. Fuck me now. I say looking into his eyes he nods. He lines his cock at my pussy, slowly rubbing it from my clit to my hole, making my back arch of the bed moaning. He pulls away and starts to push a finger in my pussy. No foreplay, just fuck me, I tell him. Baby, it will hurt more if I don't prepare your tight pussy to take my huge cock, he says worried. I don't care about the pain. I want you inside me now. I tell him almost begging him. He is hesitant but he listens to me lining his cock back at my entrance. He slowly begins to push it in and I am already loving this. Give me it all, I tell him. Be patient just this once it will hurt, he says. He keeps pushing his cock into me deeper and deeper until he hits my hymen and he stops looks at me. Baby this is going to hurt, if you need me to stop tell me. He says as I put my arms on his back. Okay I am ready, I tell him, and he quickly thrusts forward, and I feel a pop in pain, taking over me my nails, dig into Cade's back, to the point, I am sure I have blood and skin under my nails tears streaming down my face. Baby are you okay? He asks worried. Mark me, I tell him. What? He asks confused. Mark me now, I tell him. Only if you mark me at the same time, he says. Okay, then we do it together. Just don't move yet, I say. Does it still hurt? He asks in a nod. He carefully moved to my neck kissing and licking it finding my sweet spot, and I do the same to him and almost at the exact same time, we both bite each other, and the pleasure I am feeling took all pain away from my pussy, he pulls his teeth out and licks my mark to seal it, and I pull my teeth out of his neck, licking the blood, and gently sucking in it, and he moans thrusting hard, and deep inside me I scream in pleasure, Cade freezes. Baby are you okay? Did I hurt you? He asks. No, it feels amazing. I say as I move my hips, causing him to moan he beings to move inside me, at a steady pace, and I want more I need more now I push him over, and climb on top of him riding his cock, as fast and hard, as I can screaming and moaning his name. Babe slow down, he begs. No you feel so good. I say moving faster, he grabs my hips, forcing me to stop. But if you want this feeling to last you have to slow down your I will fill you up with my seed, he says, and I nod slowing down riding him at a good steady pace, and I can feel my body tensing, and my pussy walls, clenching around his cock, and I ride him a little faster, and harder screaming and moaning, Kate I'm going to comb, I moan, as he flips me on my back with him still inside me fucking me harder and harder oh god, I scream, oh baby not even god can save you, he says fucking me faster and harder, Kato fuck you right there, 
I scream my back arching of the bed, and into him, Baby, please don't stop. I beg, I won't babe, he says moaning fucking me even harder, and faster making tears fall down my cheek, and my orgasm takes over my body. My entire body is shaking really bad and Kate helps me ride out my high picking up his pace harder and harder making me moan so loud. Baby stop. I cry out in pure pleasure. And he stops. Are you okay? Did I hurt you? He asks. No fuck me don't listen to me. When I say stop fuck me harder. I tell him. And he nods fucking me hard, and fast he hits my guy spot, so hard, and fast I am quickly having another orgasm, as he shoots his load into my pussy with force, we both ride out our highs and he collapses next to me, that was amazing, he says, yes it sure was, I say, the best feeling in the world, I am so glad my first time was with you, he says and I smile, so am I baby you're my first and last. I say. I roll and lay my head onto his chest and reach up to kiss his lips. Gently and I pull away. You up for a round? I ask with a smile. Absolutely babe. He says. This time we can have foreplay. I tell him and he smiles widely at that. Kate's POV. I push her to the bed kissing down her neck, to her breasts, I play with her right, and suck and bite on her left, causing her to moan, fuck baby, she says, and I can smell her arousal. I switch and suck the right one and play with the left, then I work my way down her ribs and onto her stomach, kissing down to her pussy, I push her legs up and kiss her lips making her moan, and I fastly plunge my tongue into her pussy and fuck her fast and hard with my tongue, making her back arch and her scream and moan my name, baby Plea, she moans. What babe? I ask cockily. You need to put your huge cock in my pussy now, she begs. Like this, I push it in and pull it back out. Cade, fuck me now. She demands. Okay, okay, I tell her pushing my cock in, and I give her a few quick thrusts before pulling out of her. Kate, stop, she beds. Flip over, I tell her, and she gets into doggy style. I smack her as a few times making her moan, and her pussy drip onto the bed. I'm going to prepare that as for my cock. I tell her, and she shakes her head no. You don't want it. I ask her. No, don't prepare my as just put it in and fuck me. She demands. It will hurt, I warn her. I don't care, just do it. She demands me. I line my cock up with her as whole, and I ram it into her fast to try to help with the pain, and I stop as soon add my balls, smack her pussy she screams out in pain. Are you okay? I ask. Yes, she says obvious that she is crying I hold still giving her as time to adjust to my 12 inch long 3 inch thick cock. Before I know it she is riding my cock. I slid my hand under and slide two fingers into her dripping pussy and ram my cock into her faster and harder. Yes, baby, she moans her pussy and as is so tight. She is perfect and I am addicted to fucking her tight holes. I pick up speed fingering her hard and I ram my cock in her as hard making her scream in pleasure. Don't stop. Fuck me harder. She demands between moans. So I ram into her as hard as I can. I pull out of her telling her to hold on going into my bag. Pulling out a strap on made for double penetration. And I put it on so the dildo fucks her. As and you fuck her pussy. I'm going to fill both holes babe. I tell her and she nods backing her as up to me. The dildo is the same size as my cock. 
I ran them into both her holes with my hands on her hips, and she screams out in pure pleasure, causing me to moan. You're so tight and so full. I tell her moaning. Fuck me harder, she begs, and I start fucking her as hard and fast as I can making her squirt all over my cock. I keep fucking her letting her ride out her high. Before I know it she is squirting me again, her whole body taying to give out I hold her up and keep ramming into her. Oh Cade, she scream moans making me go harder and faster into her. Soon I am coming deep inside her screaming her name. After we ride out our highs I pull out of her realizing my cock has blood on it. Baby you're bleeding, I tell her. What? She says, you're bleeding, I say frantically. She sits up and she sees blood all over my cock, and her pussy is bloody. Must be from when you took my virginity, she says calmly standing stripping the bed and putting it in the hamper. I will make the bed after my shower, she says and I nod heading to the hall, jumping in an empty shower and quickly showering and I throw a towel around my waist, and grab new bedding, and I go into the room, making the bed, quickly, and I pull out a pair of boxers, from my bed, and slide them, on soon I hear the shower shut of, and a few minutes later Ash comes out, and into the room, grabbing her bag, and putting it on the bed, and pulls out a pair of panties, and slides them on then, she gets my bag and pulls one of my shirts out pulling it over her head. Come here my sexy girl, I say and she comes to me kissing me. As much as I would love round three baby you need to rest, I tell her as she nods and climbs into bed, and I lay beside her holding her. Ashlyn I love you so very much. Are you sure you're alright? I ask her. Yes, I am all right, babe. I love you so much, honey, she says. Silence fills the room before we both fall asleep. Ah, uh, I hear Ash screaming. I jump up and it's 5 a.m. Ash, what's wrong? I ask her. My belly hurts. She yells. You're burning up. I tell her jumping from the bed to the bathroom, starting a cold bath and heading back to the room. I scoop her into my arms, and she snuggles into me tightly grabbing me. I try to set her in the cold tub, but she won't let me go. Ash, you got to let me go. I need to call mom and see what to do, I say, and she lets me go, and I lay her in the tub and run out to grab my phone. Hello, my mom says. Mom Ash is burning up and we am a mated and she bled. I say frantically. My mom chuckles. It's not funny mom, she is burning up. I yell. Son, she is coming into heat. You need to mate her again to get the pain to stop for her, she says. Okay, I will thanks by mom. Kate, help me. Ash is screaming. Make it stop, she yells. I rush to her. Ash, my mom said you're in heat. The only way to stop it is we have to mate again, I tell her. Then fuck me. She yells crying. Okay, I will take you to the bed, I tell her, and I slowly pick her up and carry her to the bed and lay her down. Hurry, it hurts, she cries out. I waste no time and I start to shove my dick into her pussy, fucking her hard, and fast her painful screams, soon turn into pleasure screams, and I am finally relieved she isn't in pain, no more the more I fuck her the more her body relaxes. Yes, baby, just like that, she moans clawing into my back, pulling me deeper into her I moan, and thrust deep, and hard into her, and she is screaming in pleasure, I'm um, right there oh oh yeah, she screams as she squirts all over my cock, and I lose it, and I shoot my load into her tight pussy. Ah, uh, she says. Are you okay? I ask. Yes, I am great now. The pain is all gone, she says with a smile, 
Thank you, she says. No, baby, don't thank me. It was my pleasure. I tell her. I'm sleepy, she says, and I pull out of her and kiss her head. Get some sleep, my love. I tell her pulling the covers over us and cuddling her she soon falls asleep. I love you. I whisper before closing my eyes and drifting off to sleep. Ash POV. Our trip is absolutely amazing. Although we have been spending most of our time with each other on making love, Cade has taken me to beautiful caves, and it was a lot of fun. He also took me to the beach, and shopping I got a few cute outfits, and so did Cade. It's been a lot of fun, and I am sad to say we will be leaving soon. What's the matter baby? Cade asks me. I'm sad to be leaving is all I had such a great time here. I tell him sadly, but I was honest with with. Good news is baby this is ours, and we can come back any time you want. He tells me with a smile. All right babe, I tell him pouting. Get ready I want to take you to one more spot, before we head home. He tells me. Okay. Let's go, I tell him excited. We will take our belongings with us and head for the plane after a small surprise. He tells me. Where are we going? I ask. It wouldn't be a surprise, if I told you now would it be? He asks. But, I start to say but I am cut off, let's grab out bags and let's go. He says. I rush to grab my bags with Cade right behind me. Damn, he says. What? I ask. You look very fine from this view. He says. I turn to look back, and he has a perfect view, and he is looking up my short skirt, and I have no panties on. You pervert. I tell him laughing. I am not a pervert. He says sounding offended. I only have eyes for what's mine. Amp, I will always find you very attractive and you will always be my weakness. He tells me with a smile. And you will always be mine, and I will always only have eyes for you as well, baby. I tell him. I finish heading up the stairs and into the room to grab my bags. But I am met by him grabbing me and pushing me to the wall. I drop my bags, and he gently pushes my face to the wall. And I whimper. He slowly slides his hand up my thigh to my now-soaked core, and he groans. So sexy and so wet he says, only for you baby. I moan breathlessly. He moves his hand of my dripping pussy and smacks my ass. You will pay for this. I tell him. Pay for what baby? He asks with a smirk on his face. You know what? I tell him. No, I don't baby. Please enlighten me. He says. For making me dripping wet and leaving me hanging. I tell him annoyed. You will pay and I will make sure it is worse than what I am feeling. I say with a smirk. Okay baby I will wait now let's go we are running out of time. He says and I nod I try to grab my bags. But I am quickly stopped. I will carry the bags babe you just take your sexy as to the car. He says and I head for the steps and out the front door heading to the lumbo, and and Cade soon climbs in beside me, and we head to the surprise about fifteen minutes. Later, I hear Cade clearing his throat, and I look at him. Baby put this on, he says handing me a blindfold. I don't want to. I tell him. Please, he asks sounding so cute begging me. I am scared. I honestly tell him. I won't let anything happen baby. Trust me. He says. I do trust you. It's just a fear of mine. Because of my past I uh, I was blindfolded and beat and almost raped before. I tell him tears threaten to come down my cheeks. I promise noon will ever hurt you again. He says as I put the blindfold on facing my fears head on. 
I feel the car come to a stop and the car turns of and I am very scared my body is trembling, but not cause I think Cade will hurt me just because of my past. When my foster dad and his two sons blind folded me and beat me stripping my clothes of and touching my body, the only thing that saved me was my foster mom. Coming home, she beat me till I could hardly move telling me I was a whore for trying to fuck her sons and husband. Soon I ended up with a different family. I am coming around to get you. He tells me. Okay, is all I managed to say tears rolling down my cheek. I hear my door open as Andy Cade grabs my hand, helping me out of the car, and once I am standing he pulls me close to him, and he takes me towards the surprise he has planned. On the count of three remove the blindfold, he says as he moves away from me I nod. One, he starts counting. Two. Three, he says and I rip the blindfold of my face, only to be shocked. Kate is kneeled down with a box in his hand open, and in the box is a beautiful ring it's big and looks to be very expensive, and we are on the beach, and it's absolutely beautiful. Ashlyn, I know we haven't known each other long, but I can't imagine my life without you. You came in my life and you're all I think about. You're my reason to fight, you're my reason to smile, you're the breath. I breathe you are funny, smart, demanding, and absolutely the sexiest woman in the world. You complete me. Without you I am nothing. Will you marry me? He says with tears in his eyes. Cade, get up. I tell him, and he slowly stands and hangs his head low, I can feel the hurt radiating of him. I grab his chin, making him look at me. Kate, I would be honored to become your wife. You're my whole world and I love you. So, yes. I tell him and he jumps with joy and kisses my whole face and slides the ring on my finger. It's beautiful. I tell him it's big, but nice. It's square with lots of small diamonds and one big diamond in the middle. He kisses me and we head to the car and then to the private airplane when his phone rings. He walks away from me and after he comes back about 20 minutes later, he is acting very strange. Is everything okay? I ask confused and he nods. The rest of the plane ride is silent. He doesn't talk to me, only nods. I am getting annoyed. We get into the car after getting of the plane, and start to head home. Who was on the phone? I demand. Mimi Dad, he says. What was it about? I ask Comer. Nothing, he says. Nothing. If it was nothing you wouldn't be avoiding me. I shout. Someone came looking for you. He says. Who? I have noon. I say confused. A woman and man and two men claiming to be your family. He tells me and my eyes become wide. What did they leave? I ask worried. No, they are staying till you get back. I thought you had no family. He says obviously mad. I don't have any known family. I shout at him for accusing me of lying. If it's who I believe it to be then it's a foster family. I had in the past. I say crying. Why are you crying? He asks, coming to comfort me. But they hurt me. They are the ones who blindfolded me and beat me and tried to rape me before my foster mom came home and she sent the of and beat me until I could hardly move. Then I got sent to a new family not long after. I was only. I tell him through sobs. What? He yells. I will kill them all. He yells trying to comfort me. We will handle this together. I tell him pulling him into me so I could calm down by his scent and he could calm down by mine. Okay, he says and we stay silent. 
I am lost in thought and quickly brought back to reality when the driver spoke. Alpha, Luna, we are here, he says, stopping the car. Thank you, I say, and Cade and I climb out heading for the door to the house once inside Cade. Seems mad again, and we are greeted by Alpha and Luna's warm smiles. Welcome home, they say in unison to us. Thank you. I say in a worried tone. What's wrong? Luna Mary asked me. Nothing. I say. Where are they? I ask. Who? Oh, your family. She says, earning a growl from Cade and tears welling in my eyes. Not her family. He says mad. Where are the pieces of trash? Cade says furious. Cade, I have raised you better than that. You will greet them with respect. Luna Mary tells Cade in her Luna voice firm and demanding. No, I will not. They have hurt her. I will not respect anyone who hurts my mate, he shouts. Enough everyone, I shout, where are they? I ask firmly. In the guest house, dear. Alpha Ace tells me. Cade, please take me to the guest house, I ask him. Yes, baby, this way. He tells me and I follow with Luna and Alpha. Following behind me, we walk down the path and to the guest house. And I am not going to lie, I am scared shitless to face them after all the pain and hurt they caused me. But I must stay strong and face them. Are they human? I suddenly ask. No, they are werewolves, Luna says, and I nod we get to the guest house, and Kate knocks on the door. Suddenly the door opens, and standing in the door is my old foster mom Betty. Hi honey, I haven't seen you in so long, she says with a smile, Kate growls. I wonder why. I say to her, your husband Ted and your sons Jack and Frank beat me and attempted to rape me. Then you came home and I thought I was safe finally and you would help me, but instead you beat me until I couldn't, hardly move calling me a whore, for trying to take your husband from you, and trying to tarnish your perfect boys. I yell at her and Cade and Alpha Ace growl loudly, and she looked shocked that I spoke my mind stating the truth to everyone. Why have you come here? Alpha asks Betty. Alpha, we came to explain why it all happened. Betty tells Ace. Ashlyn, I am very sorry for what you have been through in the past. I know our behavior made being an orphan even harder. Betty says. You're sorry. It's been years and now you want a pity party. You expect me to forgive you for almost beating me to death. And your sick husband and son's beating and almost raping me and touching my body. You're sorry. Seriously, you have no idea the hell I went through because of you and your husband and sons. I shout. Ted is not my husband. Betty shouts. What? I say. I killed that bastard years ago. Betty says. He kidnapped me and forced me to bear his pups. He tried to force the boys on you to make them monsters like he is. He wasn't my mate. He killed my mate and took me. He forced me to stay quiet, but after he hurt you I killed him sending you to a new family. She says tears welling in her eyes. Ashlyn, I am your birth mother. My mate Darren was your dad. I never abandoned you when he killed your dad and took me. You were left behind. I didn't know until, after I turned into a monster, and hurt you once I found out I killed him, and straightened out the boys, and you I had sent to a new home, hoping they could help you heal, and I thought it would be better not to tell you. Betty tells me crying. Yo, you're my real mother. How is this possible? I shout tears welling in my eyes. How is Ted dead, when you came with a man stating to be my dad? I ask confused. Well it turns out your father Darren was saved, and he spent a while in the hospital, 
and you went to a home, and when he got out he tried to track you down, with no luck, until he found me, and we found you together. Betty tells me. Where is he? I ask tears streaming down my face. Come in and I will take you to him, she says, and we all follow her lead. Ashlyn, this is your dad Darren, Betty tells me, and surprisingly I look a lot. Like him I have his eyes and hair and tanned skin. Baby, Darren says grabbing me and pulling me into a hug. Daddy. I shout crying harder. Yes, baby. You look so much like me. Oh, how I wish I never lost you. He says apologetically. I should have been there to protect you. He says crying. It's okay you're here now. I tell him, there is someone I want you to meet. I tell him and he lets me go. This is Cade my mate and Alpha to be, I tell him. He reaches to shake Cade's hand. Pleased to meet you son, I hope you're taking care of my daughter. He says, absolutely of course, I only give her the best. I can after all she is my queen. He tells my dad. Queen. Frank says, yes, queen. Cade states pulling me to him. She is the queen. Betty asks, yes, we all have seen it. Alpha Ace says with a smile, well, I am sorry to be rude, but Cade and I have just returned from our trip and I would like to get some rest. I tell my family, absolutely dear, my dad says, come back when you are rested. He finishes pulling me from Cade's arms, hugging me tightly. After the hug, ends my mother Betty, comes over and reaches for me. I am sorry, but after what I have been put through at the hands of you and your sons, I really need time to clear my head and think. I say as kind as I can. It's okay, I understand maybe one day you will be able to forgive me, she says and I nod. Have a good evening, my dad says. I will try. Bye, I say smiling at him heading for the door, with Cade right behind me, and Alpha and Luna following us. We head for the house, and once we reach the door, I suddenly feel overwhelmed and my legs feel weak, and my vision fuzzy, I grab for Cade, and I hold on to him. Baby I feel weak. I say to him, do you need the DR, he asks worried. No, please carry me to our bed. I ask as he picks me up carrying me to the bed. Once upstairs he kicks the door closed with his leg and carries me to the bed, pulling back the covers and laying me down, taking of my clothes till I am naked, and he covers me up heading to lock the bedroom door. Thank you. I mumble he leans in kissing my head. You're welcome, he says. He quickly strips of his clothes, leaving his boxers on and climbs into the bed and snuggles me to him holding me tightly. I love you, he whispers. I love you too, I say. We remain silent and I start to doze of. Cade's POV. I am abruptly woke up by Ash screaming bloody murder. Get of me, she yells. I sit up looking around noon, is around just her and I. Stop please, she yells. Don't do this to me, she cries out. Ash baby, I gently shake her. Babe please wake up you're having a nightmare, I say. She begins to slowly move and her eyes suddenly shoot open and she is clearly scared she pushes me away, until she realizes it's me then she pulls me to her. I am sorry, she says. I had a nightmare, she finishes. It's okay, baby, I tell her pulling her on my lap, kissing her neck, gently. She wraps her arms tightly around my neck. Please don't ever leave me, she begs. I would never. You're my world. I tell her. She kisses me on my neck, causing me to moan out, and she works her way to my lips, kissing me deeply, 
and passionately gosh this girl is going to kill me she is perfect she suddenly pulls away when are they leaving she asks your dad and them i ask she nods my dad said tomorrow earlier so i guess tomorrow i said good the only one i can face right now is my dad she tells me i know i am sorry i tell her kissing her cheek go back to sleep baby i tell her i keep her in my arms until her breathing evens out and i am sure she is sound asleep i gently lay her on the bed and i lay beside her and she pushes her body against me and she fits perfectly i put my arm over her and lay my head down soon sleep takes me over the next morning wake up babe i tell ash kissing her gently um mit is a good morning she says why is that i ask confused cuz any morning waking up to you kissing me is a good morning she says and i smile kissing her more passionately gosh i am horny this girl makes my dick throb just looking at her i start to play with her pussy with one hand pushing a finger into her and kissing her i move down her neck kissing until i make it to her perfectly bug breasts 34d yes big and perfect i suck on her nipple making her arch her back and i pick up the speed of fucking her with my finger until i feel her walls tighten r o u n d my finger and her screaming my name riding my finger harder and harder as she comes hard on my finger i pull out my finger lick it clean and then eat her tight delicious pussy and let her ride out her high soon i can't take it any more i need to feel her pussy wrapped around my cock i line my cock at her tight pussy and push it into her slowly causing her to moan and arch her back i go to thrust again but we are interrupted by knock knock who is it i yell sorry to interrupt your love session but you love birds are needed downstairs kyle states with a chuckle okay be right down ash says pay back babe she chuckles pushing me of her come on babe we can do a quickie i tell her pouting um no you left me horny and i told you i will pay you back well cal this pay back she chuckles heading for the shower and i follow her we both grab fast showers to get the smell of sex and sweat of of us and we quickly dry and get dressed let's head down now ash says looking sexy in a very short dress her long tan legs are flawless and she instantly makes my dick rock hard um um babe you look so good i say i think your dick thinks so to she says with a chuckle Quickie. Oh yes. No, it's payback. She says heading out of our room with a smirk on her face, and I follow her. We get down into the kitchen, and I see there is a lot of people in here. Ash Cade, Ash Dad says. Yes, Ash says. We will be leaving now, my dear. Her dad says. Okay, Dad, when can I see you again? She asks. Well about that. He says calmly. We will be joining the pack in a few weeks. We need to go home and get our belongings and we will return 4 weeks from now, he says. Okay, sounds good. I see you in 4 weeks, she says with a smile. He reaches out his arms and she gladly hugs him. We all say our goodbyes as they leave. I am honestly relieved. that they are leaving for a while to give ash time to adjust and hopefully to stop having nightmares we wave them by as their car pulls down the driveway ashlyn's pov it's been 3 weeks since my dad and betty and her sons left and i have been sick a lot i am thinking it's because of the amount of stress and finding out i have a dad and he tried to find me i am so happy but worried at the same time 
Every time I eat I get sick and spend a lot of time emptying my stomach into the toilet. But Cade and I are going to see the DR to see if I can take something to help me to feel better. Babe, you ready? Cade asks me pulling me from thinking about all I have been through these past few weeks. Yes, I say standing to take his hand we head to the pack clinic and we head in from the nurse that we are here. Alpha, Luna the DR will be right with you. Brooke the nurse tells us and we smile and nod. Please follow me, she says taking us to a room. I take a seat on the bed, and she starts by taking my vitals. Your blood pressure is good, here rate good. Your weight is down but that's to be expected, since you have been vomiting a lot. She says with a smile, and I nod Cade, looks worried and scared. The DR is on her way to your room, please excuse me. She says leaving the room. Cade are you okay? I ask him after Brooke leaves the room. Yes I am okay just worried about you. He says with a smile. I'm okay babe, I tell him. Knock knock. Good afternoon Alpha and Luna, DR Ray says with a smile. Ash I would like to take some blood, she says. Okay. I tell her as Brooke comes into the room with the blood work kit. Also I would like a urine sample, DR Ray says and I nod. Why do you need blood and urine, Kate asks worried. Just precaution. To make sure we don't miss anything. She says with a smile. Miss what? He asks. Underlying medical issues or um, pregnancy? She says calmly. Pregnancy? I shout. Yes, dear. I have a feeling you're pregnant. She says. What this can't be? I say crying. Baby, are you okay? Cade asks, pulling my head to his chest, rubbing my belly. Cade, please stop babying me. I shout not trying to. I'm not babying you. I am trying to comfort you, babe, he says. I'm sorry. Can we please get this over with now? I ask getting up and grabbing the specimen cup from the DR and heading into the bathroom. Pulling my panties down and lifting my dress, I sit on the toilet and fill the cup full washing my hands and exiting the bathroom. I had the cup to the DR, who leaves the room with it. Brooke will take your blood sample, DR Ray says as she shuts the door, and I nod sitting on the bed. Brooke carefully takes the blood sample she needs and exits the room. The DR will be back in a few, she says as she closes the door. I'm scared to be a mom. I H O N E S L T Y tell Kate. You will be a great mom if you are pregnant. He says with a smile. How do you know? What if I turn out like my mother Betty? I ask. You are a great person, and you will be a great mom and nothing like her. You have a kind heart and you're very loving. I see how you look at the pups with nothing but love and admiration in your eyes. If you're pregnant you will be the best mom of all time, he tells me. Before, I could answer the DR walks in rolling a cart, with a computer looking thing on it. Is everything okay? Cade asks before I could. Yes, everything is perfect, she says with a smile. You're pregnant. She shouts happily. How far along is she? Cade asks. Well, I am not sure but that's why I brought in the ultrasound machine, so we can find out. She says. Ash, I need you to lift your dress, she says and I lift my dress. This will be cold, she says and I nod. She puts a gel on my stomach and it feels like ice. I jump at the chilling sensation. Sorry, she says. She applies a wand to my stomach, where the gel was and begins to move it across my stomach. My eyes are on Cade and his eyes are on me watching what the doctor's doing. Cade and Ash look at this screen, 
she says pointing to the small screen. We both look and my heart melts at the sight I see. That's my baby, I say in awe. Yes, that's your baby, but there is two babies, she says. Two babies? Kate asks. Yes, two healthy babies, Dr. tells us. We are having two babies, I say feeling very excited. It appears you're about three weeks pregnant. A normal pregnancy for wolves is four months, the DR tells us. What should she eat? Can we have sex? Will I hit the babies with my shaft? Kate asks panicking and I chuckle loudly. Kate calm down. Although you're huge you won't poke the babies. And yes we can have sex. I say laughing at him. Is THSD right doc? Kate asks. Yes, sex is safe and you won't hurt the pups. And as for food, she should try to eat healthy. But until the morning sickness subsides, in the next couple weeks, anything she can keep down is fine, Dr. tells Cade and he nods. When will we be able to see the sex? I ask. Come back in three weeks, she says and I smile. I want you to take these vitamins. It will help the babies with nutrition. Since you're having severe morning sickness, she says handing me a bottle of pills. Thank you. I tell her she hands me a towel you'll clean my stomach of with but Kate takes the towel from me and wipes my stomach for me. Then he gently pulls my dress back down and helps me sit up. Kate I can sit myself up, I say. I know but from now on I will help you with any and everything you need. He tells me picking me up of the bed to carry me. Kate I can walk, I tell him. Yes, but I would rather carry you my love, he says in a nod. He carries me into the house and into the kitchen and sets me down on a chair. What do you want to eat mama? Kate asks me, but before I could answer Luna interrupts. Mama, she questions us. Yes, Ashlyn is pregnant, Kate tells her and she jumps with joy. Oh, this is great news, she says. How far are you? She asks me. About three weeks and it's twins, I tell her. Twins, she shouts happily. Oh my, this is perfect timing. Cade and Ash we are handing down the Alpha and Luna title in two weeks, she says excited. Okay, I say nervously and Cade nods. We will have a party to announce the title hand down of you to she says and I yawn and smile at her. Well mom, I am going to get her fed and then take her to bed. Cade tells her and she nods. Cade makes us a steak with fried onions and a side of potato salad, and it smells delicious. I dig in as soon as he sets my plate down feeling nauseous. After a few bites, I push my plate away. Baby, you got to eat more for the pups, he says. Cade, I can't. I'm going to be sick. I tell him rushing out of the kitchen and up the steps into our room and straight into the bathroom. I hear the door open. But I can't. Look up. I just puke. I feel Cade's arm on my shoulder. And he pulls my hair back rubbing my back gently. I'm so sorry baby. He says sounding like he might cry. I finally stop puking and look at Cade. Sorry for what? I ask him. It's half my fault. I am the one who helped plant my seed. Causing you to become P-R-E-G-N-S-N-T. And now you're sick because of me. He says sadly. Kate it's not your fault. It's just a part of having pups growing inside me. I say leaning back into him. I know babe. But I still feel bad. He tells me and I stand up heading for the bed slowly. And I flop onto the bed and quickly fall asleep. Two weeks later. Kate's POV. The morning sickness, or shall I say all day sickness, has finally stopped and Ash is starting to grow a round belly. She looks great. Her father and her are closer than ever, 
and she is slowly mending her heart and talking to Betty, Frank, and Jack. They all feel awful for what happened. Tonight Ash and I take over the title, and I can't be more excited the whole house is decorated and Ash went with my beta's mate Kate to get dresses for tonight, and while they are out I told Kate to go to get their hair, makeup and nails done to save times and stress on Ash. Kate, Ash says walking into the house. You're back so soon. I ask it's only been five hours usually it takes much longer. Yes, we are back. Can you please help with the bags? She asks me. Of course, I tell her heading towards the door and out to the car. I start grabbing bags, but they are full of candy and chocolate, chips and pickles. Get cravings. I asked her chuckling. Yes, but don't laugh at me. I am a growing girl and I need my chocolate and pickles. She says pouting. Of course my love anything you crave shall be yours, I tell her. Is that so? She asks. Yes, my love anything. I say and she smiles at me with lust in her eyes. Well I want you then right now. I tell him. Hey I'm still here, Kate says. I know, but not only do I have weird food craving, but I have constant Cade cravings, she says with a blush and smile. Where do you want the bags? I ask. In our room, please. I think I want some while I get dressed, she says. All right, I say carrying the bags to our room. Once I get to the room, I unpack the bags on the bed, 13 bags of Heath bars, 18 bags of Reese's, 5 bags of sour Skittles, about 10 bags of different kinds of chips, 3 packs of Twizzlers chocolate flavored, 3 cans of frosting, and a few neutral colored baby outfits. I clear of the top of the stand in my room, and nearly place all her junk foods, and I put the baby outfits into the closet and walk out to see Ash sitting on the bed naked with H. A cute little pouch showing. Um, um baby, I say walking over to her I gently push her down kissing her. Ah, she says putting her hand on her belly. What's wrong? I ask freaking out. Feel, she says putting my hand on her belly and I feel the babies kicking my hand with force. That's amazing. I tell her she is five weeks and only has two months and three weeks left in her pregnancy and one week till we find out the gender of our pups. I pull my hand away and start kissing her belly. Baby, please fuck me. She says in moans and I comply standing and stripping out of my clothes as fast as I could and I lift her legs and slid in. Babe, you hurting me, she says and I stop. I will stop, I tell her. No, you won't stop, but my legs are pushing into my growing belly. Can we change positions, she says. Yes, flip over, babe. I tell her and help her into the doggy style position, slowly sliding my cock back into her tight pussy. I fuck her at a steady pace as she starts to slam back on my cock. Harder baby. She shouts, I don't want to hurt you. I tell her honestly. Fuck me like you used to now. She says slamming herself on my cock hard. Fine. But if it hurts, tell me, I tell her and she nods. I slam into her grabbing her hips with my hands, fucking her hard and fast. Stop, babe, she moans very sexily, and I know stop means harder to her. So I slam into her harder until I feel her walls tighten around my cock, and she is squirting all over my cock. I keep fucking her hard and fast her whole body shacking, violently, but I fuck her harder she is screaming my name, yes oh babe yeah, she moans, and I feel my end near, come for me baby, she begs, and I fuck her harder, and harder we both climax together.
and we ride out our high then. I slowly pull my cock out of her, and help her lay down. And before I lay beside her, that my love was absolutely amazing. She says between breaths, Yes it was babe, but you should rest now, I tell her. I would but the pups are kicking me hard, and honestly, I am still horny, she tells me, and I put my hand on her belly, and put my lips to her belly talking to my pups, listen lil pups, you need to stop kicking your mommy needs sleep, I whisper to the pups I be her belly, no their mommy needs their daddy to eat her pussy, Ash says with a smile. As you wish, I tell her I slowly go down, and slowly eat her pussy god. She tastes like heaven I eat her pussy, making her comb for any about five times, before she pulls me up to her kissing me passionately. You're amazing. Thank you babe. I feel relaxed now and very sleepy, she says. You're welcome. It was my pleasure get some rest baby. I tell her kissing her head and laying beside her. Soon we both take a nap. Ashlyn's POV. Waking up from my nap. I feel Cade's hand rubbing my stomach. I look at him and nudge him. But he doesn't move hum. He must be doing it in his sleep. I am really craving ice cream with bacon in it. I wonder if we can go get some maple flavored ice cream and bacon from town. Cade, can you wake up? I ask kissing his lips. He quickly responds kissing me back, and I pull away. Cade, can we go to town? I ask him. Baby, we have the party in two hours. He tells me and I pout. Why, babe, what do you need? He asks. Maple-flavored ice cream and bacon. I tell him proudly. Ice cream and bacon must be s new craving. He asks, yes I want the bacon fried and put in my ice cream. I tell him, yuck, he says gagging, stop it. I tell him tears welling in my eyes, of uh, these emotions, are getting the best of me. Baby don't cry, he says, but I am already sobbing like a baby. I will see if I can send someone to the store to pick up your bacon and ice cream. He says, no, it's fine. I don't want you to judge me. I say crying harder. I'm sorry, baby, I didn't mean to upset you. I wasn't judging you. It just caught me of guard. He says, trying to plead with me. Kyle's mother Kelly is going to town to get you bacon and ice cream, baby. He tells me and I smile like a fool and nod my head. The simplest things make you happy. He says kissing my belly, and I can't help but giggle. We need to get ready. I tell him pulling myself up of the bed and heading to get my new dress out of the closet. I head to the bed, laying my dress onto the bed, and head to the bathroom to freshen up. Then I head back to the bedroom naked and try to put my dress on but I become twisted in it. Cade, help me. I say, please hurry. I say frantically. What happened? He asked, chuckling, pulling my pretty white lace maternity dress over me. I got twisted in it somehow. I say, relieved to be unstuck. He went into the closet as I sat on the bed, putting my shoes on trying to put my low heels on as Cade comes out. Babe, let me buckle them, he says acting, as if I am huge. But I let him to save my energy we finish up and head down the steps for the party. I am nervous and excited and really wishing my bacon and ice cream was here. We head down the steps and we are greeted by a few in the house. We head out back and it's beautifully decorated with fairy lights hanging candles and flowers everywhere it's breathtaking. Cade refuses to let go of my arm as we greet everyone we paw, working our way to the stage. Once we arrive we are greeted by the Luna and Alpha. 
Everyone may I please have your attention. Everyone becomes silent. As you know Luna Mary and I are becoming older and we are ready to relax a little in life. We are all gathered here to witness Cade become the Alpha of the Misty Falls Pack and Ashlyn is to become the Luna of the Misty Falls Pack. I am pleased and honored to be passing down the title. They both are very deserving. They both are kind and caring. They always put the pack before themselves. I am pleased to have such a great son and daughter-in-law that will run this pack to the best of their abilities, and I am sure they will not let us down. He says pausing, without further ado, I would like to formally announce Alpha Cade and Luna Ashlyn, he says and everyone cheers. Quiet everyone please, he says after a few minutes of cheering everyone becomes silent. Now we will have the pack run. Since Ash is expecting she will not be running, but Alpha Cade, Will and anyone who wishes to join is welcome to join, he says. Also dinner will be served in one HR. So please keep the run to under an hour. He finishes and Cade gives me a quick kiss. Then kissing my bump, I will be back as quick as possible. He says over of the pack shifts and takes of on the run, with Cade leading the run, while I stay back with mostly women and pops and the elders. Ash, I got your bacon and ice cream. Kelly says through the mind link to me. On my way, thank you. I link back to her. I walk into the house, heading for the kitchen. Thank you, Kelly. I tell her with a smile. I got real bacon bits, they were out of packs of bacon, she says. That's perfect, I tell her grabbing a bowl and spoon, I open the ice cream and bacon bite and put some bacon in my bowl, then I add ice cream and more bacon bits, and I dig in em that hit the spit yummy yet so good. Babe are you okay, Kate mind links me. Yes I am perfect. I am eating my bacon and ice cream it's so good, I link him back. Okay babe, I will be back soon, he says. I continue to devour my ice cream, enjoying every last bite as Cade walks in, as I only have a few bites. Left, I moan out in pure enjoyment as Cade chuckles. That good huh? He asks. It's more than I could have ever imagined. I say finishing up my bacon ice cream. Let's go get some real food, babe, he tells me and I nod. Lately, I have been able to eat a lot, non-stop. If I don't have food in my hands, something is wrong. We go and eat and talk with pack members. We are having a good time. About one am more than of the pack has went home and the rest are getting ready to head home. Around 2 a.m. we say good night to the rest of the leaving pack members. Well, that's everyone, Cade says. Good, let's head to bed, I tell him. We head upstairs and I strip and crawl into our bed and I drift to sleep. I wake up around 5 a.m. and I am alone in bed. Cade, I mumble, but get no reply. I get up from the bed, throw on one of Cade's shirts, and work my way down the hall to our office and the door is slightly cracked open, and that's when I hear him talking with his beta Kyle. Do you think they will come after our pack? Kyle asks. They would be dumb if they did. We are the second strongest pack in the world, but we need to prepare just in case and Ashlyn is not to know nothing about this. She doesn't need the worry or stress. Kate tells Kyle. Absolutely I won't tell her anything. Got to keep your pops and her safe and healthy, he says. I want more warriors patrolling out borders, and I want guards to protect Ashlyn, Kate says. I have had enough of this I walk into the office and Kate and Kyle become silent. Hello Luna, Kyle greets me. What are you doing awake, my love? Kate asks. 
Well, I woke up and you were gone and I came here. I say, also you need inform me about the possibility of an attack. I tell him. Um, Kate says looking at me lost for words. I heard your discussion and I want to know more. I understand your concern about not wanting to stress me and the pups, but I deserve to know if our pack is in danger, so we all can take proper precautions. I tell him and he nods. About ten different packs have been attacked by a rouge pack that goes by the name of Blood Slasher Pack. They have killed anyone who refuses to join their pack, and they take all women and children as prisoners. The women and children are used as slaves and treated poorly, Cade tells me pausing. But before he can continue, I interrupted him. So you're telling me innocent children and women are being used and abused, and we are not doing anything to help them. I say pissed of ugh. How can we sit back and let innocent women and children be hurt and abused? We are in no position to help right now. We have no idea where they are keeping the women and children. But we are working on a location, and you're in no position to fight. We need to gather intelligence and wait until after the birth of the pups to ensure your safety and the safety of our pups, Kate tells me, and I hate to admit it, but he is right if he leaves our pack is weekend and I am in no position to fight to protect our back. I will agree, but I want to be kept up to date. And once we have a location, I want to start working up a plan to rescue them only a few months and the pups will be here. Also in five days we will find out the gender of the pups, and I would like to have a baby shower or celebration for them. I tell Cade. Consider it done my love now let's get you back to bed, Cade says. Kyle you're free to get back to your mate, and we will discuss this further. After warrior training, also we need to get more information, so we can inform our pack of the possibility of an attack, Cade tells Kyle. Good night, Kyle. I say and he smiles. Good night, Luna. He says as he heads back to his room, back to his mate. Let's go, love, Cade says grabbing my hand leading me out of the office and down the hall to our room, once we are in our room I strip and crawl into bed and snuggle into Cade and go to sleep. Five days later. Cade's POV. Today is the day we go to the pack DR to find out the sec of our pups. I am overjoyed. And I know Ash is she talks about it almost non-stop. Let's head to the DRS. Ash says pulling me from my thought. All right. I say standing and grabbing her hand, heading out into the hall, making our way down the steps, as we get to the bottom of the steps and I stop. Ash you should eat before we go, I tell her. No I will as soon as we get back I am too excited to eat, she says, and all I can do is nod. Okay let's go babe so you can eat. I tell her grabbing her hand and leading her to the door, and outside we walk to the pack clinic. Alpha and Luna right this way, DR Ray tells us leading us into a room. DR Ray applies the gel to Ash's growing bump today. She is one month along, only two months, left joys of being wolf pregnancy, are much shorter. Ready to see the genders, DR Ray asks. Yes, Ash tells her. She starts by putting the wand to her stomach. We watch the small screen in or Ash is holding my hand gripping it every time. She sees our pups. Do you guys see that right here? Dior Ray asks. Yes, we both say. Baby is a boy and baby B is a girl. Oh, uh, she says, and we both become frantic. What's wrong? I ask as Ash begins to cry. Well, it seems that there is a third baby and baby C is another boy. Congrats on triplets, DR tells us. Some babies. Ash asks laughing. Yes, DR says. 
That's great news, I say kissing Ashlyn's cheek. Dr. Ray leaves the room, and I clean Ash's belly of pulling her shirt down and helping her up of the bed. Triplets, she says. Yes, it would seem so. I tell her. Two boys and one girl at least, she will be well protected, Ash says, and I smile proudly. Now, we just need names for our pups, I tell her. Well, I was thinking about that, she says, pausing. How about Carson and Kaylee's for the boys and Keela for our princes? She asks. Those are perfect, I tell her honestly. We head back to the house and into the kitchen ash sight down at the island, on her comfy chair, and I make us both eggs, bacon, and pancakes with a side of ice cream for ash. Thank you, baby, she says, smiling, devouring her bacon and ice cream. Then her eggs and pancakes. I sit beside her and eat with her pack members are gathering in the kitchen. So what's the genders? My mom asks. Well, two boys and one girl. Ash says not explain. How two boys and a girl? She asks and suddenly she screams triplets. Ash and I laugh. Yes, triplets. I tell my mom and everyone cheers that's gathered in the kitchen. Kate, can we go for a walk? I am restless and need to walk. Ash asks me. Yes, babe, that sounds great. I tell her as I grab her empty plate and grab mine, rinsing them and putting them in the dishwasher. Ready, hun? I ask her, and she stands grabbing my hand. We head out the back door to take a walk. She walks ahead of me, and I notice she has a waddle to her, and it's absolutely adorable to watch her waddle. Babe, pregnant looks perfect on you. I tell her and she stops and turns blushing. But my feet are killing me, my back hurts and my bladder feels like it mad explode when the pups kick it and I am sweaty all the time over horny and too emotional what's perfect about that. She asks, your belly suits you. Your waddle is adorable and you glisten and glow and you look absolutely perfect being pregnant. I tell her honestly and she smiles and we continue to walk for a while before she needs a break. You okay babe? I ask her. Yes, I just need to rest, she says. We sit for a while and enjoy the view of nature. Babe, let's head back. I am tired, Ash says, and I nod, scooping her up in my arms, carrying her back to the house. Once we arrive back at the house, I carry her to the bed and gently lay her down onto the bed. Baby, I want to take a warm bath to relax my muscles, she says. Okay, I will go run you some water, I tell her. Thank you. She says, and I head in, running her bath water, soon coming back into the bedroom. But she is sleeping. I crawl in bed, beside her, rubbing her belly gently, watching her sleep. A few hours have went by, and Ash is starting to move and slowly wake up. Hello, sleepy. I tell her, and she smiles, looking at me. Sorry, I fell asleep. I really wanted a bath. But I guess I needed sleep more," she said, and I chuckle. I have been meaning to ask, do we have any further updates on the Rouge Pack? Ash asks me. Just that they have attacked two more packs closer to us. I tell her honestly. Oh no! We need to increase training and warn the pack to stay close to home and to remain alert," she says. Yes, we will inform them at the meeting I have called to have in one HR. I tell her. We both get ready for the meeting and head out front where the pack is waiting for us. Hello, thank you all for joining us on such short notice. It has been brought to my attention that a rouge pack has attacked many packs. A couple close to us. We as a pack must remain alert and remain calm. If you're out, please have someone with you. Do not wander alone. 
Our pack's safety is very important to myself and the Luna. If anything at all seems of, please mind link the warriors and myself and the Luna so we can take proper precautions. Thank you all. The pack remains silent absorbing all the new information. You all are free to go. I tell them and they all nod in understanding, and I know my pack will be more careful and I hope we all remain safe and unharmed. Ash grabs my hand. Thank you for telling them. Ash says, of course my love, we all need to be more cautious. I tell her kissing her hand. Weeks later. Ash POV. The past few weeks have been very busy for Cade, and I since taking on the title of Alpha and Luna. We have been trying to locate the Rouge Pack that has destroyed many packs and taken women and children as their prisoners. We have made some progress, but not nearly enough. The pups are growing fast. I am now two MNTHS in one week and I am huge only one month and three weeks, left till we meet our pups. Currently Cade, and I are in his office with Kyle discussing further actions we can take for finding the Rouge's location. Ash, are you okay? Cade asks, pulling me from my thoughts. Yes, I was just thinking, I tell him with a smile, trying to stand. But I am failing this chair, is too low, and I find myself stuck in it. Here babe let me help you, Cade says lifting me from the chair. Thanks, if you would excuse me I have important business to take care of, I tell Cade. What business? Cade asks and I can't, help but laugh. I need to use the restroom. These pups are dancing on my bladder. I tell him walking out of the office and heading to the bathroom, two doors down ah, uh, I feel so much better. While I am relieving my bladder, I hear a loud bang that frightens me. I hurry and head out of the bathroom to hear more things being thrown from the office. Babe, I shout at Kate as I open the door and he is attempting to flip his desk. What is going on? I ask waddling to him. We just received this letter. He says handing it to me. Elfie. Your pack is one of the last packs on my list of packs. I need to take down and destroy. This is your warning that I will be coming. Your Luna and mate Ashlyn. I have heard she is a looker and triplets congrats. To bad you sill. Never meet the pups alive. I will let her carry them, before I kill the pups in front of you, and I will have her carry my pups. I am in need of a new Luna, and she seems to be a perfect fit. I have seen her long hair, that flows perfectly over her delicate body, she slim body build and her eyes are to die for. I will be coming for my Luna. Soon. Truly yours. Kingston. I finish reading it and my heart is heavy tears are streaming down my face. My pack is in danger. I yell crying falling to my knees. I will kill him Ash he will not take you. Cade says crying falling to his knees beside me. Cade you need to be strong. I tell him wiping his tears. The only reason he warned us is to wear you down, to weaken you. We will not allow that to happen. I may be in no condition to fight, but I will handle preparing the warriors, and you need to relax and keep a clear mind. Also, we will be putting in a new secret safe house for our women and children to ensure their safety, I tell him. You're right, Luna, Kyle says. Kate, hey, don't sweat it, we have a baby shower to attend now. I tell him heading for the door. Heading downstairs, we have planned a big dinner full of a pre-celebration for our pups. We head outside and it's decorated in a baby theme. It's adorable. I find a seat to rest my swollen ankles and aching back. Everyone is still gathering once we eat and play some baby themed games. It's now time for gifts. I sit in front of everyone next to Cade and we begin to open the first few of a ton of gifts. 
I have opened so many gifts and we are finally almost done after three hours of opening. After I finish we have a ton of clothes for the pups, diapers, wipes, blankets, bottles, binkies, a triplet stroller with one pink and two blue seats and matching car seats, changing table, cribs, hair bows for a princess. Well thank you everyone. I say, I believe we have everything we need for the arrival of our pups. I finish with a white smile. Gosh, our pack, are great they are not just our pack, but our family. You all are truly the best. You're not only our pack but our family. We love you all deeply. I say and they all cheer gosh. I am lucky to have such a great pack it's nearly dark, and we are finishing loading the baby's things into their room in the house, next to our room well my old room. It was completely remodeled and it's blue and pink with glitter in the paint. And it's beautiful. Alpha Luna, we are under attack. A warrior named Ken links us. Ash, get to the safe room now. I will send the pups and women. Cade yells, pulling me to the safe room. Cade mind links the entire pack to tell them to get women and children and all unable to fight to get to the safe room. Now soon we have hundreds of pups, women and elders in the safe room, and it's locked with the quadruple doors. I know Cade went overboard with four doors, but he is worried this safe house is small. The new one we will build later was going to be huge. But now we will all just have to wait. The pups are squared and crying. Luna, I hear a mumbled voice yell to me. Kate, I ask. Yes, it's me, Luna. What is going on? She asks with tears in her eyes. We are under attack by who I am assuming to be that gosh awful rouge pack. I tell her being as strong as I can. No, this can't happen to me. She yells. I can't lose him. Ugh, no, he needs to meet this pup. She says talking to herself. Then I realize she just said pup. What pup? What pup, Kate? I ask her. I am pregnant. I was going to tell Kyle tonight. But now, I may never be able to tell him. She said crying so hard now. Kate, it's okay. They will make it back. I have faith in the moon goddess. I tell her pulling her into a hug. We remain silent and it's been hours and no sign of the fight, ending. I am a wreck, and I am beyond exhausted, and in need of the bathroom. But can't use a bathroom where there isn't one. A finally one of our members is opening the door. But as soon as I catch his scent it's not ours. But a rouge coming in as soon as I see him I am worried for them I push to the front of everyone. You will not touch them. I shout, Oh Luna, the closer I am the prettier you are. He says, You leave them alone, and take me. I shout at him, with pleasure. He says grabbing me by my neck, Lock the doors from the inside. I shout, Lock them all. I yell to my pack. He drags me outside, and I see a war bodies, everywhere and many still fighting. Elfie. The man dragging me yells Kate hurries to kill the rouge. He is fighting turning to see the man holding me. Kate growls turning into his human form. Kate no. I scream at him and that's when I see a wolf barreling to him. Kate to your left. I scream and I fall to my knees tears pouring down my face. Everyone stop. I scream and the fight stops. Anyone not from my pack stay bowed. I demand. My pack members please collect our wounded and take them to the clinic. I tell them and my pack does as I say. Al you rouges will be killed if you're no help to us. I want to know who is the leader of the pack and where are the prisoner women and children kept. I demand. Luna the leader is not here, but his name is Kingston. Most of us warriors are being forced to fight, 
because he has our mates and pups held hostage. One man says tears in his eyes. I want all rouges to stand now. I shout as they all comply. Anyone who doesn't want to become a member of our pack, please head to me. I say but new moves. You all wish to become part of our pack. I ask. Yes, Luna. I hear many say. We will do all we can to get your pups and mates back. But I need all to train with my pack and get ready to attack. I want Kingston dead and all women and children brought here safely. Do I make myself clear? I say. I receive a lot of nods and yes, Luna, I nod back to them. I will have a few warriors, show you our empty houses, and we will build more as needed. You all will have to be sworn to our pack tomorrow morning. I tell them as my warriors, come to show them to the vacant houses on our land. I rush to Cade's side. He is laying on the ground, looking at me proudly. Don't ever give yourself up again, Cade scolds me. I had to so I could protect our pack. I tell him kissing his lips. I thought I lost you. I tell him kissing all over. Kate, as much as I am enjoying kissing you, I really need to relax my body and pee. I tell him and he laughs getting of the ground and pulling me up, and we head into the house, heading to the safe place. Kate, open up. I mind link Kate. Oh, Luna, you're safe. She links back after a few minutes the last door, opens SND, she hugs me. Kyle where is Kyle is he okay? She asks. Kyle is fine he was helping some wounded to the clinic, Kate says. I will have him come immediately, I say mind linking Kyle. Kyle please come to the house. I mind link him. Yes, Luna on my way. He replies to me. A few minutes later Kyle came to find us. Kyle you're okay. I need to tell you something. I am pregnant. Kate says. What that's great news. He says kissing Kate. All over I chuckle at them. Okay lovebirds. Let's finish getting everything ready. So we can all relax. I say we finish up helping everyone settle in and help all the wounded to the clinic to be assessed a few hours. Later we are just about finished. Kate I am exhausted and my feet feel like they will give out at any second. I tell him. Well, I think we are good to head upstairs. He says picking me up and carrying me to the bedroom. He sets me on the bed. I will run you a bath so you can relax, he says. Okay but please get in with me. I ask him and he nods with a smile. After he runs our bath, he carries me into the bathroom, placing me on my feet long enough to strip my clothes of of me, and he picks me up and puts me in the tub, stripping his clothes of climbing in behind me. I relax my body into his and lay my head back on his chest. I suddenly feel very cold. I force my tired eyes open, and I realize Cade, and I are still in the tub, we must have fell asleep, the water is ice cold. Cade wake up. I say gently nudging back into him. I oh it's cold, he says and I can't help but laugh. Yes it is we fell asleep in the tub, and I can't get out of this ice box, I tell him and he chuckle. Climbing out of the tub, he wraps a towel around his waist, and he helps me up, and out of the tub, and he wraps a towel around me pulling me to him kissing me. I'm sorry I fell asleep you sounded so peaceful, and I laid my head back, enjoying you sleeping on me, and I guess I fell asleep as well, he says. It's okay babe my sore body, feels better. I say pulling away from him heading into our room, I drop my towel at the edge of the bed and climb in under the covers, and Cade soon joins me, after he pulls boxers onto his body, he holds me tight and close to him, and we go to sleep. Good morning, 
Kate says kissing my lips. Ah, uh, morning, I say kissing him. Well, we have a lot of work to be done, and if you keep kissing me, and no work will get done, he says to me, and we both climb out of bed, and get showered and dressed heading downstairs to guide everyone on what needs to be done houses, need to be built, and we need to welcome new members into our pack and our family. The next couple weeks is full of building houses and planning to take down the Rouge Pack and rescue all women and pups and me talking Cade into letting me go, but he absolutely refuses to let me go, and we have been arguing over it. I know I would be a huge help. Cade, I am going in that final. I shout at him. No, you're not. I will not allow what you have under a month until the pups are here you need to rest, he says in a firm tone that I have never heard. Kate, I am going. I say and he walks over to me grabbing my arm roughly, dragging me towards our room, once to out room. He opens the door pushing me in and coming in behind me slamming the door and coking, it grabbing my arm harder dragging me to the bed. Cade, you're hurting me. I shout at him tears welling in my eyes, but he says nothing and pushes me to the bed, and I push myself away from him. He climbs towards me grabbing my leg, pulling me to him. Lil mate, I will not have you talking to me like that, he says in a voice that is stern. Cade, stop. I say crying holding my belly. No. He shouts at me pulling me to him and pushing me to my side. I am crying hard. I am done letting you talk back to me. I will now punish you. He says as he pulls down my pants and my panties. Kate stop it please, I beg. I feel him move and as I turn to look I feel his hand smack my bear as hard. But not too hard. And it feels so good and I try not to moan he smacks my eyes again getting harder, and I am becoming very wet between my thighs about ten smacks later, and I am in need of him inside me, and he must know he stands up taking of his clothes. Get into a comfy position now. He tells me. The only position that is comfortable for me is doggy or me riding him but I decide to get into the doggy style position. Spread your legs wider, he says and I try but with my huge belly it's hard he pulls my legs wider apart ad. He is kneeled behind me and he rams a finger inside my pussy, smacking my as hard and I cry out in plear. Please fuck me. I beg. SH you're not in control I am, he says smacking my as again. Cade, I don't care who is in control. I need you inside me now, and if you can't give me it I will just use a toy to get empty self of, I tell him, and he growls smacking my as again with force. You will not. He shouts as he slams his dick into me hard, and I scream out in pain and pleasure. He keeps pounding my pussy with force. He is holding my hips with his strong hands. I won't lie I like it, but it does hurt. Cade slow down please, I beg. He doesn't reply and he slows down to a stop pulling out of me. Ugh I shouldn't have said anything I am soaking wet and he stopped. Ash I am so sorry. He says. It's fine please put your dick back in me. No, he says. Uh, I think your water broke, he says. Okay, well it will be hours before the puts are here, and I am not about to give birth horny as hell. Either you please me, or I will get a toy. I tell him firmly. I don't want to hurt you anymore. I already made your water break three weeks early, he says worried. Cade the DR said it was a possibility, because I am so small and there is three of them packed into a small place. I tell him calmly, now please me, I tell him, and I feel him gently,
put his cock into me, and he gently thrusts in and out of me reaching around and playing with my clit. Does it hurt? He asks me. No, it feels so good. I moan. Kate, please. I moan out. He picks up pace fucking me hard and fast. Gosh, I love it. Harder, I beg as I slam my ass into him, and he complies, fucking me hard, and fast it hurts, but feels so good I am moaning load as tears rush down my face. He keeps going fast until I feel my end near. Kate I'm going to was all I managed to moan out as we both orgasmed. He kept fucking me as I rode back on his dick. While my body convulsed, after we both were satisfied, he pulled out of me slowly. Babe, I am sorry I lost control, he says with tears in his eyes. It's okay, but don't ever drag me with that much force again. I tell him as I look at my bizzed arm. I bruised your arm, and as I am so sorry, he says. My ass is fine, I liked it. But my arm you never are to do that again, I say. I promise you like me smacking your ass, he asks. I loved it, made my pussy soaking wet, and made it throb, I tell him honestly. I'm a my little freak, he says. I need a shower before these pups come. I tell him, and he helps me of the bed, and into the shower, he washes my hair, and my body, and just as he was about to wash his self, I have a very strong contraction that rips through my body, and I cry out in pain. Babe, what's wrong? Kate asks. Contraction, I say, and he hurries and washes us both of shutting of the water and stepping out grabbing us towels. He throws one around him, and one around me, he leads us to the bedroom and pulls a knee-length nightgown on me, and he puts on jeans and a shirt. I am laying in the bed, man, this hurts. Cade, get the DR, I say. She is on her way, he says. Cade, I need to push now. I yell as I push hard and another contraction rips through me, and I push again harder. Ash, I think I see a pup's head, he says, panicking. Cade, pull the pup out, I say calmly. I can't, he says. Yes, you can. I push again, Cade, pull, I say, and he gently pulls the pup out of me. It's a boy, he says, crying. We shall name you Carson, my son. He finishes and I am in so much pain. But he is absolutely perfect, I smile, looking at my son. And I am pulled away when Dr. Ray charges into the room. Well, I see you have it under control, Dr. Jokes. Ash, you need to push, she tells me, and I push again and again, screaming in pain. I know baby too is here, cause I felt the baby come out. It's a boy. Dr. shouts with joy. His name shall be Kaylee's. Cade says, crying, holding Carson and taking Kaylee's from Dr. Ray. I keep pushing but I see our little princess is stubborn. It hurts, I shout pushing hard. Almost you're doing great one more push, Dr. tells me, and I push hard, and I hear gasps. She is blue. Kate yells. From lack of oxygen the cord was around her neck. She is all right her color will come back. She says, and I hear her cry, and that's when I lose it. My princes is all right. My three babies are all okay. You, my little princes, will be named Keila. Kate says, holding her and Kaylee's. The DR took Carson to weigh and check him over. Carson weighs five lbs, eleven ounce. DR Ray says, while taking Kaylee's from Kate and giving him Carson. Kaylee's weighs 5 lbs 11 ounce also, she says taking Keela. Keela weighs 5 lbs 5 ounce. They are all small, but very healthy pups. I hold all my babies and I know it's time I take a nap. I am wore out after delivering three babies.
Saints POV. My baby and here, and they are absolutely perfect. Ash did such an awesome job. She is one strong woman. She is sleeping and she needed it. I have been taking care of our pups. Carson is quiet unless he needs changed or fed then. He is very vocal until he gets what he wants. He looks just like me minus. He has his mother's beautiful eyes. Kaylee's will cry until he is being held. And he also is very vocal. When he needs to be, he has his mother's hair and her nose, but resembles both us equally and my lil' Keela. She is quiet and calm. She looks just like her mommy, beautiful and delicate, but she has my eyes. They are perfect came early, but I couldn't have asked for a better mate or pups. I am a very proud dad and mate. Cade, Ash pulls me from my thoughts. Yes, baby, I asked looking at her. How's the pups? She asks. They are great. Absolutely perfect. Just like you. I tell her. I'm so glad to hear how they ate. She asks. Yes, but we can try breastfeeding any time you're ready. It's right around to feed them. I tell her. Okay, let's get the babies and try it. She tells me. Okay, stay in bed. I will bring them to you. I tell her. I had to go get the pups and take them to her. I grab Keela and Kaylee's because they are awake and Kaylee's is crying now. But Carson is sleeping still so I will come back for him. I head into the room. And Ash is waiting with her breasts out. And she looks very sexy. If you didn't know, she just delivered three pups a few hours ago. You would never know. Oh, my baby's three of four, I should say, Ash says. And I smile handing her Keela. And she gets her onto her breast. And I try to hand her Kaylee's. But I realize she can't get him to latch. So I gently grab her swollen breast and align him. And once he starts eating, she cradles them both. I kiss her head. I will be right back with Carson. I tell her and head for the door and head into the babe's room, picking up Carson and taking him into our room. Once I make it to our room, I sit in our bed next to Ash holding Carson in my arms. Babe, can you lay Carson on my lap and get to spurs and wipes and all of them sleepers? Ash asks me, and I gently lay Carson down on her lap and head to get the stuff. But as I go to head out the door, Ash's voice stops me. And a burp rag, please, she says. Yes, my love, I tell her walking out our room and heading to the babe's room. I grab all the stuff she asked me to grab, and I head back, but the sight I see is beautiful. Ash is gently singing to our pups, and she looks so at peace, and she is a natural mom. I smile wide knowing that these pups will be loved so deeply ABD cherished by both her and I. You're a natural, I tell her, and she smiles her face, shows nothing but love and admiration. Let me feed Carson and finish feeding Kaylee's. Then we will get them changed, she softly says. She is finishing up feeding the boys, and I am working on changing Keela. But it's going to take time to get used to changing and dressing a very tiny baby. I hear Ash chuckle at me. Babe, let me help you. She says through her chuckles gently moving the boys to get up to help me. Easy babe, you did just have three pups. I tell her. I'm okay, I actually feel great. She says. Well, you look great too, I tell her honestly. She helps me and she makes it look so easy. She gently changes her diaper, showing me how to clean her properly. I feel like an idiot not knowing girls get wiped certain ways. She dresses her in her pink sleeper that has a tutu type thing attached to it. And she looks absolutely adorable. We change the boys. She changes Carson. And I change Kaylis.
and I must say changing the boys' diapers is easier this time. We get fresh dispers on them, and I picked out matching sleepers for them, and they look so handsome in their camo sleepers that Ash picked out for them. Babe, I want to show you how to burp the babes, Ash says, and I nod watching her closely. She first burps Keela, and I take Carson, and then I also burp Kaylee's. This is pretty easy. Let's tuck them into bed, she says, holding Keela and Kaylee's, and I pick up Carson, and we head to the bedroom and gently place them into bed. Kissing them good night, Ash, and I gently close the door and head to our room. I'm getting a shower, then I will head to bed, she says, and I nod, heading to wait for her on the bed. She goes into the bathroom and she yells, Cade, I rush in. What's wrong? I ask, freaking out. I'm not bleeding, she says. You're a wolf, babe, you heal. So much faster, and no, you won't be bleeding by now. I tell her. Oh, she says. Will you shower with me and wash my back? She says. Absolutely. But I will wash your entire body. I tell her. We get undressed and get in the shower, and I wash her body as if she is a delicate flower until I reach in between her legs and she pushes her as against my dick. And I can't help, but become even harder. I wash her, and rinse her, but my hand finds it way back to her pussy, and I rub her clit as she grinds her as on my cock. Gosh, she is a bad girl. Let's go to the bed, she says in a moan. I say, nothing. Shutting of the water and stepping out, drying her of and myself, and carrying her to the bed. I lay her down gently, and I start to kiss her lips hungrily, and she starts stroking my cock with her hand. Am baby, I moan to her, and she starts to rub her own clit with her free hand, and I must say the sight is sexy, so I sit back and watch her stroke my cock and play with her clit, and I moan, she must know it's driving me wild cuz. She slowly slides two fingers into her pussy, and she is moaning, and before long she is riding her fingers, and moaning load I can't take it any more I push my cock, in while her fingers are still in her pussy, and she screams. Ah, baby, that's too much, she says, pulling her fingers out, and I start gently, fucking her tight pussy. If it hurts, tell me. I tell her picking up the speed I am now fucking her with force, and she is screaming and moaning load. I'm going to come. She yells and I pull out heading to the closet, grabbing our strap on for double penetration, and I put it on, and she is excited it's been a while. Since we did this she flips into the doggy style position, and I climb on the bed behind her and slide the dildo in her as and my cock into her pussy. But I am not gentle, she cries out for a second before moaning in pleasure. Oh, fuck. She moans my girl is a bad bitch. She likes when I am rough. You like that? I moan out to her. Yes, and don't stop ever. She moans. Ah, oh, babe, right there, she moans, ramming herself back into me, forcing my dick and the dildo into her. All the way, I can feel her pussy walls tighten, and she is screaming and moaning, and I feel her release run down my cock, and dripping out her pussy with each thrust her body is shaking, but I won't let her fall. I hold her firmly in place, and I smack her as hard, and she moans riding back hard. Spank me, baby, she moans. I smack her as again harder, and she moans, fuck, she says, and I do it again, until her right, as is blood red and wilted up. Don't stop, spank my ass, she says, and I smack her left ass cheek.
and I keep doing it until her cheek is as red and welted as the other one. Moi, she begs. You're welted, I don't want to hurt you. I tell her. Give me more now, I like the pain. She says I fuck her harder and smack her as cheeks, taking turns. I can feel her juices leaking all over the bed. She is a freak and likes it rough. Spank me harder. She demands through her moans and I crack her as with force and she scream moans. Slamming back into me harder I gently pull out of her. Don't stop. She yells. I am getting a bigger dildo, I tell her, and I grab a bigger dildo, and a doubled-ended big and thick dildo, and she looks at me and smirks in a very sexy way. Hold still babe, I tell her pushing one end of the double-ended dildo in her pussy, and the other end into her, as moving it fast, and she is enjoying it I use my free hand to rub her clit and I slide it back and stick one finger into her pussy while the dildo is still in her, and I get it soaking wet with her juices, and I pull it out putting it into her mouth, and she sucks my finger moaning, I slowly pull the dildo out and use a bigger dildo, and my cock to fill both her holes to the max, and I fuck her hard in but h her tight holes and rub her clit, Gently, she is ramming into me to make me go faster and harder, so I fuck her with all force, and she is moaning so loud, and I smack her as making her and myself reach our end. We both have a very intense orgasm, I shot by load into her with force, and she is pouring her juices out of her pussy, and her body is shaking I flip her over and I eat her pussy, sucking up all her sweet juices. Baby, stop, it's too sensitive, she says. No, I tell her licking and fucking her with my tongue. She starts riding my face, I stop. Thought you wanted me to stop. I tell her, shut up and eat my pussy, she says, and I comply eating her pussy, biting her clit and ramming three fingers into her pussy, and she is moaning and riding into me, I continue, until she has another orgasm, and I lick all her juices up, and crawl up beside her. That was amazing. I came like twenty times or more. She says, Yes, it was amazing, my little freak. I tell her kissing her lips. And that's when the babes start crying, we hear it through the baby monitor. You rest, I will get the babies, I tell her. I need to feed them, burp them and change their butts, she says. I can feed them and change and burp them, I tell her. How can you feed them? She asks. With your breasts, I tell her walking out and grabbing Carson and Kaylee's taking them into our room. And then I head back for Keela and head into our room, and Ash is feeding the boys, and after they are done she burps them and feeds Keela while I change the boys' bottoms, and after she burps Keela, I change her to taking them back to bed and heading back into our and Ash is sleeping, so I crawl in bed next to her and go to bed myself. Ash's POV. My eyes feel so heavy, and I can hear the babes crying. I open my eyes, and get up heading into the babes' room, and I sit in the rocking chair feeding Kaylee's, and Keela, and I burp, and then feed Carson, and burp him. I change Keela into a auntie that says, I get my looks from mom, but dad carries a gun. It's black with pink writing and I put a pair of pants on her. Then I change Carson, and dress him into a tux on sea, and pants, and put Kaylee's in the same outfit. Gosh, my bispies are dolls and perfect. I look over at the door, because I heard it open as and e. I see Cade standing, they're smiling as me. Can we take the babes to town today? I ask him. 
We will see if we can arrange something for today, he says and I know it's a lot to ask with the amount of responsibility we have. I pick up the boys and Cade gets Keela and we head downstairs for breakfast and so the pack can meet our pups upon arriving into the kitchen Kate and Ken's and a few other girls come running over and ask to hold the babes and soon enough they have all three of our babies and we eat and watch over our pups once we finish eating we just sit and watch and Keela starts crying and Kate looks scared and unsure what to do and I stand up walking over to Kate and Keela. Kate don't be scared. She just wants fed again. I tell her taking Keela from her I place a thin blanket over us and I get her to latch and she eats and fills her belly up again and then once she is done I carry her upstairs to change her and lay her down for a nap and soon Cade comes into the pup's room with a very mad Kaylee's and Carson and I sit in the chair and feed both boys and change them and out them down for a nap being a mother of three neighborns is a lot of work but I am enjoying every second of it I doze of in the chair, and when I wake up there is a strange man in the pup's room. I go to mind Link Cade, but everything goes black, and suddenly I am waking up and Cade is yelling. Cade a strange man was in here, and when I went to get up everything went black. I say getting up. I know they they took the babes, he says crying. Not my babies, I scream. Who took them? I shout. We think it was Kingston's pack, he says. Then we leave now. I said, let's get our babies back. I finish crying hard. I will but you need to stay here, he says. Stay here. I yell. While my baby's out God knows, we're probably crying cause they're hungry. I think not I am going in that final. I shout at him. I don't want you to get hurt he says. I will gladly die to bring my babies home safe, I tell him. You can go but you need to stay safe the babes, and I need you safe, he says and I nod. Ready the men we love in one HR. I tell him and he nods. We all meet outside and get ready to leave we all shift and run into the woods. I think to myself, we will bring our babies home, they will be safe, and noon will ever take them from us again. We run for a couple hours before we see a compound. We are here. Care says through the mind link. Everyone get ready. I want my babies back safe and well. I says through the link to everyone. And our Luna safe and well, Cade adds and we all run getting ready to attack. But it's empty no one's, here. All we find is a letter addressed to Cade and I. We open it. Alf's Luna. Only you two can save your pups. Now, I want you alone and you pups will be safe. I will send a rouge to lead you to the place of your pups. Kingston. No. This can't happen. Cade needs to get the pups, and I will sacrifice myself to save them. Cade you must follow his orders, but I will sacrifice myself, and you get the pups and run. I say and he is pissed. No. He yells, and that's final. He says we wait for the rouge pacing back, and forth finally he comes and Cade, and I follow him telling the warriors to stay. Cade POV. We walk in our human form, following a rouge to get our babies back ash, and I both are a wreck worried about our pups. After walking what felt like a lifetime we finally arrive at a small house, and it looks abandoned. Right this way. The rouge says while laughing and we cautiously follow we walk into open area, with a wagon, and we can hear our pups crying and ash, takes of running towards their cries. Ash stop. I shout at her, but she doesn't stop, 
so I chase after her I don't want her to be by herself. But as I approach her I see a man in a mask standing holding ash by the neck away from where the pups lay in the grass crying. Let me feed my babies, Ash cries. Put her down. I shout. No, I will not. She will be mine. He says while laughing. Who are you? Ash asks and he removes his mask and I gasp. Drew. I shout Drew was a member of our pack years ago, but he got banned from returning because he tried to rape a girl from our pack and she chose to have him banned. I wanted to kill him. Now I wish I did. Yes, it is me. But I go by Kingston now, he says laughing and putting his lips to Ash's neck, and she is struggling against him. I growl. The choice is yours, he says. You can leave with your pups or your mate. But you can't take all, he sees us. He chooses our pups. Ash shouts. S.H. Lil one the choice is his, not yours, he tells Ash another person, comes wearing a mask ass will, and heading towards my pups. Don't touch my pups, I shout heading towards them with a growl. Remove your mask, Drew a.k.a. Kingston says. It's a woman with her back to me I can't smell her scent, and when she turns around I about faint. Rita. I shout it's Rita a lady who raised me while my parents were away. She had noon, so she stayed in the pack house with us and my parents treated her as family. Yes, it's me. You see, Drew was my son, but his father Garrett and his true mate Sylvia took my son from me. She says looking at Drew, he is her son. A it all makes sense now. How did I miss this well Drew is only as older than me, so I guess I might not remember it. When Drew was a few months old Garrett, and I joined the pack, and that's where he found his true mate Sylvia, and he left me for her, and they refused to let me have my son. Your parents offered me a place with them, and after you were born, I raised you like I wanted to raise my own son. And when you banished him, I didn't get a chance to tell him I was his real more. So I tracked him and told him, and we kept in contact all these years. She tells me I won't lie, I am pissed. I'm sorry that happened, but please don't hurt my pups. Or my mate. I shout. Choose the pups or your mate. Rita says. I choose my pups. I say and pain is rushing through my body. I want my mate, I won't leave her. I hear howls in the distance, and I turn to look and I see my warriors rushing towards us killing all rouges on their way. I also choose my mate. I shout I rush over grabbing my babies in my arms. The best, I can making sure they are held properly I rush to a few wars as they shift back to humans. Keep my pups safe, I have to get Ash. I tell them as they take the pups from my arms, and I begin rushing back to Ash and Drew, but the sight I see is horrific he is beating Ash and has her on the ground. Get of her now, and fight me Drew. I shout with a growl coming out, but I am suddenly hit, and when I look it's Rita in her human form, she attacked me, stabbed me, with a knife in my arm. I grab her, and hold her. Take her prisoner, I say, and a couple warriors. Come and grab her, detaining her, I turn my focus back to Ash, and Drew. Fight me. Get your dirty hands of my mate. I shout, grabbing him of Ash. Warriors protect Ash and my pups with your life. I shout and they come and grab Ash and take her back over by the pups. My babies. She yells scooping Keel out of the warrior's arms and leaning over kissing Carson and Kaylee's on the forehead. You must think you're so perfect. Drew says to me. Nope. I just choose to treat my mate right and love her unconditionally. I tell him as I grab him slamming him to the ground. 
He lands a punch into my rubs, and I am sure at least one rib broke. I punch him in the face, and blood oozes from his face due to a broken nose, and I land a punch to his ribs. Breaking ribs on him the fight lasts a while, until finally he is dread I killed him. I killed him. I say and I hear Ritz screaming. No my baby you bastard. She screams Ash must have had enough of it as she walks over and smacks her across the face. You let your son become a monster. You guys stole my babies. What would you expect him to kidnap my pups and live through with? I don't think so he is dead because of you. You helped him and took my babies. You're no different than him. You MSKE me sick. Ash says I head over to her and my pups. I am so glad my beautiful babies are safe and unharmed, and my beautiful mate is safe and well. Let's get the pups home. I say grabbing Kaylee's and Carson from the warrior's arms, and we all head towards home the walk, is long, but the babies seem to enjoy it they are looking up, and all over I look over at Ash, and see she is feed if Keela with a shirt covering her. Mommy lil girl got her belly full, she coos to Keela, while placing her to burp her. Honey, can I have one of the boys, please? Ash asks, and I hand her Kaylee's and take Keela from her. Is Mommy's little prince hungry? She coos to Kaylee's. I love you. I tell her, gosh, she is the best mom in the world. I love you, babe. She says once Kaylee's is done feeding, I give her Carson about hours, Later we are finally back home, and we head for the house, and into the house SND, to the pup's room. I want the babes to sleep with us for a bit, Ash says. Okay, let's lay them in our bed, and grab their little bassinets, and get them in our room. I tell her heading to our room, and laying the pups on our bed. I grab two bassinets, and Ash gets the last one putting diapers and wipe sand clean clothes and burp rags into it, and pushing it into our room, we put Keela on Ash's side of the bed, and the boys on my side of the bed. They need a bath, Ash says, and I go grab their little tubs, and we bathe the pups, and put a clean diaper, and clean clothes on them then we kiss them good night and lay them into their bassinets. Let's get a shower and relax, I tell her, and she nods we head into the shower, and I strip of her clothes, and mine, and we bore, get into the shower, and we make it fast and dry of and then into the closet, for clothes ash slides, into a pair of tiny panties her as cheeks hang out, and she throws on a tank top, and her tits spout, explode out the top gosh. She looks sexy, and I throw on a pair of boxers, and we head to the bed, I already mind, linked all the pack, and told them tomorrow everyone would know more but for the end. Aight, it was time for us to relax and a warrior told me that Rita is in the dungeon and chained until morning. I am so glad to be home with you and the babes, Ash says. So am I, I tell her kissing her gently, trying to keep my wolf under control. But she looks so sexy and her tits are hanging out, I almost can see her nipples, and I can smell that she is aroused. She grabs my hand and rubs it down her stomach and up and down her panties, and they are soaked she is wet as hell and she slides her panties over with our hands and I rub her pussy lips slowly and then I start to flick her clit and she moans I pull her shirt down playing with her swollen breasts they are leaking milk like e crazy they are over full from the pups missing meals they hurt being so full she says and I take her one nipple into my mouth sucking and helping them become a bit emptier. Is that better? I ask her. Yes, now do it to the other please, she says and I take it roughly into my mouth.
and she whimpers I suck on it and drain it down. Then I move up to her lips, kissing her with force and passionately, while I play with her drenched pussy. With one hand, she is squirming under me and moaning loudly. Baby, she moans. Use your words, honey, I tell her. Please fuck me. She moans and I rip my boxers of and I rip her panties of SND. I slam my cock into her. Baby play with your clit while I fuck you, I tell her. And she quickly does as I say I love when she plays with her clit, while I pound her tight little pussy. She moans loud and starts rolling her hips as I pound her pussy. Oh daddy don't stop. She shouts oh damn my girl has a kink and calls me daddy. It instantly makes me harder and I pound her even harder with so much force I didn't even know I had. Oh yes fuck me daddy, she says and I give it to her hardcore, tears running out the corner of her eyes. Daddy will fuck you hard cause daddy knows how his baby likes it, I tell her. And she moans, and I feel her walls tighten, and she is screaming and moaning, and I feel her sore in my cock as her comb squirts out of her. I keep pointing her. Daddy, please stop, it's too sensitive, she says. But I can't stop not when she calls me daddy. No baby daddy is going to fuck you until you come undone, I tell her. No, no, no daddy, she moans loudly. Yes, baby, I tell her. Fuck, don't stop, daddy, she shouts, and I make her come again, and I keep pounding into her trembling body until she goes limp. Oh, fuck, I made her pile out well ash, and I had a talk that if she ever passes out fit, I would continue to fuck her unconscious self until I climaxed, so I kept fucking her SND, rubbing her clit with one hand and her breast with the other making milk spray out and hit me in my face. I pound her hard until I shoot my huge load into her pussy and I pull out of her and I head to the bathroom running as bath. I head back to the bed taking her limp body and I step into the tub and lay her in and I wash her body. I slide two fingers into her pussy, using it as a shovel to help shovel out the extra cum out of her pussy, and once I am finished I grab her in my arms and grab a towel drying us the best I can before heading to lay her on the bed. I then head into the closet as and slide a pair of boxers on grabbing s pair of her panties. I slide them on her and cover her up. And Keela and Carson start crying well is. In Ash is unconscious I grab Carson and Keela and I staddle her helping the babes latch and feed them Keela is done first so I burp her and then Carson, and put them back to bed SND feed Kaylee's as well then I lay beside her, and go to bed a few hours, later, I wake up to crying babies, and I see Ash trying to get up, babe lay down I will get them for you, I tell her as she sets back down, did you finish after I went unconscious, she asked, Yes, I did babe like promised, then I bathed you and fed the pups, I tell her. Good, how was it? She asked. Amazing. I tell her handing her the boys, she feeds them, and I burp and change them, and then grab Keela to feed, and I burp and change her, and we all go back to bed. Hades POV. It's been two weeks since I killed Drew aka Kingston, and Rita has been taken to the dungeons and the pups, Ash, and the pack are recovering well. My mate is stronger and more determined than any other Luna I have met. Yes, she is a queen descendant, but she just has a natural love for anyone she meets. Cade, Kyle says pulling me from my thoughts, we are in my office.
discussing the future of the pack and working on new protection plans. Yeah, I ask. Are you okay? I have been talking but you were somewhere else. Kyle says. Yes, I am fine. Sorry, I was just thinking. I say. Well, you know it's that time of year again, when we go to the yearly warrior fights to see the strongest pack last year. We were third toughest pack, and they want us to bring more warriors and have more fights. Kyle says, when is it taking place? And where this year? I ask. In 14 days from today, and it's going to be at the palace this year. He says. It's hardly ever at the palace, why this year? I ask. Because of all going on and packs being destroyed, the king wants it at his palace. He says. Should I better inform Ash, or she will have my ass? I say. I mind link Ash. Hey babe, can you come to my office? I say through the link. Yes, let me get clothes on. She replies. Wait, you're naked. I ask with a smile on my face. Yes, Kate, I am naked. I had to get a shower cause Carson puked all over me. She says. Is he okay? I'm sorry, babe. When you're done, come down. I say. About ten minutes later, Ash comes into my office and man does she look sexy in her short shorts and crop top she knows I hate her showing so much skin but she doesn't care and I am learning to let men look BC they will never catch her eye like I do man I am one lucky alpha to have such a sexy lil mate um hum, well don't you look sexy I say to her okay she says, what did you need? She finishes, well, we have two weeks to prepare to head to the palace for our yearly fighters battle. I tell her, what does this mean? She asks, every year we go for fights to see who the strongest packs are. Last year we placed third, I say. Kay, do you realize just over half a year ago, I thought I was human. I have no idea what you're talking about. She says getting annoyed. Ash is a battle, and we will take of our best fighters and the pups, you, and I will all go also Kyle and Kate will go. I say, who will protect the pack? And you expect me to take my babies to a strange place. She says getting pissed. Yes, Ash the pups will be fine. I say. Do you realize the amount of things we will have to take for the babies? She says. Also this year, there is a woman fight, but we have no woman. Kyle says. Well then it's settled I will fight the women's fight. She says. Ashlyn absolutely not. I say slamming my fists down. Kid you will not tell me what I can and can't do. I am fighting and that's final. She says clearly pissed off. No you won't. If you win you will have to fight the men in the finals and it's not happening Ash. I will not have you hurt. I say trying to calm down. Kate I am not a fucking baby. I am fighting and you can't tell me no. She says. I'm alpha to you little mate. I shout SD her. Kate I will not tolerate your behavior. I am fighting and that's final. And until you learn your place, you can sleep in the baby's room. I don't want to see you until you have learned your place. I am your equal. Not someone who needs to bow down to you. She shouts as she slams the door on her way out. I chase after her. Baby, please. I say. Don't baby me, Kate. Get your shit together. I refuse to be talked to like that and walked on. She says I slowly walk back to my office giving her space. Cade she is right man. Ash is our best hope at a women fighter. She is strong and fast. Kyle says. I know she is but she is my mate and I can't have her hurt. I say being honest. Well you will come around. Kyle says. Fine. 
But if she fights I train her. I say. Ash you can fight but I will train you. I say through the link. Be in or office in two. She says through the link. About two minutes later she comes into my office. Kade you can't train me. You wouldn't hurt me. And I won't be ready then. Ash say. Fine Kyle will train you. I say. Okay, but you're still not of the hook Kate. I still don't want your paws on me. She says with hurt in her eyes. Get ready we train now. I growl. Then help me get the pups ready they will need fed in spout an HR. Or so, she says and I nod we head to the bedroom and get the pups ready and head downstairs to put them in their stroller and we head to the fighting grounds. Ash changed and I am sure she is trying to pies me of more she is now wearing short spandex shorts that are tight and a matching sports bra and her boobs are hanging out. I do my best not to let her know I am pissed. Kyle train her right and don't take it east on her. I say to him they head into the fighting area and I sit next to the pups. She is doing good and learning fast, and I am impressed many men and women have come to watch and the men can't keep their eyes off of my mate my blood is boiling I am about to lose my shit until Keela starts to cry and Ash comes rushing over. Kate please help me cover properly so I can feed her. She says and she is holding her by her clothed breast and has a blanket over her. So I gently pull her breast out of her bra and place it to Keela's mouth. Thanks, she says and I chuckle knowing I had an effect on her. Anything for you are the pups. I say with a warm smile. Kate, I love you but you best never treat me as if I am a nobody again. She says, Ash you will never be a nobody. You are my everything I am just scared you will get hurt by one of the ruthless warriors in the fight. I say. And I will be fine. She says and I know she is right. But still scares me. After she feeds Keela the boys. Decide they need fed to so she feeds them as well. And after they are done I realize it's all read almost p.m. Well let's head in for dinner. We will pick this up tomorrow. I say and we all head inside. Once inside I see so much food, chicken ribs, pasta salad, mac salad, potato salad. Am I am serving, Ash says grabbing s bunch of food on her plate. We all sit to eat and all have a good conversation about preparing for the fight Ash. And I are done just socializing until I see Ash yawning. Well I am going to get Ash and the pups to bed. I will see you all in the morning, I say, as we tell everyone good night and head up the stairs with the pups to get them bathed, changed, fed, and of to bed. After we are finished, I crawl into bed and wait for Ash to come out of the bathroom. Okay, she says, and I look up and see her standing in a very sexy baby doll lingerie, and man, she looks sexy. M.M. get that fine is over here. I say to her. Come make me. She says and I get of the bed and stalk over to her kissing her lips. And I drop to my knees force her legs apart. And lick her pussy through her panties until she is losing her balance. And almost falling I scoop her up and head to the bed. I lay her down and take of her panties and sexy lil outfit. She is laying on the bed naked and I pull her legs apart and lick her pussy lips, slowly sliding s finger in her. Kate give me more. She begs. In time. I tell her. Please. She begs. Fine. I say as I strip down and then place myself at her entrance and slowly fuck her. Cade faster. Plea harder. She begs out in a moan and I just fuck her hard and fast eth out replying.
and I don't stop even through her orgasms. I keep ramming her until her body OS, shaking violently. Please stop, she begs. If you want me to stop, use your words to make me. I know stop doesn't mean stop with you. I says pounding her hard and her body shakes harder she loves when I pound her and have no mercy on her throbbing pussy. Oh, Yima. She screams and I keep going until we both comb together. I collapsed on top of her and we both calm our breathing and then I roll beside her and I hear Ash's breathing become steady and I, I look over and she is sound asleep. I cuddle up to her and try to sleep but next to my naked sexy as made it's hard to sleep she is so fine kate's pov over the past week ash has learned so much she has become so strong and very fast she can take down all of our strongest fighters and i am impressed is that all you got ash shouts and i turn my attention back to her she just took down Kyle, and she has one hell of a smirk on her face. Babe, let's give everyone a break and get lunch. I tell her and she smiles and we head inside she feeds the pups, and then we sit down for lunch. We will be leaving in a few days from now to arrive a few days early. I tell her. All right, I will finish packing our stuff. She says I won't even lie, I am nervous. Can we go for a run after lunch, while the pups are sleeping? She asks. Yes, we will. I say and we both quickly eat. My mom is watching the pups and we race outside and strip and change into our wolf form. Catch me if you can. Ash says through the link. I can. I say and chase after her as she is already running we run for a while until Ash suddenly comes to fast stop and I am looking around smelling but I smell nothing and see nothing. It's beautiful, Ash says and I walk up beside her and I see a beautiful waterfall with new wildflowers growing. Yes it is. It seems like the falls just keep getting prettier. I say, and she smiles I turn to my human form and sit down on the ground, and Ash sits next to me laying her head on my chest. Gosh, I am so relaxed and her in my arms, make me whole she is home for me. She is where I always want to be, she is my happy ending and my forever and always. I look down and Ash is sleeping on my chest, instead P.F. waking her up. I decided to scoop her into my arms and gently carry her to the house to lay her down into our bed for a nap. But before I can walk away, she catches me of guard. Babe, I love you. He see us. I love you, Ash. I say, can we talk? She asks. About? I ask. Well, about us. She says and I feel my heart sink and worry flash through my body. A oh, well, Cade, she says, I have been thinking and we have been engaged and all, but I think it's time we take. She pauses and I think I might faint. Our relationship to the next level and get married already. She says, yes, I say feeling relieved, but it will be a little ways down the road. We have a lot of planning ahead of us. She says and I not kissing her for it. Kate I want you and only you for the rest of my days. She says and my heart starts to race gosh the effect she has on me. So do I babe. You're my once in a lifetime girl. I say and we soon hear the pups crying and Ash races out of our room to go find the pups. Once she finds them, she scoops up Keela and Kaylee's, and I grab Carson, and we take them to feed them, and change them, and bathe them, after the babes are all settled down I realize, it's already p.m. Ash let's go have dinner. I tell her, and we carry the babes down, and we sit for dinner. But before we can even get settled everyone is stealing the pups and we chuckle and begin to eat dinner.
I throw steak on my plate, fried potatoes, scalloped potatoes, and sautéed onions and peppers. Ash loads her plate up as well, and we eat slowly, enjoying our food. Two days later, Ash's POV. It's finally the day we leave to head to the yearly fight. I am excited and nervous to be taking my babies so far from home. I packed all our bags and Cade and some other luggage down the steps and into the car. I place the pups into their car seats and Cade, Ken's, and I carry them out to the car and put them into the car and make sure they are secure and safe. You ready? Cade asks. Yes, I say as I climb into the car, and Cade shuts my door, and he climbs into the driver's seat, and we start the car and start to pull away from the packed territory. I turn the radio on and turn it to country, and I am enjoying myself. It's a long drive, and I am not so good in cars for long periods. It has been five hours since we left, and we are still not there. How much longer? I ask, getting impatient. About forty-five minutes, he says to me. Before I can even respond, Carson starts crying. Kate, please pull over. They need fed. I say as he pulls over onto the side of the road, and I hop out of the car to grab Carson, and Kate grabs Kaylee's, and I feed them, and then feed Keila. And Kate changes their diapers before placing them back into their car seats, and we head back on our way. A while later, I hear Kate clear his voice. Here, he says, and I look up from my phone. It's beautiful. It's huge, and I am in awe. Finally, was all I could say. Once we pull out front, Kate parks the car, and we get out, grabbing the stroller for the triplets and place them in it before we head into the house. Welcome, Alpha Cade and Luna Yashlin. A man says he is tall with graying black hair. You can tell he is older. Thank you for having us. I say, what do we have here? A younger man says he is absolutely sexy. His hair is dark brown with caramel-colored eyes, and he has a very strong muscular body. I am Ash. I say, reaching out my hand to him. But as soon as our hands touch, I feel sparks, and I am instantly confused. I have a mate YCNA. I feel sparks. Ash, are you okay, babe? Kate asks. Yeah, I am. I'm fine. I say. Sorry, my name is Chris. My father is the king, and I will take his place once my queen turns up. He says. Well, um, it's nice to meet you. I say, and he pulls me into a hug. I hear Kate growling, but I can't help but embrace myself into Chris's arms. You're my mate, he whispers in my ear. Yes, I am, but I have two mates. How is that possible? I whisper back at Chris. I am unsure, he says as Kate grabs my arm hard, pulling me away from Chris. Oh, Kate, you're hurting me. I shout. My mate, Kate growls. She is my mate too. Chris growls. Noon has two mates. Don't be foolish. Kate yells. Kate, he is telling the truth. You're my mate, but so is he. I say with tears in my eyes. That's amazing. The king yells. This is great news. He finishes. How is it great news? I ask. My son found his mate. You're a queen. I knew I smelt that you were a queen. And yes, dear two mates is destined to happen for my son. You will choose what you think is best. You may choose one or both. And the man will agree and do anything to please you. He says happily, and I am scared all the sudden. I can choose both. I ask. But I love Cade. I finish. Take your time, baby. Do what you find best for you. I will wait. Chris says with a smile. Can us three go somewhere and talk? Oh yes. Yes, come with me to my room. He says and we follow. 
Kyle, can you please protect my pups and keep them safe? I asked Kyle. Yes, Luna. With my life. He says and I nod with a warm smile. Right through here, please, Chris says, and I walk in with Cade right behind me. I hear the door shut and I turn to face them both. Ash, Cade, I am so glad I found you both. I have had dreams about both of you. He says, I don't get this at all. I say lowing my head to the floor. Baby, it's destined. I like men and women, and I am assuming so does Chris, and that's why you got two mates, so we are all happy. Chris is also my mate. Cade finishes, but I say nothing instead I cry, and I feel Cade walking towards me, and I back up until my legs hit the bed, and I sit down, and Cade crawls on top of me. Cade, stop. I say. No baby you're going to feel the pure pleasure you were meant to feel from Chris and I. He says. Please stop. I can't do this. I shout, but he puts his hand over my mouth and soon Chris and Case are taking my clothes off and I am highly aroused and I am moaning loudly. Don't stop. I beg them. We won't. Chris says while kissing my neck and I moan. Mark me please I choose you both. I moan. Not yet lil mate. Chris says. Why? I ask. Cause I will mark you when it's you and I alone? He says and I nod. Chris fucked her. Kate tells him and soon enough he is between my legs and instead of putting his dick in me he eats my pussy until I am dripping comb. And then he puts his cock at my pussy and slowly pushes Odie in me and I cry out in pain and pleasure. Need me to stop? He asks and I can't even reply, but he must know he holds still letting me adjust to his size and he doesn't move until I start riding onto him. Then he starts thrusting into me slowly and Kate puts his cock in my face. While Chris fucks me, I pull Kate into my mouth and suck him good. Joey. I moan as my back arches of the bed. Ash, you do know this will include me fucking Chris to write. Kate says, Okay. Can I see? I ask and Kate hurries behind Chris and pushes his cock into his as causing Chris to push deep into my pussy and I cry out, and soon it's a steady comforting pace. But Cade pulls out of Chris, and then Chris stops, and Chris picks me up, and places me on Cade's dick. And it rams into my ass, and Chris slides back into my pussy, and they both fuck me, until I can't take it no more, and I am squirting like crazy everywhere. They soon fill both my holes with their hot loads. That was amazing. Cade says. Yes it was. Chris says, and all I can do is collapse myself onto Chris' bed. Kyle said the pups are getting fussy. Cade says. Can you please bring them to me, as I don't think I can walk yet? I say. Yes I will but please get dressed. Cade says as he tosses me my clothes, and he heads out. And I try to move myself, but my body just won't let me. Let me help you. Chris says gently sliding my tank top on and I love how it feels him touching my body. And the slowly lifts my feet putting my panties on and sliding them up my legs. And he pulls my pants on too. Thank you. I say as he finishes. Absolutely anything for you lil mate. He says and Cade comes in carrying three pups and a diaper bag. Cade I can't move my body, yet I am so sore. I tell Cade and he smiles. It's okay baby. Chris and I will take real good care of you. He says as he hands Keela to Chris and Chris walks over to me and he places her on my nipple, sitting next to me and Cade lays Kaylee's in my lap 
and gets Carson drinking, and once Keela is done, I feed Carson, and they change the pups and lay them on the bed, and Chris grabs me in his arms, carrying me into a room that I learned is a bathroom. He starts the water stripping us both and climbs into the shower with me in his arms, kissing me gently and placing me in my feet while holding me up. Can you fuck me? I ask feeling my pussy become soaked. Are you sure? You're hurting. He says worried. But I want it. I say and that's all Chris needed to hear before he is picking me up and pushing me onto his huge dick and penetrating me balls deep and I cry out in pleasure and pain. Mark me. He says. Only if you mark me at the same time. I say. Yes I will. He says and we both align our teeth to each other as he fucks my abused pussy harder and we both bite and I have an intense orgasm while he is still deep inside my pussy and his teeth deep in my neck. I feel his orgasm take him over to when I pull my teeth out and seal the wound and he does the same. You're absolutely perfect. He says to me as he places me on my feet, as he starts to wash my body cleaning me good. So are you. I say as I kiss his lips. I love you. I say against his lips. I love you lil mate so very much. Chris says as he washes my hair, and then he rinses my hair, and washes himself, and we head out of the shower and head into the room where Cade growls. Your scent changed. He says in a growl. Yes, we marked each other. I say to Cade. Without asking me. He growls coming over to me fast and pushing me into the wall. Cade you're hurting me stop, I cry. Let her go. Chris growled. You don't put your hands on no women or child now get of her. Chris finishes. Let me tell you something Chris, Cade growls as he punches the wall beside my head breaking it. She was my mate first, and I will do as I please. Cade growls and punches another hole in the wall, while placing his arm on my throat. Cade please. I shout through my tears. Shut up Ash. You just let a man mark you. He growls. He is my mate just like you. I cry as Cade smacks me across my face, and that's when I feel Cade move of me, and I open my eyes, slowly, and see Chris grabbed Cade of me, and I rush to my pups to protect them. She is our mate Cade, and we will not harm our mate. You will never place your hand on our mate again. Do I make myself clear? Chris growls at Cade. Ash I am sorry, Cade says coming rushing to me, and places his head into my neck, to calm himself down Chris, soon doing the same thing on the other side of my neck. Let's go have dinner and meet the other packs. Chris says, and I stand up grabbing my sweet Keela, and Cade grabs Carson, and Chris picks up Kaylee's, and we head out of the room, and down the steps. This way my love, Chris says to me guiding me into a huge dining hall, full of s of people we walk to the front where the king is. Excuse me everyone, Chris says and everyone becomes silent. This is Alpha Cade and Queen Luna Ash. Chris says ABD everyone cheers. Silence please, he says. It appears that Ash is my mate and Alpha Cade's mate as well, but we have decided that she will be both of our mates, and we will keep Queen Luna Ash happy. These three pups are to be protected with everyone's lives, as they are now my family as well Ash and Cade are to also be protected. They are my life now. He says. How is that possible? One young girl shouts. Hannah it is possible, because she was given two mates, as so was I and Cade we are all to be a trio. Ash has already been mated and marked. 
and the rest will be done in time. Chris says, This is not fair, I was supposed to be yours. She says, Pissed. You whore. She shouts at me as Cade and Chris step in front of me, growling. You will not talk about our mate like that. Chris growls. She is a whore. She already has three bastard pups and you mated and marked that whore. She screams coming towards us, and I turn to Pakula to the king. Please can you hold her? I ask and he nods taking her, and I step around Cade and Chris. I am not a whore and my pups are not bastards. I am sorry the moon goddess gave me two mates. It was not planned but it happened. I shout at her as she comes closer to me. Enough now. I shout and she stops in place. I have had enough of this. You can either accept my pups, Chris, Cade, and I or you can leave. That goes for everyone. Does everyone understand? I shout as power radiates of me. Yes, I hear everyone say. Yes, Queen, Hannah says bowing down to me. Now that everyone understands let's eat and enjoy ourselves. I say as everyone takes their seats including Cade, Chris and I. Ash POV. Not only do I have one mate, but I now have two. I never thought it to be possible. But I guess it is now. Cade is all right with it. He says he knew I was a queen all this time. But I was his mate. And if the moon goddess wants him to share me, then he will respect her wishes. Cade is the funny, gentle, loving, and affectionate mate, while Chris is the carefree, strong-willed, passionate mate. They both are great with the pups, and they both help me a great deal with the pups. It's already been one full day, and Chris makes the pups Cade, and I all sleep in his room. It's been great so far, but I am still confused why there was a need for me to have two mates. Are you okay? Chris asks, pulling me from my thoughts. What? I'm okay, I say. I'm going to bathe the pups and get them changed and fed then I am going to get a shower and get ready for the day. I say to both Cade and Chris. You go get a shower and we will bathe and change the pups, and then when you're done you can feed them my love, Cade says. Yes, I agree with Cade. Chris says with a smile. All right but be gentle with the babes. I say I head for my bag, pulling out clothes and heading into the shower, and when I got into the shower, they were starting the bath water for the pups, and I started to strip and jumped in the shower, washing away all of yesterday of my skin. I tried to hurry because I knew my pups would be hungry when I was done. I started to dry, but heard the pups scream crying. I wrapped the towel around my body, leaving my clean clothes in the bathroom. Damn babe, Chris says. My pups need fed and it hurts my breasts when they cry like that, I said. I picked up a very mad Keela, who was dressed in a beautiful pink fancy dress, and I started to feed her. Can one of you grab one of the boys for me? I asked Chris grabbed Carson and he gently placed him in my arms and helped him get latched to my breast, like a natural dad. Thank you, I said with a warm smile. Carson is dressed in a black baby-sized suit with baby blue vest. He looked adorable once Keela and Carson were done feeding Cade, handed me Kaylee's while taking Keela and Chris took Carson. Kaylee's was also dressed in a baby suit with a baby green color, and he looked adorable as well I fed him. And then, I waited for the men to get ready, while I got myself dressed, and brushed my hair, and put light makeup on, and once we were all ready we grabbed the babies. I took Keela, while Chris took Kaylee's, and Kay took Carson, and we all headed downstairs, for breakfast. Once we made it downstairs, we were greeted by the king.
and the other guests from many packs. Good morning, young king, young Luna queen, and Alpha, they greeted us. Good morning, I said Chris pulled out my seat, near the head of the table. Once I sat down, he gently pushed me in sitting next to me. On one side Kate on my other side we ate out breakfast. Today at noon the first fight will begin. We are starting with the women fights today. Alpha Kate do you still have your best women warrior? I seen everyone's besides yours. The king says. Uh, Kate starts, but I cut him of. Yes, he does and she is me. I say honestly. Absolutely not, Chris say. This is Noon's choice but my own. I had to argue with Kate about this matter, and I will not do it again. I am fighting and that is final. I said. You can get her dash. You're a Luna and Queen. Not just some warrior. Chris shouts at me. You have no right to raise your voice at me. Yes, I am a Luna and Queen to be, but I am also capable of making my own choices, and I wish to fight, and I have trained harder than any warrior has for this day, and it will not be taken from me. I say, I won't allow this. Chris says anger radiating of him. Chris, I am an adult and you're not my dad. I don't believe you have a choice. These are my wishes and I will be fighting. I say, Ash, you will not, he says slamming his hands down on the table. Chris, you won't win against her. Cade says, yes, I will be see I won't allow this. Chris says, enough now. I shout, I have had enough of this, I am not a child, I am capable of making my own choices. I am strong and fast, I am larger than any of them. I will be just fine, and I will not have you making a fool out of yourself. I shout and as I look everyone is bowed down including the king and Chris. Everyone may continue on with their meal, or whatever you were doing. I say and they on start doing, as they were before my command made them submit. How did you do that? The king asks. Do what? I ask confused. How did you make me submit to you? Noon has more power than I do. But seems like you do. He says with a warm smile. I don't know. I say honestly. We all finish eating and I know Chris is clearly mad. But he says no more to me knowing he will never win against me. Everyone I want you to get your best women warriors ready for the fight Ash. You will be up first against the Willow Pack. The king announced and I nodded. Be at the arena by 11 to get ready. He also says, everyone is dismissed. He finish and everyone starts rushing around. We make our way back up to Chris' room, so I can get into appropriate fighting attire. Once we get in the room, Chris turns to me quickly. Ash, I can't believe you. He says. Chris, it was planned before I knew I had two mates and it won't change now. Do you not trust my abilities and my strength? I asked. Yes, I do, Ash. But I don't want to see you hurt. He says, sounding sad. Chris and Kate, I know your worries, but I am strong. I say as I am stripping of my clothes, after placing the babes in their beds, I put on very stretchy clothes, in case I have to shift I pull my hair into a tight professional bun. I love you both, but let me do this. I say to them kissing them both. They both seem to be accepting my wishes, but I know they are still mad. But we sit and talk, until then we take the pups and ourselves to the fighting ring Cade Chris, and the pups all go sit next to the king, while I go to the room that enters into the arena and also is a changing room for after the fight. Kyle thanks for helping me train and never taking it easy on me. I say as I hug him, anything for you Ash. He says hugging me back tightly. 
Kyle and I talk while we wait and he gives me some good tips about not the fight. But my men, who are highly upset, please everyone find your seats. The fight will begin in five minutes. The king announced. I won't lie I am nervous, but not for the fight, but for my two men that are upset with me. I am pulled from my thoughts as the door opens. First fighter of the day is Queen Luna Ashlyn, and her opponent is Becca the strongest female warrior we have had. The king announced and I made my way out and everyone is looking at her and I. Please shake hands. The man in the ring asks us. May the best fighter win. I say as I shake her hand. Well it will be me. She says with a laugh. Let this fight begin in 3 2 1. The man says as he rings a bell, and I watch her moves. She quickly tries to attack me, but I knock her down, before she can hit me. She is getting mad fast I land a few good hits, and before I know it I am being attacked by her wolf, who managed to claw my arm. But I don't. Let that phase me I land a few punches to her wolf, from while I am still in my human form. She is charging me, and I jump up at the last second landing, on her back, reaching my arms around her neck, and putting her into a choke hold, until her wolf goes limp, then, I let go climbing of her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the winner is Queen Luna Ashlyn. He announced and everyone cheers, and I look up to see Cade smiling widely, and I can tell he is proud, and Chris has a smirk on his face. I slowly walk to them with a smile on my face. I find my chair and set in between Chris and Cade. Babe, you did amazing. Cade says, I am so proud of you. I am so sorry I ever doubted you. Chris says, and I kiss them. Both pleased this fight. Went well. But I will have to go into the second round. As well after all the winners from the first round. We move to round two, but not all will be today, as there is so many packs it will be a while that's why our stay here is so long. But after the fights for today, finish the king announced for all the winners of round one to please head to the arena, and I get up heading down to the arena. The following will be heading to round two starting tomorrow at the same time, as today Ashlyn, Hannah, Crystal, Fawn, Trina, Westlin, Beth, Vivian, Quinn, Paula, Lisa, Ashley, Megan, Brooke, Kayla, Gail, Sky, Melissa, Spencer, Willow, Cora, Beth, Donna, Sylvia, Sarah, Nancy, and Wren will all be fighting tomorrow. Good luck, ladies. Everyone is dismissed. The king says and we all start leaving. But I wait for my babies and my men to make their way to me. Let's go outside to the garden, Chris says, and we all agree heading outside the garden. is huge and beautiful it's open, and wide with gazebos, and beautiful flowers decorating it perfectly we take a seat. In the grass, enjoying the sun, and I think the babes are as well since they are full of smiles we enjoy it, for while it's so peaceful. Ash POV. Today is the day I fight again, and not only do I have Kate on my as but now Chris is being a meathead, and apparently they forgot how strong and fast I am. We will be fighting until just one woman is left today. The king is putting all of us women in the ring, and the last one standing will be the winner and will move on to the finals with the men, and I must say I am excited. Hey, let's go down for breakfast, Chris says pulling me from my thoughts. I need to feed the babes, and then I will get ready once they are ready. I told him as I was feeding the boys and waiting to feed Keela.
Once the boys finished eating Cade, took Carson, and Chris took Kaylee's, and they got the cleaned and changed for the day, I must say, it's kinda awesome. Having two mates Chris treats my pups as his own and helps us care for them after Keela is done, I get her changed and washed up, and then I headed in to grab a fast shower. While Chris took Keela from me I hurried and got done in the shower and walked out of the bathroom with a towel wrapped on my naked body. And as soon as the men see me it's like I am naked they are pee, practically drooling over me. Gosh you just keep getting sexier and sexier. Kate tells me and I suddenly feel hot I smile at them as I let the towel drop to the ground and I slowly turn my eyes towards them, and bend over to pick up the towel, Mac if sure they get a good view of my pus, and as I don't even get a chance to stand up before I feel hands all over my body and someone pushing a finger into my pussy my legs become weak, and I feel like I am going to collapse, but they hold me tight, and Cade carries me to the bed, and lays me down, and before I know it they are both all over me Casey, and Jimmy and fingering me and eating my pussy. Ah uh, please. I moaned loudly. Use your words baby. Tell us what you want. Chris says. I want both of you now. I yell in a moan. Soon enough I have Chris inside my pussy, and Cade in my as oh my do they make me feel amazing, before long they take turns filling my pussy up with their seed, and giving me more orgasms than my body, can handle I am shaking profusely, and probably look like I am having a seizure, but that's the effect they have on me. I have never felt so amazing and so complete before. I feel my body being lifted of the bed. I just snuggle closer, and I know by his scent it's Cade. He carries me back into the shower, and Chris is behind us. We all get into the shower, but Cade doesn't put me down. He keeps me in his arms while Chris washes my body up, and he is very rough on my pussy, making me want it again. I moan loudly. Such a naughty girl, Chris says, as he rubs my clit. Foot. I moan out loudly. Please. I moan. Tell us what you want, lil one. Chris says. Barn of you. I moan to them breathlessly. And I feel Cade lay me in the floor of the shower, and he starts to eat my pussy, causing me to scream loudly, from pure pleasure Chris is fucking my mouth, and I am loving it all. Ah uh, please. I scream after I pull Chris out of my mouth, and they both know what I want Cade puts me into doggy style, and he fucks the life out of me, while I suck on Chris' huge cock. And after Cade fills me he switches with Chris, and I clean Cade of sucking all my juices of of his cock. Loud bells or sirens are sounding of through the entire palace, and it's making me head ring. Get Ash dressed we need to move now. I will grab the pups. Chris yells jumping out of the shower rushing out. What's going on? I yell jumping out and getting dried of as fast as I can throwing my hair into a messy bun since there is no time to brush my hair. Kate is getting clothes on and he rushes to help Chris grab the pups. Kate I need you to protect me while I have the three pups and to protect Ash. We are under attack and those sirens mean they breach the house. We need to be fast and on high alert. Chris says, can't we stay here then we all can protect the pups? I asked, you and the pups need to get to the safe house and we need to help fight. Chris says, but it's dangerous to take the pups out into a war zone. They do have alpha blood and anyone who smells me knows. I am mated to an alpha and an alpha king. They will go for my pups on me. I say. You're right, fuck. 
Chris yells as he lays the pups down and drags their beds into the huge closet that even I feel is the safest place for them, since it's big and windowless. Ash, get in the closet and we will protect you. Cade says, No, I will fight alongside you. You're my mates and we have pups to protect. I say, Crack, crack, crack. Someone is hitting our door, and I quickly shit the closet door and lock it and hide the key before whoever is on the outside of the door comes in. Soon enough there is about ten or more men wolves standing in the door. What do you want? I shout. One pale man smiles at me. You and your blood. He says and licks his lips. Vampires and wolves fighting together. I guess it's a good thing I like both. I said in a sexy way. You're naughty, one vampire says. Yes I am. I say with a smile. To kill you all. I finish with a laugh. Cade and Chris do not find my jokes to be funny at all they are growling. But it's okay, because they know I am committed to them only. They wolves and vampires move closer and one grabs me by my head. You wish you could taste my blood. I say as I grab him and snap his neck with his lifeless body falling to the ground. Stop now or die. Chris says. King with all due respect we want your whore of a mate. My alpha wants to breed her and rape her until she can't no more. A wolf says with an evil smile on his face. Kill them off. Chris says. But suddenly the pups start crying. What do we have in? A vampire says as he heads for the door. Stop. I say giving a warning. Your pups hum queen blood pups. To bad they aren't king queen blood pups. The strongest pups of the world. And very rare pups. He says pulling on the door. And I lose it and attack him. And kill him. But I am soon being attacked from behind, and it's a wolf, and he has his teeth bared, and is coming for my neck. Stand down, mutt. A man says walking into the room, and the wolf releases me, but still holds me tightly. What do you want? I shout struggling to free myself. I want you. I need your powers and your body to bear my pups. He says with a chuckle. You will never get her as long as we are alive. Chris yells. They continue to fight of the vamps and wolves trying to get to me. Come now lil one or your pups will die. The sick alpha says and I look in the direction. He is looking and I see my pups in the arms of vampires. Let them go. Give the pups to Chris and Cade and I will go with you. I scream as tears pour down my cheeks. Ash no. Cade yells. Yes, our pups will not be harmed. I say. Come lil one. My name is Eric, you will now be my chosen mate. The alpha says. Return the pups unharmed to their fathers. He finished. Ash no. Chris yells. I'm sorry. I have to please keep the pups safe. I say crying. Let me grab my bracelet please. I ask the alpha. Hurry up lil mate. He says and I run into the closet. Grabbing a bracelet that Cade got me. And I put it on my wrist. And the alpha pulls me to him holding me close. While walking out of the room with me. And down the steps. And out of the palace. And we continue for a ways. Before I am just to wore out to continue. Please can we stop? I asked. No we must keep moving. Eric says. I am to wore out please. It's already night time. And it was early when we left. I say falling to the ground. Lil one why are you so weak? Eric asked me. I haven't eaten much for a bit, and having two mates and three pups is a lot of work. I say honestly crying missing my pups and my mates knowing they're all going nuts without me. Come here. Eric says pulling me to my feet. I will shift you will rest on me. He says. Okay, 
was all I said. Don't cry, little one. I won't hurt you. He says, looking at me with sympathy. He shifts and I climb onto him, and he begins to run, and soon I feel extremely sleepy, and I fall asleep, for I don't even know how long. When I open my eyes, I am on a big bed in the cozy looking room. Hello, I say nothing in return. Hello, is anyone there? I say again louder, but still nothing. I stand up and see I am in new clothes and have been cleaned or showered or something. Oh, please tell me anyone raped me, I think out loud. Noon hurt you. I hear suddenly causing me to jump. I had some women clean you up and change you, Eric says walking towards me, and I am not scared of him. At all I just know he won't hurt me. Please tell me why I am here. I ask. Well, I can't tell you everything now, but what I can say is I won't hurt you, but I need you to get my mate and pups back. He says with tears in his eyes. Where are they? I asked. We were attacked and the Alpha made a deal with me that he will not harm my pups or my mate if I get you and I had no choice but to steal you so I can make sure my mate and pups are all right. You see, my mate is pregnant with our third pup, and I have a four-year-old and two-year-old, and I can't afford to lose them. He says, I am sorry, but who is it that wants me and why? I asked. His name is Draken. He is a mean alpha. He says, I got an idea. I say, go on, he says. My warriors team up with you and yours, and we will all go to his pack, and you can turn me over and get your family to safety before the war begins we can attack them and stop them. I tell him, will it work? Will they fight alongside us? He asked. Yes, they will do anything I ask of them no matter what. I say, I'm sorry, Eric says crying, and I can't help but pull him into my chest and comfort him. I gently rub his hair and wipe his tears away. S.H. it's okay, I say. And no, it's not, he says crying. I understand why you did it. I would do the same if it was my mates or pups. I said honestly. Elfie. A man comes in yelling. What? He says holding me closer to him, pulling me to his lap. We are under attack by the king's warriors. He says, Okay, the time is now. I say standing and pulling myself together, and heading out of the room, with Eric following me closely once outside. I can smell my warriors and my mates, and some sense I don't recognize. But the fight has already begun. Stop now. I say and all my warriors stop and most of Eric stop. Babe. Chris says walking to me, and I smile, and soon see Cade running to me. They both grab me, and hug the life right out of me. Please come with me. I say to my mates, as we walk to Eric. What are we doing? Why are we not killing him? Cade asks. Stop and let us explain. I say and we all go inside, and have a seat, and we explain it all to Chris and Cade, and I tell them the plan, and tell them that we will be helping him get his mate and pups back safely. Why couldn't you ask for help instead of take her? Cade asks. Cause you would have said no like I would as well if someone wanted to use my mate as bait, Eric Sachs. Yes you're right. Chris and Cade both say. But Ash is very reasonable and she always has unexpected answers for everything. Cade says and they all smile. Tomorrow we will plan more to get him his family back. Tonight we plan and rest. I say and we all find a place for all our warriors and ourselves to sleep for the night. Ash it will take weeks to get them back as he will send a man once a week to see if I got you yet, and once I do he will then come back with the Alpha, 
since their location is private, and we don't know where it is we have tried to track it down. He says, well then I guess we plan, and keep planning and training until the time comes. I say, Chris POV, one week later, I don't understand Ash sometimes. She is always too willing to help someone no matter what they do to her. She is truly a very strong woman full of love and always there to give a helping hand. Ah, uh, how did a man like me get a mate like her? She is so strong-willed and very caring and even though she has two mates, she still keeps us both pleased and satisfied in all ways possible. We got our plans all worked out and I sure hope it's fail-proof. I am scared to lose my mate again. Eric is a nice guy, besides him taking my mate. Kate, does Ash smell different to you? I asked him. Not too much a little bit a guess. He says and gives me a worried look. I am almost certain she is pregnant. I say and Kate looks at me shocked. Well, if you smell a scent change and notice it, then the pup must be yours, Kate says with a smile. You're not mad? I asked. Well, no, Chris, I am glad you get to experience it all like I did. But I will still be by her, and your side, and through it all, and help raise the pup, he says, and I know he is being honest, and I also know he will help all he can with the pup. But what about Ash? Will she be upset, or mad that she is about to add? Another pup to our growing family, we already have three pups, and another on the way. Then there is her, and her two mates me, and Cade, and her having my pup, makes her even more of a target, because it will be a pure full-blooded royal blood pup, and it will be stronger than any living wolf. The pup will be so rare everyone will want the pup. The powers will be out of this world. Kate, how will I tell Ash? The pup will be a target since it will be a pure blood royal, and there hasn't been a pure royal in hundreds of us now. I ask. We will keep her and the pups all safe. Chris, don't worry. You're already a good dad to the pups and Ash is an amazing mother, and we will all protect the pups and Ash. Kate says. Also, I would hold Devon telling Ash until the war is over so she has a clear mind. He says, Aha, uh -huh. we hear as Ash comes barging into the room, dropping her shorts and panties to the floor. I'm horny. She moans as she puts her hand between her thighs and starts to rub her pussy, moaning loudly I can't. Even say anything instead I grab her and put her onto the bed, taking her shirt and bra of and cade, and I begin to tease her body, I play with her nipples, sucking on one and flicking the other gently, and I start to kiss over her body, and once I get to her belly, I can't help but stop and kiss it ever so gently. P P P P P L E A S S S S E. She moans and gosh does she sound so fucking sexy. And Cade stops eating her pussy and slides his dick into her pussy as I continue to kiss her belly and up to her breasts and her neck and lips. Wook, Ash yells. Are you okay? I ask getting worried fast scanning her body for any injury. Be gentle, Cade, you're hurting her, I say to him. I like it rough and so does she, he says. Cade, I warn. Chris, I will fuck her how I want. She was my mate first and just because she is pregnant with your pup doesn't mean I can't fuck her hard. Cade yells. What? Ash asks confused. Ash, I can smell your scent changing, and I can tell you're pregnant. I tell her. And when were you going to tell me? Ash asked. After the battle, I tell her lowering my head, knowing she's mad at me and Cade. 
Kate just rolls his eyes and starts to push faster in and out of Ash. Cade, stop. She says. No, you're horny and I will get you of. Cade says. No, get of me now. Ash yells but Cade says nothing and keeps fucking her as she is trying to pull herself out from under him. Cade, stop now. I shout and he stops getting of her. Ash, I am sorry, I don't know what happened. Cade says. Are you okay? He asks her and she nods with tears falling from her eyes. I think we need to talk, Ash says through her tears, and we both nod sitting beside her. Just because this pup is Chris doesn't mean I don't want you both. Also, I expect you to tell me when I am pregnant if you smell it before I notice it. I deserve to know I have a pup in me growing. Also, Kate, I know it's hard on you being my first mate and now sharing me, but don't ever lose yourself again. You really hurt me and scared me, she says tears just falling from her eyes, and I can tell she is hurt. I pull her into my chest, and Kate hugs onto her too. I'm so sorry, he says, and she nods still crying. I gently lay her back with the help of Kate, and she moans gently at the loss of contact. But we soon snuggle into her on the bed and hold her, and she falls asleep, and we soon do as well. Ash POV I laid there being held by my mates, thinking, man, I am about to have another pup in a few months, one that will be so strong, and need my protection, yes, I am excited, but also scared because he or she will overpower everyone, and now it will be a target to all. I close my eyes feeling the exhaustion take over me, and I soon fall asleep. I open my eyes after I wake up, and I see both men are still sleeping, and we are all naked, so I very carefully slide out and climb on Chris hard dick, and start riding it gently waking him up. Oh, Ash, he moans looking at me, and I smile at him, and gently climb of and climb onto Cade, and do the same thing. But Cade says nothing, he just rams up into me hard, and I scream. Sorry, babe, Cade says as he flips me to my back, laying me down. It's okay, I say hoping he don't even do it again. Cade pulls my legs up and Chris slides his dick into my pussy. What is this you hold me down so Chris can fuck me? Are you guys teaming up against me? I moan say. Well I know how horny you get pregnant, and I know how sensitive you are so with two mates, you will be well pleased but very sore. Cade says and Chris just keeps fucking me hard and it hurts. Plus... I moan as tears fall down. Baby you're okay let him please you. You're just hurting cause it's been a couple weeks since we tore your pussy up and you're pregnant. So it's more sensitive, Cade says, and I know he is right. Hold me down and don't stop no matter what, I say and Cade pins me to the bed, ramming his dick in my mouth. Chris fuck her hard, Cade says, and he picks up pace ramming me hard, and I have tears pouring down my face it hurts so bad, but also feels good. Ah hell, I scream and Chris freezes. Chris fuck her and don't stop, Cade says and Chris starts to move slow and gentle. Fuck her hard. She needs stretched back out, so next time don't hurt her. Cade says, I can feel that Chris is nervous to hurt me. I pull Cade out of my mouth. Chris, it's okay. Fuck me hard. I need to get used to you guys again. It has been a couple weeks since we fucked. I tell him, and he nods and fucks me hard now. I regret telling them to stretch me out again. Fuck does it hurt bad. My whole body is shaking from the pain. Harder. Cade says as he rams his cock down my throat, and Chris rams into me, and I can't scream, instead I choke and cry harder. I feel like I am going to split in two. 
Switch me, Cade says and soon oh feel them moving Cade rams into me making me cry. Harder gosh this is unbearable. They are huge men. And I should have never went so long without them inside me cuz. Fuck my pussy healed. And now can't handle them apparently. SH it's okay babe. I love you. Do you want it to stop? Chris asks while kissing my neck gently gosh. He is so gentle and sweet. It hurts, I say and he looks at me with worry in his eyes. Do you want it to stop? He asks as he kisses me and rubs my belly. No I need it but why does it hurt so much? I cry out. I don't know babe, he says and I feel something pop inside me suddenly. Ow. I scream as tears fall down my face in a stream. Stop I can't take it. Chris says to Cade. We are hurting her too much. He finished. Chris come here, Cade says as he gently pulls out. And they both are looking down at my pussy shocked. What's wrong? I say holding on to my belly. Asher bleeding and Cade thinks he broke something inside you. Chris says getting up SND grabbing clothes and wrapping me in a sheet, they carry me downstairs. Eric. Cade yells. What is it? Eric asks rushing to us. Ash what's wrong with her? Eric asks seeing me in Chris arms with blood on the sheets and tears pouring down my face. She needs a DR now. We don't know what's wrong. Cade says scared. What did you guys do to her? I smell so much blood, Eric says worried. We were having sex and it was hurting her bad. But she didn't want us to stop, and we got rough with her, and I felt something pop, and then all the blood came. Cade says crying. They rush me to the DR and lay me on the bed, and the DR is a man, and Chris and Cade are not happy. But the female is in labor, so they have no other option. Don't touch her. Chris says. My mate. Cade yells. Your mate is hurt, and if I don't do something to stop the bleeding she could die. The DR says. Chris and Cade come into the hall with me now. Eric says and they follow him but not happy about it at all. Queen I need to put my fingers inside you to feel what's going on. The DR named Kevin says, and I can see he is sorry. Okay I'm pregnant please tell me the pup is okay. I say crying holding his free arm as he pushes a couple fingers into me. Oh yeah. I say, it's going to hurt, but let me finish please. I got to push a little deeper. He says and I nod with tears streaming down my face. He pushes in deeper and I start to see black spots. Oh. I scream. And I soon hear the door smash open before it all goes black. Cade's POV. We heard Ash scream in pain and Chris Eric. And I rushed to see what was going on. And what we seen was the DR with his fingers inside my mate I growl. Get tub of her. Chris growls. I am doing an internal on her to see what's wrong. The DR says. Oh no. He says again pulling out of her and rushing to her head. What's wrong doc? Eric asks. She passed out. He says. I need your guys help since I am a DR down. The DR says. Anything tell us what to do. We all say at once. I need someone to hold her top down cuz, this will hurt her a lot if my finger did. Doc says and Eric goes and holds her top half down. I need one on each side to hold her legs down. Also she said she was pregnant. Whose pup? Dior asks us. Mine, Chris says. A uh, pure royal. That's some of the pain then. He says. A pure blood is causing her this amount of pain and blood loss. I asked feeling mad. No, not the pup. You hurt her right. Dior asks. 
Yes, during sex I was a bit too hard and hurt her, and she found out she was pregnant during an argument, and went to sleep, and woke up wanting sex, so we mated her, but it became too painful for her, and I felt a pop and blood pouring out of her. I say, the DR grabs a wand, I have come to know well it's an ultrasound, and he gently pushes it into her, and her body reacts and jerks. Hold her tight, she can wake at any time, DR says, and I hate holding her down forcing this on her. Ow, she screams. Paluli's stop, she cries. DR stop. Chris and I both say. I know it hurts her, but we have to stop the bleeding, and fast, I have to do this please he says sounding very worried. Ash they have to do this baby, Chris says rubbing her belly. The DR pushes the wand in deeper and Ash is screaming and crying her whole body thrashing around she is begging it to stop. Do you guys love me? She screamed and it broke my heart. Yes babe we love you, Chris says. Then why are you letting him kill me? She cries. Ash he needs to stop the bleeding please, hold still babe. Chris says. No it hurts too much. Please stop this. Please don't hurt me no more, she screams. And the DR pushes the wand in all the way and Ash just screams in pain her eyes and whole face soaked from the tears. Please no more I can't take no more please help me, she screams. I see this. DR asks pointing to the screen, and we look over and see a small hole. What is that? I ask. Well this is a pure blood. He moves over to a bigger baby. And this is a human baby. He says pushing over onto the other one. And this down here is a tubal baby that ruptured, DR says. My babies. Ash screams. Can we save the babies? Eric asks. I know the pure blood will be all right. The human baby may not make it. And the tubal will not make it. The DR says. How is there a human? Chris asks. I don't know, DR says. Did she sleep with a human? DR asks. She cheated on us. I say. No, no, Ash says in a shaky voice. Remember before you I was just a human before my powers. Came we had no idea. I was a queen. And no idea. I had a wolf I was small. Like a human and tiny but strong. She says and she is right. So this baby is most likely a pure royal as well. Chris asked. Maybe arcades but got my genes. Asked said unsure. She needs to go for surgery now. She has already lost too much blood. Chris I need you to prepare for a blood transfusion you're going to have to go for blood, DR says. Way if he doesn't match. I ask. They are royals they match. DR says and I nod. He moves Ash out and into the surgery room a nurse comes and takes Chris for blood. And once he is back we pace the halls it's been five hours and still nothing. I am freaking out and I know Chris is as well. Chris POV. It's been hours and still nothing. I am scared and all I want to do is cry and be at her side Ash is losing at least one pup, the one that was in her tubes, and I hope and pray the other two pups make it and are all right losing, one is hard enough. Chris, Eric nods, Cade, he says. How is she? Eric asks. We still know nothing. I say tears welling in my eyes when suddenly the doors open. Ash is all right now. She will most likely sleep for a while. So far both pups are all right. And the third was not a pup, but a cyst. So no pups were lost. Her cyst pushed through the wall of her tube. And that's why it was painful during sex, and also why it ruptured, DR says. Can we see her? I ask. Yes, but please be quiet and don't wake her. 
DR says leading us towards her. Once I see her she is so pale, but she is so beautiful my beautiful mate. I walk over and gently hold her hand, and she starts to move. Chris, Ash says and I am shocked. I'm sorry, she cries. Sorry for what baby? I ask kissing her head. Losing a pup. She cried. Baby we didn't lose any pups. The one in your tube was a cyst not a pup. I say kissing her. This is impossible she shouldn't be awake. DR says. She should be asleep for a couple days at least. DR says again. She is strong and a queen. I say kissing her and gently placing my hand on her belly. They are okay. She asked. Yes, Muffin, the pups are okay and you're okay. Cade says kissing me gently. Can we go now? Ash asks and I can't help but chuckle. Ash, you need to rest. I tell her. No, I want to go, please. She says. I need to look over her. Can you please step in the hall? Dior asks and we kiss her and walk out with Eric. That's great. Eric says with a smile. I'm glad she is all right and no pups were lost. He says patting me and Kate on the back. I can't help but smile my mate is safe my pups are safe she is awake and doing well. Ash's POV. I am going to feel inside you, DR says, and I nod, and I feel him gently push inside me, and it feels wrong and gross, but doesn't hurt at all. Does it hurt? Dior asks me, and I shake my head no. What about now? He asks moving his fingers faster inside me, and it feels as if he is enjoying it. Please stop. I say but he covers my mouth. Ash I need to feel and make sure you're okay to go home. Now please don't. Make your mates come in. DR says, and he pushes deeper inside me, and he finds my guy spot, and starts hitting it making my body lift into it. Stop. I yell, but he has my mouth covered, and he pushes hard into my guy spot. You're healed all healed, the DR says as he ties me to the bed, and shoves a cloth into my mouth, and I am crying knowing where this is going, and I start struggling and crying. Stop fighting it, DR says, while pushing something to my stomach, and I look and he has a blade to my belly. Stop fighting, or I will cut these pups. Now shut up and hold still now. DR says, as he pulls his pants down, and I can only cry, then I think about my mind link, I have with Cade, but not Chris yet, Cade help he is trying to rape me, he has a knife to my belly please help me, I mind link to Cade, I'm coming with Chris and Eric now, he replies, Cade's POV, I am feeling very scared and mad all the sudden, Cade help he is trying to rape me, he has a knife to my belly please help me, Ash mind links me, and I can sense her fear. I'm coming with Chris and Eric now. I say, we need to go now the DR is trying to rape Ash, and he has a knife to her belly. I say rushing towards her room, with Chris on my ass and Eric behind him. We bust through the door and see Ash crying, and she is tied to the bed, and scared the DR has his pants down, and he is aligned at her pussy. Get away from her now. Chris growls. Don't come any closer, or I will kill these pups and your mate. The DR says. Get away from her. I growl. No, I tried to fight my temptations. I should have fucked her. Well, she was in surgery, but I didn't, but she is a feasty wolf. DR says, why are you doing this? I shout, for her powers. Don't you know if you sleep with her you gain her powers, and once the pup's born, I will take the pure blood for my own use. DR says, you will not touch my mate or my pups. None of the five will ever be harmed. Chris growls. 
Ash close your eyes please baby. Chris says. And Ash closes her eyes over and I see him move his arms. And next thing I know the DR is across the room. And unconscious we rush to Ash. And see she has a very small cut on her belly. I pull the cloth out of her mouth and start to untie her. I'm so sorry Ash I didn't mean to hurt you. Chris says, looking at a cut on her belly. You didn't he did it to show me. He was serious, if I kept moving Ned struggling. She says crying harder and Chris grabs her and pulls her into a hug while I finish untying her. Take him to the dungeons now. Eric commanded and hose men, grabbed the DR and hauled him away. I'm sorry. Ash cried pulling to look at both of us. Why are you sorry babe? I ask. He said he needed to check me and he pushed a finger inside me. And at first, he was not doing nothing bad then he added another and started to finger me. I begged him to stop, but he wouldn't, and he forced into me more and and Ash says crying. S.H. Babe, it was not your fault you did nothing wrong. I say kissing her gently. Can you please go back to Eric's pack house? I need out of here, Ash says crying and I can't tell her no, after what she has been through I nod. Yes, let's go baby, Chris says picking her into his arms, pulling her close to him. I am not broken, Ash says and I can't help but laugh. I know, Chris says. Then please put me down and let my legs walk. I'm pregnant, not crippled, Ash says, and I can't help but chuckle. And Ash is back. I say with a winker way. If I put you down then we have to take it easy today. Chris says. Yes, I will take it easy. Yes, I will stay in bed. Yes, I will listen to you both. Ash says with a smirk. Chris puts Ash down, and she grabs both our gans walking towards the house, and once we make it to the house in the dining hall, there is lunch being served and Ash looks at us, and I know she is going to devour food. Right after I eat I will rest, Ash says grabbing a plate, and loading the plate to the max with cabbage, pickles, steak, sandwiches, mac and cheese, chicken, pizza, fries, cake, cookies, and she gains looks from most the men. What I am hungry, she says as she stuffs her face with food, and Chris, and I soon join her and eat. She impressed the men after she cleaned her entire plate, and then grabs more cake and cookies, and eats them as well. She looks up and sees everyone staring SD her shocked. What? She asks, how does someone so tiny eat so much? One man asks, well, I am feeding for three, and when you have two mates they sure run all your energy out, she says. They just nod and she hurries to finish eating her dessert. Eric, do you happen to have any chocolate? Ash asks, yes, I do, he said standing and going to get it. He returns with bags of different chocolates and hands them to Ash. Take them all my mate is the same way loves her sweets while pregnant so enjoy. Eric says and Ash smiles and happily takes all the chocolates with her towards our room. Once we enter our room, she puts the chocolates down on the bed and starts digging into them about ten minutes. Later, she probably ate bags already. Ash, you're going to get sick, babe. I tell her. I know, but it's so good. She says, pushing the chocolates away from her. And I take the remaining bags and put them up. Then I see Chris helping Ash out of her clothes and into the bed, pulling TJR covers over her. And he climbs into bed. Beside her SND, I soon join them. But I soon feel Ash stroking my cock. Ash rest. Chris says. I don't want to. I need you both please. She begs. Ash please we don't want to hurt you. 
I say, but I'm healed. It doesn't hurt. Please. She begs. I look at Chris, and he is nervous, but he does as Ashlyn wants. He kisses her neck gently, and I gently push two fingers into her pussy, and she moans, and I move it fast and hard, and she moans no pain. Please, she begs. Please what? Chris says. Please fuck me. She begs. Let us please your body first. Chris says grabbing her nipples roughly. No, 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 I'll please fuck me in woo. She shouts sexily. I move my fingers out rubbing her clit as Chris slides his cock into her tight pussy. I keep rubbing her clit while playing with her nipples. Yes, yes, please, oh yes. She moans and Chris starts to speed up inside her. Oh, so big, Ash moans, and she isn't lying, we both have huge cocks. But mine is just a hair smaller, but thicker than his. But they both satisfy her. Wait, Ash says suddenly, and we freeze. So I've been thinking since we are all mates and you guys also have the mate bond. Why don't you guys ever fuck each other? Ash asks. I was all I managed. Would you want us to babe? Chris asked. I don't see why not since you're his mate and he is your mate too. Why not Mark in mate as well? She says. W.E.L. She is right we have the mate bond with each other as well and we feel sparks when we touch but never had the talk about us being sexual together or marking each other. But if Ash wants it then we can stop fighting the bond and mate with each other. It's only fair. She says. And I think it will be sexy. She blushes saying. Cade and Chris you okay with that? Ash asks. Yes, we already talked about it but decided against it for your sake. Chris says and I nod. Wait, you guys talked about it without me. She asks. Well, we didn't know how you would feel, baby, trust me. It was hard to resist each other, but we did for you. I tell her. Well, then, let's all try this together. She says and we nod. How do you want it, babes? Ash asks us. Well, it doesn't matter who starts cuz, we can switch right, Chris. I say and Chris nods and Ash lays back down and closes her eyes for a second. Surprise me, she says with her eyes still closed, and I gently slide into her pussy and Chris pushes himself into my ass and we all fuck each other before we all get the need to mark, and Chris bites into my neck, and I bite into Ash, and she moans loudly, as I feel her squirt, all over my cock, and I pull out, and Chris, does the same. Um, this is so hot, Ash moans, and I look into her eyes, and I see her lust, so strong, but suddenly I feel a mouth wrapped around my cock, and I see Chris sucking on my cock, and fuck it feels so good. Mum, I moan, while I slide two fingers into Ash, and finger her she rides harder into my fingers. Please I want more. She moans and Chris stops, and he gently pushes into her, and fucks her, and I push into him, and he moans loudly. Fuck, I say as I fuck harder into him. We are all moaning messes, and I need to mark him it's becoming too much. But I fight it for a butt and get harder and harder, and when I am close I bite into his neck, and he bites ash, we all lose it and orgasm. I keep pumping into Chris, and he keeps pushing into ash. This is so fucking sexy and I am so horny. She moans. We keep switching and taking turns until Ash is completely satisfied, and it takes a few hours and a few hundred orgums. She is addicted to sex, but once we finish, she can hardly move her body, so I gently carry her to the shower and wash her gently, while Chris helps me wash her.
and myself, but before long we all want to fuck again. So I slide into Chris, and he slides into Ash, and bounces her tiny self up and down into him, as I ram into him, and we are all moaning messes. Can you both fuck me at once? Ash asks. Yes, I say pulling out of Chris, and going behind her nad slamming into her, and we both bounce her up and down onto our cocks. Yes, yes, oh fuck, yes. She scream moans. I'm so lucky. She moans louder. Fuck yes oh yeah. She can't control herself. Harder fuck me like you hate me. She moans. Hurt me beat me fuck me I like it kinky. She moans and we both are surprised cause this is a new side. Please I want you to hurt me, whip me, force me, make me cry. She begs and we can't deny her she is our mate even though we don't want to hurt her. We take her out of the shower and lay her on the towel on the floor. Tell us what you want, I demand. Beat me bite me, she beggeth. Show us where and tell us what you want, I say. She points to her inner upper thigh, just below her pussy, bite me, she moans while she rubs her clit. Chris bite me here. She says pionting to her other upper thigh, and we both get our fangs and as sink them into her, and she comes, and it squirts, put of her pussy with force. Fuck yes. She moans and I bite down even harder, and she thrusts up making Chris do the same, and she is coming again. You're a naughty little kitten. Chris says. Smack my ass. She begs. Chris flips her over and into the doggy style position, and he smacks her as hard, and she moans, I do the same. Harder. She moans and I hit her with force, and so does Chris, she scream moans, and she is dripping her juices onto the towel below her in a puddle. Fuck yes harder please. She begs and we hit her with even more force. Yes, yes, daddy's fuck, yes. She screams and she is soaking the towel. Don't stop abuse me. She says and I ram my cock dry into her, as and she cries out. Again, she moans. Baby, 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 I say scooping her into my arms and heading to the bed. I tie her up and place a gag into her mouth and I grab a metal back roller and I rub it up and down her pussy, and she moans. You like it? I ask. Yes, now don't stop. She begs and we continue, but Noon touches her belly with sniffing, but love and kisses. Hold her, I say, and Chris holds her still, and I use a wooden paddle, and I spread her legs widely, and I smack her pussy hard with a paddle. And she screams, and I turn her over, and smack her as hard with it making her cry and moan. Chris lets both enter her as, I say, and he nods. Hold still babe this will make you cry like you want, I say, and we line up, and start by touching her as whole. But she rams back into us taking us both in fast, and hard she is crying, but keeps pushing into us, and soon she is riding both us in her as like a pro. Smack, smack, smack. I beat her as multiple times until her as is raw and gently bleeding, and I continue to beat her as she moans ridinkus harder and faster. I reach under her and rub her clit, and she moans louder. I had Chris the paddle and he smacks her three times, and her as is bleeding pretty good, but she likes it. Fuck! She screams and I bite into her hip, pulling out of her as yes, she moans fucking Chris with froze, but he holds her hips and slides out. Lil one you're pregnant, Chris says. Yes, now fuck me now I know I am pregnant, but fuck me now. She demands and I look at Chris. You need rest. Chris says. Chris you got me pregnant I know you want me to rest. But I want to fuck you right now. 
Please let me ride your cock, please eat my pussy, please fuck MT, as please bite me, please, beat me, please hurt me, please, make me cry, please fuck every hole possible, please, give me it, she says while she rubs her clit. Ash, I know I got you pregnant, but I don't want to hurt you no more, please, babe. Chris begs her. Ugh, Ash says getting mad. Cade, fuck me since Chris won't, Ash says. Ash, please rest. I tell her and I know she is pissed. She storms out into the bedroom and she fingers her pussy and then slowly pulls them up to her mouth and sucks her juices of her fingers. Moaning loudly, she continues till she comes, and I want to fuck her, and I know Chris does, but we fight it until she is asleep. Chris, are you awake? I ask quietly careful not to wake Ash. Yes, he says. Are you horny? I ask BC my cock is throbbing. Yes, I am, he says. One of fuck? I ask. Please he says gently sliding out of the bed, and I do the same. Bend over that chair, I tell him, and he does I gently slide a finger into his ass and he moans. SH don't wake Ash, I tell him. Suck my dick, I tell him, while I stretch his ass and he sucks it roughly. But damn it's amazing. Soon I have four fingers in and I owl out of his mouth and push my dick into him hard. Fuck yes. I say. Our mate is so kinky. We are so lucky to have each other, Chris moans to me, and I fuck him harder. Yes, we are and she is, I say ramming him harder and harder, until I come in his tight ass. Mum he says and I gently pull out. After I am done he turns and cleans my dick of. My turn, I say as I slowly suck his cock, while he stretches my ass to fit his cock. Yes hum yeah babe, I moan. Fuck. He hisses pushing more fingers into my ass and I push back into his fingers, riding them. You're so naughty, he says. So are you. I say and I feel him pull out of my mouth, and he slides his dick in while his fingers are still in. Fuck, I scream in pain pleasure. S.H., he says and I realize I was so loud. Don't wake mate, he says and fucks me harder, and gently pulls his fingers out, and pushes into me, all the way. Ah oh, yeah, he screamco. S.H., I say. Seriously, Ash says. You will fuck him but not me. She yells and Chris slows his pace, but keeps fucking me. Ash, we wanted to fuck you, but we knew you needed rest, babe. You been through a lot. Chris says while fucking me. And it made me want you two more almost being raped made me need you guys. She says crying getting up and locking herself in the bathroom. Ash, come out, please. Chris says. No, she says. Fuck, Chris growls. Wanna stop? I ask and he keeps fucking me. Ash please I want to fuck you now. Chris moans. Fuck Cade. She yells. I am but I want your sweet little juices in my cock. And those little lips on my cock babe. Chris says, while fucking me harder he grabs my hips, and rams into me hard, as fuck I scream moan. Yes, yes oh yes. Chris moans I open my eyes, to see Ash behind Chris, with a plug, she pushed into him. I'm coming baby. Chris moans, and I come as well and Ash, I can see her legs are wet from being soaked you me. We all settle in holding Ash for a few. Ash's POV. Ugh Chris and Cade are driving me crazy. Because I am pregnant they think they need to baby me. They even resorted to fucking each other instead of me. Yes it is hot. But still I want my mates to want me. So I guess I will have to fix them. I want them to want me. 
I want them to need me, and I want them to fuck me and be rough. Yes, yes, I am pregnant, but I still have needs. I open my eyes and both my mates are still sleeping, and they are rock hard, and naked hung perfect. I slide Chris in my pussy, as I suck Cade's cock, hard and fast. Uh huh. Chris moans out grabbing my hips, and forcing Cade further down my throat. He then, is fucking me doggy style hard and fast. Cade is holding my head down, forcing all of him down my throat. I pull off Cade, and stop Chris, and look at them with a smirk. Stop boys, I say. Are you okay? Chris asks worried. Yes I am okay, but I think you guys had enough. I say walking towards the bathroom. No we want your Lilas over here now come on baby, Kate says. Nope, you guys refused to give me what I wanted I will finish myself in the shower. And you guys can see how it feels to be left horny. Oh and you can't fuck each other either. I said closing the bathroom door, turning on the shower, and climbing in the shower, and rubbing my clit, to get myself, of and then I shower, and clean myself, and then climb out of the shower, and dry myself, and wrap the towel around me heading into the bedroom, but exiting I see Cade getting sucked of by Chris. Well you all listen well. Glad to know how you feel about me and my needs. I say going into the closet, locking the door, and dropping my towel hug. Maybe I am being a little petty. But unless you have to mates, that also are mates you wouldn't understand. I just want them to want me, and to fuck me till, I beg them to stop. Ash come out here now. Cade demands me. Don't demand me. I will not come out, I shout. I will break down this door, Cade says. Then break it I don't care. If you guys don't want me, then just reject me. The pups and I will be just fine on our own. You don't need us and we don't need you guys. I say feeling anger fill inside me. Ashlyn stop. You will not take our pups and you will not leave us. We love you but we also love each other it will take time for us all to adjust and find a routine that works for us all but you can't expect us to not want each other we are all mates. Now, get your sexy lil pregnant as out here. Cade says, the pups need fed. Chris says as I hear cries. I open the door go and grab my pups and start feeding them. I'm sorry maybe it's my hormones, I say. After the pups are finished eating Chris, soon takes them putting them to lay down, and he walks over pushing me onto the bed and starts to eat my pussy out roughly, biting me and causing me to scream moan, and Cade is sucking on my tits milking me, and I can't help but moan louder. Um hum baby you're still so full. You're producing so much milk. Cade says sucking harder on my tits. Chris help me drain them for her, Cade says, and Chris soon moves his mouth up sucking roughly and fingering my pussy, and I love this feeling, and I am lost in lust. I hear the bedroom door open, but I can't look. Sorry, but we are under attack as he has come. Eric says, and I push the men of me, and sit up fast, causing my tits, to bounce towards Eric, and he is looking and licking his lips, and I stand up walking towards him. Okay, let me get dressed, and we will get your mate and pup back. I say turning and heading to the closet to throw clothes on. Eric's POV. I walked into Ash's room, and the sight... I seen drew me into her I couldn't take my eyes off of her, and when I told her we were under attack, she set up, and her big titties bounced, and drove me wild, and she got up and walked towards me, and I felt my cock grow, I have never seen someone so sexy besides my mate, he wants you now, Eric says sadly, 
We walked outside, and when I seen my mate all bruised and hurt, I fell to the ground and cried. I'm sorry, Kala. I'm so sorry, baby. I cried shouting to her. It's okay, baby. It was never your fault this animal took me. Kala said. Enough, Ash said. Release her, she said slowly walking towards Draken. Come here, lil' mate. Draken says throwing Kala to the ground, and she hurries to her feet, and runs me my, and I grab her, and hold her taking in her scent, and checking her body over for any injury, but she was all right other than the bruises, and cuts, I could hear the pups hear heats, so I knew they were all right. Ash's POV. I was walking to Draken, and he threw Kala down, and I stopped as she ran into the arms of Eric, and I smiled, looking at my mates whispering I love you so much to them. Ash stood. Chris says. Chris I have to do this. I love you both but this must be done. I said walking closer to Draken, and before I knew it Draken grabbed me and bared his fangs. Stop this now. I demanded and everyone froze looking at me. Noon will be taking me. Noon will be fighting and Noon will be claiming me against my will. I shout and get many nods. Draken put me down. Gather your men and leave these lands and never return. Do I make myself clear? I shout and everyone nods saying yes my queen. Draken puts me down and bows to me. I am sorry my queen. Men let's leave now. He says as he walks away. I walk over towards Kala and place my hand to her head and moti sure why. But I felt the need. And when I opened my eyes, she was healed and she smiled at me. Thank you queen. Kala said I smiled and walked to my mates. Eric since the war is over we will leave tomorrow but we will be meeting for an alliance between our packs. I say and he nods. Yes, my queen, he says, Eric tell me ash. I say hating the formalities I received. Let's go check the pups, I tell Chris and Cade, and they grab my hands, and we head to our room to check the pups. Once we arrive I see my pups are still sound asleep, and I climb onto the bed and lay down. Soon I feel my clothes being removed from my body. Sorry we made you feel unwanted. But baby you're more than wanted by us. Chris says climbing on top of me kissing me moving down my neck. And to my breast. He starts sucking roughly on my tits. And I soon feel Cade. Doing the same, as I moan, soon they are both fucking me filling my holes to the max, leaving me a screaming moaning mess. But damn it feels so amazing just as I am about to orgasm. I am pulled away from it by the sound of my pups crying. But the men hurry and speed up pounding me with force. Will we all climax F astly and then they climb of me handing me pups to feed and I gladly feed them. Then I fall back onto the bed and sleep overtakes me gosh. I didn't realize how tired I was. Gosh POV. Life has been good. I am heavily pregnant with my twins the bigger baby is a boy and the one they say to be human is a little girl. I am so happy. They are both healthy and thriving. My triplets are doing very well and getting so big. Both Chris and Cade have been amazing mates to me. Cade is now a king as well. And today we are all getting married. Currently, I am getting my nails, hair and makeup done. I can't wait to marry them. They make my life complete along with my pups. Ready to get your dress on? Callan asks. She is a new maid Chris got for me. She is a great person and very kind and caring. Yes, I say standing and wobbling over to her to step into my gown. It's not easy to lift my legs any more due to being almost full term pregnant and due any day. But she does great at helping me. 
I love you, Chris and Kate. I mind link them and they tell me they love me, and to hurry up cause they can't, wait to marry me. All done, Callan says smiling me, and I look in the mirror. My dress is beautiful and shows my big belly perfectly, and I look flawless, and I feel on top of the world. Callan would you walk me down the aisle please? I ask her. I would love to but I don't have anything to wear, she says. I already bought you a dress, I tell her and she smiles. Let me grab it, I tell her as I wobble into the closet, and grab her the beautiful dress I bought her for today. It's beautiful, she says looking at it and I smile, and she puts it on and she looks absolutely beautiful. Maybe today your mate will be present. I tell her smiling. I doubt it, she says. You shouldn't since packs all across the world will be here today, I tell her with a smile. Ready? I ask her and she nods. Yes. She says and we head down the steps, and outside, as we walk down the aisle, I can see Cade and Chris, looking at me, with bright smiles on their faces, and I can't, help, but smile widely at them until suddenly I am hit with a sharp pain, and I stop and bend over. Ash, I hear both Chris and Cade yell as they run to me and grab a hold of my arms, and I stand up right. What's the matter? Chris asks rubbing my belly. It's just a contraction, I tell them. I'm okay now please, let's hurry the wedding go back down, and Callan will finish walking me, I tell them, but they refuse. Ash we will walk you and Callan may as well, Chris says. Go back to the altar and I will be there, I tell them and they comply, but they are far from happy. We continue to walk down, as I hear Callan say the four-letter word, mate, she says. Kel, you found your mate, that's great news, I tell her, and she smiles at me, and we continue to walk to the men. Once we arrive, Callan gives me a hug and kisses me cheek, and we hear a growl and a man shouting. Mine, I just smile and continue to Chris and Cade as Callan's mate makes his way to her, and I happen to know him it's Bryce from Cade's and my pack, and he is a very good man, I am pleased it's him. The wedding starts and I can't take my eyes off of Chris or Cade. I understand everyone has their own vowels, the minister says. Yes, we say in unison. Chris first then Cade then Ashlyn, he says. Ashlyn you came into my life, so suddenly, and you turned my life from dark to liar. You gave me a reason to be the best mate and dad there is. I quickly knew you were all I would ever need, or want. But that all changed, when we found out, that not only you were my other half, but Cade was as well both of you guys together, make my life complete, and I couldn't ask, for better mates, or better pups, you guys are absolutely perfect, Chris says, and I am crying. I won't lie I was mad, when I found out you had another mate I was worried, I would lose you, and I didn't, want to share you, but that all changed, when I seen the way Chris cared for you and our pups, and even myself you all have become my reason why your guys give me strength, and make me push to become a better man, and wolf you guys, are more than I could have ever wanted and I am blessed to have you both. Cade says I am crying. Cade you have been my everything, the light to my day and stars to my night. You made me cry, you made me smile, you made me love and made me a mom. You helped me when noon else would you loved me, when I was all alone, showed me that I had a purpose, and I am so glad that I got you. Chris you accepted me even though, I already had a mate we all quickly made it work and we all became mates to one another. You did amazing with the pups and through this pregnancy. 
You are the light to my day and stars at night you're my final piece that I didn't even know I was missing. But now that I found you I know I couldn't live without you or Kate. I love you both so much and you guys make me completely and are my life. I tell them through the tears pouring down my face. Soon we said, I do, and started the reception and it's absolutely perfect. Ah, uh, I say grabbing Chris, arm tight. What's wrong baby? He asks before I grab him tighter and feel the gush of water flow out of me as my water breaks. Ash's water just broke everyone please enjoy the reception. We got babies to be born, Chris announced, and he carries me to the clinic with Cade, holding my arm and rubbing my belly. About three hours later, Ash push, DR says, and I push hard and push again about five pushes later our baby boy is born, and I push again for our little girl three pushes and she is born. Both pups are healthy the boy is perfect size and weight, but the little girl is tiny and underweight, but she is all right, DR says, and I feel relieved my babies are all right. Can I hold them? I ask as Chris hands me my little girl, and she is so tiny but absolutely perfect. We need to name them, I say. How about Kaylee and Carter, Chris says and I smile. They are perfect, I say and Kate agrees. My life is great, I got five pups and two happy mates, and I am so happy to call them mine. As later, Ash POV. Carson, Kaylee's, and Keela will be 13 inch a week, but they can already shift and they have powers already. They are the strongest besides me of course. Keela, she can tell when someone is lying. She is immortal and she already knows her mate pretty amazing. She also can use air, water, fire and control it. Kaylee's he is immortal. He can levitate and he can move throw things. He also can run very fast in both human and wolf. Carson is also immortal. He can move through stuff heal injured people. And wolves, he also can sense when something is going to happen. They are all very amazing pups. They are very unique and very special. Keela's POV. Mom, are you ready? Keela asks her mom Ash. Yes, honey, I will be right there. Mom tells me. Today, mom is taking me to the mall to pick out my dress for our 13th B-Day party this weekend. I am so excited. Mom, Kaylee's, Carson, and I all get into mom's car and we head for the mall. Once we arrive at the mall, we all head into a dress tuck store called Liddy's, formal it's beautifully filled with the best gowns around all custom made. I am looking and I finally find a beautiful teal dress with gems on the front of it, and its long length will complement my tall self. I am 5 foot 5 LBS with bright blue eyes and sandy blonde hair with a tan complexion, so this dress will be perfect I hope at least. I quickly head into the fitting room and pull my clothes of and pull the dress on and it fits me perfectly and it complements me very nicely. I head out and show everyone the dress on me. Oh my you look beautiful, mom says. Keel you look good, Carson says. It fits you well, Kaylee's tells me. It's perfect I want this one. I say as I head into the fitting room to get changed. Then we head up to pay for my dress and the boys' tux. Carson got a gray tux with a white undershirt and a silver vest and tie. Kaylee's got a black tux with a white undershirt and the orange vest and tie. I am glad we are all ready for our birthday party. The next day, Kaylee's POV. It's 7 a.m. and we are getting ready for school. Mom is taking us. Pups hurry up or you'll be late. Dad yells up, Chris. I grab my bag and brush my hair to the side tie my shoes, 
grab my jacket, and get ready to head out my bedroom. Kaylee's let's go your mother is waiting, dad yells, Cade. All right I am coming. I shout looking st myself one last time in the mirror. I look good I am 6 foot LBS of pure muscle. I got golden hair, with silver eyes a tan complexion. I look great. Tila, Carson, and I all look like we are 18 even though, we are only 13. Even my younger siblings look older the twins, are going to be 12 inch 6 MNTHS, but look like they are 15. I run down the steps and hurry to mom's car and climb in and buckle up, and once we are at school I hurry in school. Hey, I say to my group of friends, Kevin, Matt, Leo, Ty, Dylan, Isaac, Tom, and Wyatt. Hey, they all say. We talk for a few, and I get stuck listening to them, all complain how my sister is so hot, but won't give any one of them the time of the day. Truth is Keela already knows who her mate is and she is keeping it a secret, but he better treat her right, or I will kill him myself. Stupid slut, I hear Hannah yell. I look over and she is pushing my sister Keela. Get away from her, Kaylee's, and I both growl at the same time. No, that slut is trying to take my boyfriend. Hannah yells. Hannah is dating Maverick and Alpha from the Golden Howlers pack. They attend the same school as us. There is four different packs in total our royal pack. Golden Howlers, Moonlight Pack, and Starry Willow Pack. Leave, Maverick yells to Hannah. You're my boyfriend, she whines. I am not your boyfriend. He shouts at Hannah. Hannah storms away. Yes, Keela, I would love to attend your birthday party, as long as you promise to save all the dances for me, Maverick tells Keela. Deal, Keela says she is blushing like a fool and hugs Maverick. The bell rings and we all start to head for class. Today is the day we are officially 13. Keela POV Today is the day we are now the bug 13 I am so ready for tonight. Maverick is coming and he is my mate. But he doesn't know it yet, although I think he can sense it, because he is very close to me. I run down the steps to eat breakfast. I pile Lucky Charm pancakes on my plate with bacon and sausage. I hurry and eat my food. Kill you ready for tonight. Willow, my best friend, asks me. Yes, I am so excited. I tell her. We finish up out breakfast, and I head upstairs to get a shower and start to get ready. I curl my hair and apply makeup. Keela, you have a visitor, Mom says through our mind link. Who? I reply. It's a boy, Mom says. Shoot, it must be Maverick. Oh no, 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 both of my dads are probably bothering him and interrogating him. I run down the steps, and I lose my balance and fall. But before I could hit the ground I feel sparks, and I know that Maverick has just caught me I slowly open my eyes. Are you okay? Maverick asks me. Yes I am, thanks to you. I say with a warm smile. Thank you. Both my dads say in unison. It was my pleasure. I wouldn't want her to get hurt, he says. Maverick come up to my room with me, and we hang out for a bit before I have to finish getting ready. Tila, I feel so attracted towards you, Maverick tell me. So do I, I say blushing hard. He leans over and tries to kiss me, but my door suddenly bursts open, and both my dads are standing in the doorway. Hope we weren't interrupting, but it's time for you to get ready, my dad Cade says. All right, dad, I said. Maverick, you may come with us, and we will have a talk. I don't want my daughter hurt, dad Chris says, and Maverick follows them. Maverick isn't the least bit worried. 
He is very confident. I am glad my dad's. Don't frighten him. I finish getting ready. It's now 4 p.m. and time for me to head downstairs. I am at the top of the steps and Maverick is waiting for me. W.D. the bottom of the steps. He looks so handsome. He is wearing a very fancy black tux with a white short and teal vest and tie just like my dress. I have no idea how he knew but gosh am I lucky. I slowly walk down the steps and make my way to Maverick I can't stop smiling. Once I reach him he takes my hand. You look perfect, you're beautiful and I am glad I'm your date, he says and I blush I am red. You look handsome and I am glad you agreed to be my date, I say honestly. Before we can even take a step Maverick lips are on mine, and it's magical the sparks and fireworks I feel are amazing I put my hands around his neck and deepen the kiss. Quickly we both separate because someone is clearing their throats D. I look over in both of my dad's SRE, giving us the look. Yes, daddies, I say. You little miss need to get to your party, and you need to keep your paws of of our daughter, Dad Chris says. But daddy, I wanted to kiss him. I say as I get another look and I grab Maverick's hand, and we head to the party. The rest of the night, I sewn dancing with him, and kissing him I can't. Help it I absolutely love the sparks, and he makes me happy and complete. Almost four is later. We are almost seventeen now. Maverick knows, he is my mate now, we are perfect together, and so in love. We dated since thirteen, but I already knew he was my mate and now he does as well. I love him and couldn't ask for a better mate. He treats me well and keeps me safe. He is an alpha, so I will be joining his pack after we graduate in a year. But for now, he spends a week with me, then I spend a week at his pack. We still haven't made it yet, or even marked each other, yet, but we are planning to soon. Kaylee's also has found his mate she belongs to our pack, and it just so happens to be my best friend Willow. She is a great girl and my brother treats her like a queen, so I can't complain I am very close to my brothers, and I am glad Willow is Kaylee's mate. Carson has yet to meet his mate. Carson POV. 12 her Chicago my dad's, and I left to go visit a pack called Wild Beast. There has been reports. They have slaves that are being mistreated and abused raped. I am very pissed of and my wolf is on edge. I am not sure why, but I know if they are hurting she-wolves, it will be stopped. Son, we are here, Dad Chris says as we pull up to a big pack house. We park the car and all get out. Welcome King Chris, King Cade and Prince Carson, the Alpha of the pack announced to us. My name is Alpha Tyson. This is Luna Fran, my beta Winson, Tyson announced. Nice to meet you all, both my dads and I say. They lead us inside, and I can already sense they mistreat the she-wolves. Well, that smell it smells like lilacs. I follow the smell into a little closet, and I turn on the lights to find a horrific sight. A beautiful girl is chained to the wall with silver chains, she is unconscious and severely beaten. Dads, you better get the alpha and come here now. Follow my scent. I mind link my dads. I find the keys to the chains and I unchain her naked body, gently scooping her into my arms as my dads bust through the door. Son, what's going on? Dad Kate asks. This girl in my arms was chained by silver chains, severely beaten and unconscious, and I am cut of by Tyson. She is my whore of a daughter. She wouldn't listen so she got beat, Tyson says. She is no whore. I shout. Yes she is. She has slept with almost every unmated male, Tyson says. She is my mate. 
she is no whore. I have an odd feeling that she was forced or sold into it. I shout carrying her to their pack DR. Both my dads stay with the elves for further questioning. I need a DR I say as I bust through the doors. Sorry sir, we can't work on her it's alpha orders, a man says. I am Prince Carson and you will work on her now. I shout. Sorry Prince follow me right this way, he says, and I follow him careful now to hurt my mate. I gently lay her on the bed. What happened to her, the man asks. I don't fully know, I found her chained and severely besant she was unconscious, I say. Oh my I am Dr. West, and I will take care of her. I am sorry I couldn't have helped her years ago, but Alpha refused to let any of us help her, and he said he would kill our families, if we helped her in any way. We're told anyone, Dr. says I just nod. It's been six long hours and my mate still isn't awake. I am holding her hand. She has multiple broken ribs fractures to her face. She was injected with wolfsbane, so her healing is very slow. She has a concussion broken leg, and three broken bones in her back of her body is cut bruised. I will kill the alpha I swear he hurt my mate for the last time. Suddenly I feel my mate's hand move, and I look into her eyes, as she opens her eyes. Where am I? My mate asks. You're at the pack hospital, I say. Oh no I can't, be here no no this is bad this is real bad. They will kill anyone who helps me oh no, my mate is saying freaking out. My name is Prince Carson, I am your mate and who is they? And noon will ever hurt you again, I promise you that, I say calmly to her. My mimate. She says. Yes, your mate, what's your name, lil mate? I ask. Haley, she says. Beautiful name for my beautiful mate, I say holding her hand in mine. Haley, I need to know what happened to you, I tell her. I see CSNT, she says crying. Just reject me already. She says crying harder. Reject you. Never I would never reject you. I say kissing her cheek very gently. Since she has so many cuts bruises and broken bones. I don't want to hurt her. You're not going to reject me. She asks. Nope never. Please tell me what happened. I ask her. My dad is Alpha. He has been selling me since I was twelve, and when I refuse or anyone complains I get beat, she says. Sold. I ask. My dad sells me for sexual acts to anyone willing to pay from our pack, or other packs, she says. Dad I am going to kill this so-called alpha. He sold my mate to men for money forced her into sex with them. I mind link them both. It's over with now. Your dad will never sell you or hurt you ever again. You are coming home with me. I say I am livid. Okay, was all she said. Please get some rest, I tell her, and she nods closing her eyes over. Kyle please send your top two guards to the pack hospital. I mind link him, and shortly after two guards are at the door. I want you both to protect her. She is my mate and your future queen noon, besides the DR is allowed in do you understand? I say they nod. I head to find my dads to inform them of what is going on. Son it was not just your mate. Dad Chris said. What do you mean? I ask. We found at least she wolves who all have been raped and severely beaten. We have called mom, and she is coming with more guards, and DRS we are going to treat them, all and then we can see, if they would like to join our pack. But the Alpha, and Luna, and Betas, will all be punished. I already have them in the dungeons here, Dad Cade says. Good well, I must be getting back to Haley. I see and I head for the hospital. Ash's POV. 
I gather 25 DRS and nurses and guards warriors and head to Wild Beast Pack. Once I arrive I am completely blown away. So many mistreated women, teens and pups some young she-wolves re-pregnant the DRS check over the she-wolves and we form groups. Women and pups. 25 young pregnant girls. Many pups under 10 and everyone is severely besan and been raped except for some pups. They were only beat not raped. This is horrible. I am so mad and angry at how they were treated. I talked to a woman named Cho. She is around my age. And she told me that the reason this started was because Haley's Moore died giving birth to her. And her father loved her mother and his daughter, but his daughter looked just like her mother identical almost, and he got a second chance mate named Fran, and she caught Tyson having sex with his daughter calling her Matilda, Haley's mom's name, so Fran made all unmated women sex slaves. Haley's dad got to rape and sleep with anyone he wanted and Fran beat them afterwards as punishment for sleeping with her mate. It's a messed up situation, but we will get these women and pups to safety and keep them out of harm's way. I guess Haley is Carson's mate from what my mates have told me. Carson's POV. Haley is absolutely perfect. I can't even imagine all she has been through. I am pissed, but relieved I found my mate before it was too late. I know she will need time to heal and cope but I am willing to give her all the time she needs, and I will be at her side to help her in any way I can. Haley is sleeping currently. Knock, knock. Mom, come in. I tell Mom. How is she, son? Mom asks. She has been through a lot, but she is alive, Mom. I don't know how anyone could do this to her, or any other she-wolf, I tell Mom. Well, I don't know either but they all will be punished. She is strong, Carson. She now has you to keep her safe and protect her, Mom says. I will always protect her and keep her safe no matter what she is my mate and I already love her. She is strong and she went through hell and still managed to smile, I tell Mom. Suddenly I feel Haley's hand tighten in my hand. Haley baby are you awake? I ask her. Yes, she says as she opens her eyes and tries to sit up, but winces in pain. Let me help you, I tell her gently setting her up. Hello Haley, I am Queen Ashlyn, but please just call me Ash or Mom, Mom tells her. Hi, was all she could say. Once you heal you're welcome in our pack, Mom says. Did you find all the sex slaves? Haley asks. We believe so, Mom says. I doubt you could find the one, Carson please help me, so I can show you the way to a hidden underground cell, where many are hidden, Haley says, and I look at Mom. We found almost women, girls and pups, Mom says. Now, I know you don't have them all, Tyson and Fran were evil, they were kidnapping pups, or young girls to keep as slaves. They have stolen pups from many packs, Haley says. Oh my, Mom says. Please Carson help me show you the way, Haley says with tears in her eyes. I walk over to her and gently scoop her frail body into my arms. She is very light and underweight. Lead the way, baby, I tell her. She leads the way through the forest and we walk away as both my dads, mom, warriors, and Haley and I are all walking. Stop here, Haley says. But baby there is nothing here, I tell her cause, looking around it's just grass and trees nothing else. Yes there is, please lift that vine by your mom's foot, Haley says. My dads bend down they pull the vine up and it shows a very well hidden door with S lock. The key is around Tyson's neck, Haley says. Garrett please go retrieve the key, 
Dad Chris says and Garrett heads to get the key. Haley, I am glad you know about this place. Without you we would have never found it, Dad Kate says. I only know because I followed my dad one time. But I got caught and for that I got wrapped and left down there for a week and met a ton of pups and girls, Haley says trying to fight back the tears streaming down her face. Garrett comes running back with the key in his hand. We unlock the door, and I carry Haley down the wide steps. It's very dimly lit, so I go slow careful, not to hurt my mate. My name is King Chris this here, is Queen Ashlyn, and King Cade my son Carson, and his mate Haley Drew, the Alaha know as Tyson is in custody along with Luna Fran, and some others, you will no longer be hurt. We have DRS here, who will look over all of you, and we will get you all a hot meal, and clean clothing, and a shower please follow us out of here, Dad finishes, and I carry Haley up and the pups, and girls follow us dads, and Mom stay back to make sure everyone is out. I am stunned at the amount of people, who was down there over easily, by the looks of it at least. Everyone is severely underweight and half-dressed in rags, with bruises cute scare covering their bodies. Warriors come carrying stacks of clothing in all sizes. Carson please stand me on my feet, so we can get them clothes, Haley says. You're in no condition to be standing. I will hold you and we will help where we can, I tell her. Carson put me down now. These pups need a hand dressing, and we need to help them, so they can get medical attention faster, and food now please put me down, she says, and I gently put her on her feet, but she is very wobbly and unsteady on her feet. Let me help you, I tell her gently, holding on to her, so she doesn't fall. After a few minutes, she is walking by herself. We are all helping pups dress that are too young to dress themselves. After 20 minutes everyone is dressed and heading to the pack hospital. Some pups and young girls need to be carried due to being so weak from the abuse they sustained so warriors are carrying them and both my dads have a few pups in their arms and so does mom. I have Haley in my arms again carrying her to the hospital. Carson most of the pups are orphans. My evil father killed their parents. Haley says. I mind Link mom and both my dads the information Haley told me. All pups without a family to return to will be adopted and all pups that are not adopted your fathers and I will gladly adopt. Mom says through the mind link, and both my dads agree. Haley all pup will have a good home. The ones who don't get adopted my parents will be adopting all pups that aren't adopted, I tell her. That will be a lot of pups, she says. They raised triplets and twins I think they will manage, I say honestly. Oh, was all she said. I return her to her hospital room and gently lay her on the bed. Haley's POV. It's been two weeks since I joined Carson Pack, and he has been great. Everyone has decided RO join, as well besides anyone who was guilty they have been banned and deemed a rouge. Some girls and pups have been reunited with their families. Others have been adopted Ash and her mates have adopted all pups without a family, so no child is in an orphanage. I am glad they all have someone who will love them and treat them well. Carson is great, he is very protective over me, and Keela and I are good friends now. Keela and I have been talking about mating and marking our mates, but nothing is set as of right now. Haley's has already marked his mate Willow, and they have mated. Haley guess what? Keela yelled. What, I ask as Keela barges through my door. We are going shopping, Maverick is taking me on a date tomorrow, Keela says.
Tomorrow is Saturday, so we don't have school. But ugh, she is a crazy shopper, and she takes forever. School is all right better since Carson is in all my classes. Let's go, Hales. Tila whines. Okay, okay, let me get changed. I say. I get up from my bed, put my schoolwork to the side, and head into my closet. I grab a cute dress and throw it on. It's a bit short, but it's okay. Ready? I say. Yes. Wow, you look great, Tila says. We head downstairs, and we are met by Carson and Maverick. Where do you girls think you're sneaking up to? Maverick asks. Um, to the mall, Tila says. Oh, not so fast, Maverick says as he grabs Tila's arm as she tries to bolt past him. Carson and I will escort you girls to the mall, Maverick tells us. Ugh, fine. But you're not allowed in Victoria Secrets. Just Haley and I will go in there, Tila says. I can't help but blush at the lust in Carson's eyes. Deal, Maverick says. He whispers something. Tila's POV. Deal, Mav says as he whispers dirty thoughts in my ear. Tila gets something sexy and romantic to model for me. Mav whispers in my ear. Yes, I moan whisper back. I want you now. You're almost impossible to resist. Mav whispers. I just wink and smile at him, but truth is I can't handle resisting him. I want him so bad it's not even funny. I plan on getting something irresistible, so then he can't resist me, and he will take me finally. He is scared he will hurt me or rush me, but I am honestly beyond ready for him to be my first and last. We both are virgins. I mean, yes, Mav has ate my pussy, and I have sucked on him. But that's as far as we have went. But tonight, I am making him go all the way with me. We walk out and climb in the car. Mav opens my door, and I climb in. He leans over and buckles my belt, then jumps in the driver's seat and buckles. We all head to the mall. Once at the mall, Hales and I head straight for Victoria's Secrets, and the boys wait outside as they promised. Tila, what about these? Haley says, holding up five bras with matching panties. Those will look great, I tell her. We continue to look and try on stuff. I end up buying ten sexy D bras with matching panties, a few teddies. I also end up with a bag perfume, a few outfits. Hale's got a few bra and panty sets with perfume and a couple outfits. She wasn't ready for sny sexy outfits yet, but that's okay. We then head into several clothing stores. I find a very cute and short black dress with gold flakes. It's very sexy and tight, and looks good on me. Perfect for my date tomorrow night. I get about 15 outfits, new shoes, and boots to match. After we are all done shopping and the men are overloaded with our bags, we decide to head home. The car ride home is quiet. I can't stop thinking about modeling my outfits. For Maverick, I am excited and nervous, but more excited than anything. Baby, are you okay? Maverick asks me as we pull up to the house. Yes, I'm fine. I see getting unbuckled and climbing out of the car and grabbing some of my bags. I head into the house and up to our room, and I grab my Victoria's bag and head straight for the bathroom, locking the door and climbing in the shower. I wash my body while washing my hair. Come out now, Maverick shouts into the bathroom. I'm almost done. One second. I yell at him. I know I pissed him off, but I have to do it now. Why、oh, will chicken out? So it's now or never. I climb out of the shower, drying of my body and drying my hair. I brush my hair and slide on a very sexy pair of see-through pink thongs, with a matching bra, 
and a slide on my black teddy that's very sexy and revealing I take a deep breath and I unlock the bathroom door and slowly open the door and walk out into the bedroom. Hot damn Keela, Maverick says causing me to blush. You look so sexy and beautiful, he says skiing very big strides to me and he kisses me roughly full of want and love and need. I kiss him back pulling his shirt over his head. Kila are you sure? Maverick asks. Yes I want you and I want you to mark me babe. I tell him honestly. Okay tell me to stop if needed and I will, he says honestly. I start to unbutton his pants and drop them to his feet and let him step out of them. He scoops me into his arms. I wrap my legs around his waist and continue to kiss him as he makes his way to the bed. Keela I love you so much baby, Maverick says. I love you so much Mav, I say. He gently lays me on the bed kissing down my neck. I can't help but moan his name. He sets me up taking of my teddy and bra, laying me back down he kisses down my neck and starts sucking on my breasts. Oh Mav yes, I moan. Suddenly someone busts through the door. Mav and I jump and see none other than my brother Carson, who is panting. Get my sister dressed we are under attack. Carson says I jump up and run to the closet SND out clothes on. Who is attacking? Maverick asks. Rouges, and we will talk about what you were doing to my sister later, Carson says. Hey man your sister wanted it and her wish is my command. And I wanted her to, Maverick says as I walk out of the closet. Great our first time was ruined because some dang rouges had to attack us. I wanted this to be special. We all rush to the where the fight is taking place, and we all start to fight of the rouges. Kill us POV. As we run out of the house, all I can see is many rouges and many of our pack fighting. From where I stand it looks like our pack has the upper hand and are taking down many rouges. A little pup. A rouge says as he jumps onto me. Why are you attacking our pack? I shout at him. My king wants you for himself to make his mate, the rouge says. I have a mate and your king is no king of importance. He made himself be a king, but will never be royal. I say. That's why he wants you. The rouge says. I push him of me and shift, ripping out his throat in the process. I will not be made a sex slave to some unknown man. I mind like to let the other know of what the rouge told me, and I quickly see many rouges charging my way with my pack, making their way to help we are fighting. Many wolves, their bodies, lay scattered all over. The rouges retreat into the woods, leaving many from my pack are injured, but none critical or dead over rouges, lost their lives to try to take me but none succeeded. I am so thankful to have such a strong pack. They always have my back as I have theirs. Kila are you alright? Mav yells grabbing me searching me for a scratch, but he finds nothing and soon just hugs me tight and holds me close. I'm fine babe. I tell Mav. Why do they want you? Mav asks and I tell him exactly everything the Rouge told me before I killed him. This has got to be a sick joke. Mav says. All I can do is shake my head. Telling him. It's not a joke. I am serious. I am honestly a bit nervous. I refuse to let myself get taken. Mav picks me up and carry me to my room. Baby I am so sorry you could have got hurt, Mav says. It's not your fault I am okay, I tell him. They could have taken you, I should have been watching better, Mav says gently kidsing my head. But they didn't and I am here okay and alive. Now stop worrying and kiss me. 
I say and he complies kissing me ever so lovingly. Gosh am I lucky to have such a great mate he truly loves me and cares so deeply for me. But one thing that's odd is the entire fight. I didn't see him or see him fighting anyone at all. Hung I guess enough thinking on it and more sleeping. Carson's POV. We all rushed out and I noticed that Maverick disappeared into a bunch of rouges, but Moan attacked him at all but they all quickly came my way to attack me. Keela mind linked to tell us the Rouge's plan and the fake king's plan, but I refused to lose my sister. I refused to let someone take her away. I refused to let someone use her powers. I will protect my sister. Did anyone see Maverick fight? I asked my siblings. No, they all say. I seen him talking to a Rouge. But when I went to investigate I was attacked and he disappeared, Kaylee says. Um, maybe my suspicions are right, maybe he is behind all this. We continue to talk about other things we seen I don't want to draw too much attention to Maverick until I know for sure. Keela will be heartbroken. If he is behind this all I just hope she doesn't get hurt. I need to clear my head and figure out a plan. I quickly strip and change into my wolf form and take off running through the woods. Running as fast as my lefts will carry me and as far away as I can get. Keela is weighing heavy on my mind and I am worried she might get hurt or taken. She is my sister. I have to protect her. I have to keep her safe. I have to figure it all out. I find a quiet opening by the lake and set to relax figuring out a plan to protect my sister and my pack. I will make two of my best warriors guard her at all times and I will inform them to keep a very close eye on Maverick. I don't trust him at all. I will also increase border patrols and increase security measures. I will do all I must to protect my pack and my sister. I set and plan it all over the next few hours. Mind if I sit? Mav says. Sure take a seat. I say and he sits beside me. I know today must have looked bad on me, but that rouge I was talking to is my little brother. He isn't himself. I don't know what's possibly going on with him. or causing them to want Keela. But we have to protect her SD all costs, he says. No, it doesn't look good at all for you. And my sister will be protected. I will make sure of it myself, I say. You have to believe me, I am no part of this. I would never hurt Keela. I love her, Mav says, and as much as I want to believe him, I just can't. Let my guard down, it could cost my sister, and I won't lose her. Me and Maverick talk for a bit about everything including him and my sister. Maverick, I want you to wait to do any more with my sister. Do not mate her yet, I say to him. I will do as she wishes, Mav tells me and my blood is boiling. Mav, you will not. She need time to wrap her head around all that happened tonight, I tell him, and he shakes his head in agreement, so hopefully... He will follow my orders and keep his word. I stand up and shift back into my wolf form, and Mav is quick on my tail we race, all the way back to the house. Once we are close we shift back and change into our clothes, placed on the ground nearby. Then I head into the house and for my room to relax. Illus POV. Since the attack two days ago, Everyone is acting odd noon, wants to leave me alone, even for a second. I am not sure why they are following me like I will vanish, but I am sure it has to do with what I was told at the time of the attack. My brother has been trying to get intel on the Rouges and find out why their king wants me and why he is attacking our pack. Mav has been very distant, and I have hardly seen him. I am almost certain he is avoiding me. It hurts, but I will be all right, 
I will get through whatever life throws at me. My brothers Carson and Kaylee's have also been very distant having meeting between themselves and my parents, and I am not to attend them. They haven't even been attending training or anything just been locked up in the office. I miss my brothers, and I am hating the avoid Keela stage everyone seems to be in. Carson's POV The past days have been very busy and most of the pack hasn't seen me or Kaylee's or even my parents. I called a meeting with my mom and dad to explain the situation in our hands and find out the best way to handle it and to ensure the safety of Keela and our pack. The Rouges told Keela their king wants her for some reason. The Rouge king is no king. He craves value and attention and authority. But he will not hurt my pack nor take my sister. My mom and dads have informed us that when you're a powerful royal pack, it causes a lot of people to want the authority and power. So they will attempt to get it at all costs. I just got to be sure I can keep everyone safe and make sure this man does not get my sister. We have sent out informants and found several rouges, and even what we suspect is a rouge pack, and have been gathering information. So far we know the rouge king's name is Weston, and he has around rouges in his pack. But some don't smell of a rouge, so we are at assume they are under a spell, or something. We also know they have a camp type living style there is many tents set up all around and only one building made of wood is on the edge of their land. We are assuming it's their prison or Weston's house that's all the information we have been able to grab currently at this time. But we are working around the clock to gather more information and find out why he wants Keela. 1 HR later. I am currently in a meeting with Maverick and a couple of my warriors. I sent Maverick and warriors to investigate what they are planning and surprisingly they have accepted them and are gladly taking in all the false information that they are providing to Weston. None of the information they are telling the Rouges and King is true, but they seem to be buying it. I have also found out that Keela is wanted BC. She and her pups are supposed to be valuable, and she is supposedly supposed to be the strongest she-wolf and the most powerful. Yes, my sister is strong and powerful, but she was created for her mate, and she will not be forced into anything she doesn't want. I sent them back to keep an eye out and gather more intel. Keela, please come to the office. I mind link her. On my way now. She replies through the mind link. A few minutes later, she makes her way into my office. Keela, please sit down. I need to tell you what's going on. I tell her. Okay, she says and sits down across from me. I tell her that I sent Maverick and a few warriors to gather intel to find out why they want her. I didn't go much into detail, BC. I don't want her to live in fear. So you're telling me you sent my mate on a dangerous mission without even asking me, and he didn't even tell me or say bye, she screams at me. Keela, please understand everything we are doing is to keep you safe and protect you and our pack. I say calmly. I can protect myself, Carson. Why wouldn't you tell me? Why wouldn't Maverick tell me? She yells clearly she is very mad her powers and wolf are fighting to take over. Carson, I am strong. I was created to end all wars. I was created to make us equal. I was created to help all, cure all, heal all. She yells. Keela, what are you talking about? I ask. The goddess told me that I am meant for great things. That I am going to end all wars. And the pain I endure will all be worth it in the end. I will save my family and all those dear to me, she says. The goddess talked to her and told her all this. What will this bring? When keels, I ask. 
The other night she came to me in my dreams, she says. Keila, who have you told? I ask. Just you, that's it, she says. Okay, don't tell Noon, not even Maverick right now, I say. Okay, I won't, she says. Promise me, Keels, I say. I promise, she says. Keela, and I continue to talk for a bit, and then she leaves. I inform my dads of what's currently going on, and we have a plan in progress to ensure the safety of everyone. We set up more guards to patrol the borders and to keep a close eye out for any sign of danger or that we may face an attack. We are also planning to attack the Rouges and take the king down so Kila is safe. We will be attacking in one week. From now we just need to ready our men that are willing to fight and willing to protect our Paknad Kila. I am so glad most of them have agreed. Kila is a great person and our pack loves her. She always offers to help everyone she even will sit with pups, so the parents can get out for s night and enjoy themselves. Kila is very selfless, she always helps when she can. We have a sketch of what their land looks like and our advantage points, and we pawn on using the surprise attack on them. Kelly's POV One day later Carson and I are getting the men ready for battle. Carson lock me up. We hear a voice yell I look and see it's Maverick. Lock me up now or bad things will happen, Mav yells again. What is going on? I ask them unsure of what's going on. Mav you're back I missed you, Keela yells as she runs towards him. Keela stop. Mav yells to her. What's going on? I yell once more. That king put a spell on me to take Keela, and I am doing all I can to fight the urge. Now lock me up so she is safe. He is planning to attack very soon. Mav yells. Carson and I rush over to restrain him, and we take him to the cells and put him in the best one we got. Keela, you shouldn't be down here, Carson tells her. He is my mate and I will be down here. She says, this is getting out of hand, and we need to gain control over this all. Maverick tells us that he has dark magic on his side, and that is why he was put under a spell. He also says that Keela is in danger, and it's getting serious, and he won't stop till he gets her. Maverick POV The king had dark magic, which put me under a spell to abduct Keela. I will fight the spell as hard and long as I can. I got to keep her safe and out of harm's way. She is my world and my mate. I will lay my life down for her any day. I made them lock me in a cell to ensure the safety of Keela. But I know the Rouge King will keep sending us until one is successful in capturing Keela. I told them all I know and told them my suspicions. I also informed them that I will not be the last to come to attempt to get Keela. I am just glad I could fight it, and let me tell you it was almost impossible. King Weston's POV Them royals must take me for a fool, I will make Keela mine. Maverick came to me and swore to provide Keela to me, so I placed a spell on him, to make him bring her back to me. But I know he is her mate. So it's if the spell works, or not, but I have other plans. I also had a silent spell casted on him that will let me see through his eyes, so then I can gather intel and find Keela so I can bring her home to me. Our men prepare to go to war, I shout through the mind link. Five hours later. All my men gathered themselves rather fast, and we are heading to bring home my queen. Keela, you will be home soon, I say to myself. Once we get closer to their territory, I inform everyone of the plan and we all gather around. I tell them that Keela stays safe noon is to harm her no matter what. I also tell them that we will surround their territory and attack from all around it. 
Everyone agrees and we all get into position. Prepare my men get ready to attack I'm. Coming for you you'll be my mate, I sing. Pila will be mine very soon. Our men ready and in position, I ask through mind link. Yes, they say in unison. Attack now. I say and we all start running to attack them and get my queen. We make our way and they all seem to be expecting us and ready for attack. Kill us POV. I was down in the cells visiting Maverick. I reached in and rubbed his face gently. Mav I love you. I tell him. Teals I love you more than you will ever know, he says to me. Tila get to a safe place we are under attack. Kaylee's yells through the mind link. I need you three to lock me in the silver cell and give me the keys now. I say to the few guards. They lock me in the cell with Maverick and give me the keys and the guards. Watch the door. I jump into Maverick's arms, having him hold me tight. Kaylee's POV. It's been ten minutes since I told Keela to get to a safe place, and I hope she listened to me. Keela tends to be stubborn and tends to do what she wants, but we need her to listen. The Rouges have been attacking right and left, but there is a circle of Rouges, and I can only assume they are protecting the king. We are all fighting and I see many of our pack getting injured and others trying to drag them to a safe place so they can receive help. I need to pull my head out of my thoughts and focus on fighting to keep Keela safe. I focus and realize I am surrounded by Rouge's six surround me. Ah, Keela's brother, one Rouge says. This will be fun, another says. Al the Rouges laugh, and I can't help but feel a little worried six rouges is a lot to take on at one time. I start to figure out a fast plan in my head to take them down. The first rouge lunges and a second catches me of guard and ends up on my back. They get me to the ground. This shall be fun. Killing you will surely open Keela's eyes, a rouge says. The one rouge brings his jaw down towards my neck, and I close my eyes. Everyone stop now. I hear a voice yell and she sounds a lot, like Keela. I slowly open my eyes and the sight before me is unreal. Keela is floating in the air, and you can see and feel the power radiating above her. This will be enough. Noon will take me against my will because all that try I will kill myself. Do I make myself clear? Keela shouts. Many bow down to her some stand and seem in a daze, just staring at her. This so-called king come forward. Keela says, and we all look around and see a man walking slowly towards her. I am King Weston, he says as he bows to Keela. You are no king. Keela says, I am the king, he shouts. No, you are a coward. No king starts a war and tris to steal a wolf for a mate. So you are no king. Keela says. She lands and walks towards him. Bow down now, Keela said to him. He complies and she places a hand on his head. Keela's POV. As I am in the cell, I can feel that my pack and family is in danger. I have to act fast. I quickly unlock the cell and run out past the guards and power takes over me. I feel myself floating, and I can feel power exploding through my body. I will end this and it ends now. Everyone stop now, I shout. And it's like everyone freezes and can't move. This will be enough. Noon will take me against my will because all that try I will kill myself. Do I make myself clear? I shout. Many bow down to me some stand and seem in a daze, just staring at me. This so-called king come forward, I say. I am King Weston, he says as he bows to me. You are no king. I tell him. I am the king, he shouts. No, you are a coward. 
No king starts a war and tris to steal a wolf for a mate. So you are no king, I says. I land back onto the ground and walk towards him. Bow down now, I say. He complies to me and I place my hand on his head. I am overtook by visions. I can see what happened to him and what he has been through. Your mate was killed by one of my fathers because she tried to poison my mother, because she was in love with my dad and not you, I say. I can see it all. Yes, she betrayed me and your father killed her, Weston says. Aikila will grant you a second chance mate as long as you swear to love her and always care for her and protect her at all cost, I tell him. Yes, yes, I swear. Weston says. I can honestly feel his pain and the stuff he has been through no wolf deserves to go through. Weston, I grant you a second chance mate. But if she is not properly cares for then, I will revoke your second chance mate, and she will find someone who will protect her. I say calmly as I grant him a second chance mate. I swear. Weston says. The power radiates through me. Weston's POV. Keela is granting me a second chance mate after all the damage I have caused. She is beautiful and now a goddess. She is powerful and selfless. She looked past all the damage I caused and is giving me a second change. Losing your mate is painful, and it made me lose myself and obsess over Keela. But no more. I will only have eyes for my second chance mate. I will only have love for her, and I will cherish her at all costs. She will be my world, my life, my everything. I will always care for her and take care of her, treat her like a queen. I know I have been a bad man, but I will change for my mate. Mate, I hear my wolf shouting in my head, and I turn to see a woman around my age, crying with a smile. You, I say with a smile, and I wipe the stray tear that has fallen. She is absolutely the most beautiful woman I have ever seen, and she is from Keyless Pack. She is about 5 foot 6 LBS curvy, and absolutely perfect. She has blonde hair with blue eyes that draw me in. I slowly take steps towards her, until I am right eye in front of her. I am Weston. I say as I gently wipe her tears away. I'm Dawn, she says through a cracked voice. You're beautiful, my mate. I say, as I gently life her head. I slowly lean down to kiss her, but she jumps into my arms and kisses me very needy. Dawn's POV. I got a second chance mate and it's Weston. He is absolutely perfect, and I see SNT take my eyes off him. My mate died in battle when I was just 16 so I never had pups or never got to experience true love. But now, I get to experience it all. He is about six foot, or taller. He has tanned skin and dark brown hair and dark eyes. I'm Weston, he says as he wipes away my tears. I'm Dawn, I say through a cracked tear-filled voice. You're beautiful, my mate, he says as he lifts my head and melts my heart. He slowly leans in to kiss me but I can't help but jump into his arms and kiss him with all I got. Yes, the kiss is needy. Yes, the kiss is passionate. After some time, I pull away and I walk over to Keela. Keela, thank you. I say as I hug her. You're welcome. You're so deserving. She's a Keela's POV. Everyone deserves second chances. We all need our other half in life. I was desperate to help Dawn and Weston. I felt the need they deserved love and happiness. They both were deprived of the one thing all wolves look forward to finding our imprint our other half our soul mate. I did what I found to be the best for all parties. Yes, Weston has done a lot of wrong, but he was also very broken.
because his mate has betrayed him. His mate was killed due to her trying to harm my mother, all because she was in love with one of my fathers. Two months later, still Keyless POV. It's been two short months. Weston has joined our pack, and he has been doing very well and Don is very happy to be his mate. They both are adapting well to each other and are honestly a perfect match. The love Weston has for Don melts my heart. He treats her like a queen. He put her on a pedestal, and no other catches his eye unless it's her. I am very happy they both have found the love they both deserve so much. Babe, Mav yells. In our room. I yell. A few moments later Mav comes into the room. Baby is everything okay? He asks me. No, it's not all alright. I say tapping the bed for him to sit. He takes a seat beside me, and I can't help but to jump on top of him. What's wrong? Mav says. S.H. Nothing is wrong, I just want you right now. I say between kisses on his lips and neck. I rip his shirt off and push him onto the bed as I tear my clothes to pieces. Um him fuck. Naughty little pup, Mav says and I smile. Tila this is not how I planned our first time, Mav says. Please. I beg. Keels I think you're in heat. This is not the right time for our first time. Mav says. He is fighting the urge. Baby do you trust me? Mav says. Yes please help me, I beg. Lay down. He says as I lay down he slowly slides my pants and panties of. Touch me Mav please touch me. I beg him. He kisses my inner thigh, slowly, causing me to need more now. Mav please I want you inside me please. I beg him. Keela be patient your first time, with me will be special not forced due to a heat. I will release you, but I will not mate you. Mav says. I won't lie I am a little pissed. Mav I want it. You want it now fuck me. I yell. He slowly pushes one finger into my pussy as he licks my clit. It feels absolutely amazing, but I need more. Oh Mav please give me more. I want you, I beg him. He starts to finger me harder and licking and nibbling on my clit. He slowly slides in another finger and finger fucks me hard and fast. I feel a sensation building up in my lower stomach and into my pussy. It feels so good. He keeps up his pace and even starts to get harder and faster. Baby don't stop it feels so good. I moan. I am so close to exploding and losing all control. I need him now. Math please, fuck me I want to. I moan. He ignores my begs and keeps eating and fingering my pussy. I am a moaning mess and finally my release comes. I scream moan panting and wanting more. Math that was amazing. But I want you inside me please. I cry. Tears running down my face my body is so hot and I need him now. Baby I am not taking advantage of you. While in heat our first time will be special, Mav says. He gets up and heads into the bathroom and starts to run a bath. He comes out and scoops me into his arms and places me into a cold bath. My skin feels like it's burning, and when he touches my body it drives me wild, and I need him. Mav's POV. Keela is coming into heat, and as much as I want to be inside her I have to resist her. I will not allow our first time to be while she is in heat. Keela is in heat I need help. I mind link her mom and dad's. Just give her what she wants, her mom says. No absolutely not just please her without sex. Kyle says. Give her a cold bath and keep her in your room until her heat subsides, mom says. I do all I can to keep her comfortable. 
she is currently soaking in cold water. Baby please help me, Keela shouts from the bathroom. Coming I say as I rush to her side. She jumps into my arms, and I wrap my arms around her beautiful naked body, and it's taking everything I have in me to resist her. She is absolutely stunning and I want her, but our first time must be special. She is kissing down my neck, gently pulling my hair. Babe, please take this pain away. Please fuck me, please, baby, please. Keels cries. It's killing me to resist her and deprive her of what she wants. Baby, please, I say as I carry her to the bed and gently lay her down. Spread your legs, I say, and she more than complies. Will you just fuck me? We can make it special after this heat, she begs me. Baby, let me release you, I say, as I start to gently finger her pussy, picking up pace. She is so tight and tastes so good I want her so bad. I continue to eat her out and finger her as needed, until I am exhausted I gently hold her with our naked bodies, touching to help her body temp and to help her sleep. Before long I am into a deep sleep. Kill us POV. I am so hot and I need Mev right now. I pull myself up on the bed and I see it's Am. Mav has been great, he has ate me out and fingered me probably times, but it's not enough. I need him in me. He is sound asleep and the burning is almost unbearable. I slowly climb on top of him, and he is already hard. I slowly slide the head into my pussy and gently lower myself onto him. Keela, I said you had to wait, Mav yells as he grabs my hips to stop me from moving. I can't. I am burning. I need you now. I say. Ugh, Mav says as he pushes me of him gently and lays me down. Maverick, I am so fucking sorry. But I fucking need you now. My body feels like it's going to burn up. I feel like I am on fire. I need you inside me. Please take this pain away, baby. Please help me. I love you. And I need you now. I cry. Keela, I love you, and I will do anything to take your pain away. You're not in the right state of mind, your heat is controlling you, he says. No, I am controlling me and I want you now. I say, fine, but just know it's your choice, your wish, and I am not fighting with you any more over it. Once your heat is over, just know that you choose to give it all up during your heat and don't throw it in my face. Mav says, I would never. I have wanted you for some time, and now, I want you more than ever. I say. He kisses my neck and down to my breasts, slowly sucking my nipples until my back is arching into him, and I am moaning. He continues to move down my body kissing and sucking all the way down. Gushu, I want you now, I beg. He slowly slides three fingers into me and starts to finger fuck me hard. Ah baby that's a lot, I say as it hurts. I am very big keels. I don't want to hurt you I am very thick and long, he says. Yes I know I am a lucky girl, I say. He is huge about the size of my hand thick and like twelve inches long, or so. He pulls his fingers out of me and pushes his dick to my entrance. Teals I will go slow and be as gentle as I can just know it's going to hurt. And I am so sorry, he says. Okay baby don't be sorry it's okay. I want this you want this I want you. And you want me the first time might hurt. But the rest won't. I will be just fine. I say. He slowly slides into me until he is just about to hit my wall. Baby breathe this will hurt, he says and I take small breaths. He pushes through and breaks my hymen. Ah fuck. I cry out as tears pool down my face. SH I'm sorry, Mav says gently kissing my tears away. 
baby slowly move, I say as I cry it hurts so bad. But I need him to move my body, needs him now. He starts to move slowly and gradually picks up his pace the pain, slowly goes away, and it is replaced with pure pleasure. Yes oh fuck yes baby, I moan. Um um, Mav says. Harder, I moan. He keeps fucking me harder and faster, until I can't. Hold back I squirt my juices, all piver his shaft. He doesn't stop he keeps on fucking me through my high making me climax again and again. Baby you're absolutely amazing. Oh I want you forever constantly, I moan. We continue to fuck repeatedly through the night until I am too sore to fuck any more. He came in me multiple times and he helped my heat. We even decided to mark each other. Finally early morning we both are too worn out to fuck any more. He holds me and we both drift off to sleep. Illus POV. It's been three weeks and a few days since my heat. Maverick, and I have been closer than ever and he takes very good care of me. We have a great love life and sex life. Hell, I can hardly keep his hands of me anymore. He is always grabbing and rubbing my as even in public. He does not care who sees how affectionate he is to me. Everyone in the pack is all doing really well and getting along better than ever. I love that everyone is like one big family and it's so peaceful. I have about two hours before I have to go see the pack doctor. I am almost certain that I am carrying a pup. I have been sick often it's hard to keep food down. A lot of smells are making me sick. I am even more horny than normal we fuck like rabbits. As it is now, I may wear Mav out as much as I want it. I run upstairs and head for my room. I go into my bathroom and grab a shower. And after I am done I dry of and wrap my towel around me. And head out of the bathroom to my closet to get dressed. Once I am in my closet, I find a cute tie-dye sun dress with pastel flowers on it. The dress is very adorable and looks amazing on me. I also pick out a matching white lace bra and panty set and some cute slides. They also have pastel colored flowers on them and they match my dress perfectly. Mav is currently in a meeting, but it's almost time for my appointment. I guess I better mind link him and tell him that he better come get ready. Mac it's 1 HR until my doctor's appointment. I mink link him. But he doesn't reply to me. Hum, this is odd. I start to get worried and I head to the office where the meeting is being held. I knock a few times no answer. I slowly open the door and I am shocked as to what I see it's completely empty no meeting is taking place as my mate and my brother told me. I am getting annoyed now. Kaylee's where are you and where is my fucking mate? I mind link. No response hum this is getting even more odd and very unusual. Noon is answering me and I am starting to worry as to if something is wrong or not. I sit on the bed and think back to the so-called king's stunts that he tried to pull and I start to worry as to if someone or something has happened to my mate and my brother. I am unsure at this point. But I will figure it out, and I will figure it out fast. Mom, where is Mav and Kaylee's? I ask in a mind link. Oh, Keela, they had to attend to some business, and they shall be back shortly. Mom, it's almost time for my appointment, and I wanted Mav to be there. I say sadly. Keels, I am sure they will do all they can to make it back in times. I know Mav would never miss an appointment as long as he has control over it. My mom mind links back. I pout and sink into the bed a little more. I can't help but think how I sure hope it's all alright and nothing is going on. My gut feeling is telling me that something is just not right. 
I look at the time and I now have 20 minutes to my DRS appointment. I pull myself up from the bed and head out of my room and down the steps, through the house and outside, where I slowly walk towards the clinic. I walk into the DRS and check in and then set and wait for the DR to call my name. I am zoned out and not with it worried about my brother and my mate. I almost don't even feel my phone ringing, but the name I see come across the screen makes my heart race. It's Mav I quickly answer the phone. Me hello, where are you are you okay is everything alright? Mav we are alright now. We are on our way back looks like I will be missing this appointment. Please, keep me posted, and let me know what all they say or do. Me I got one better for you baby, why don't we FaceTime, and you can tell me all about it once you get home, as to what is going on, and why you lied to me. But until then we will focus on this appointment, and see what is going on, and if we are having a pup or what. Mav yes baby I will tell you it all once I get home tonight. But it won't be until around PM tonight, we are a bit from home. I switch the cal from voice cal to FaceTime, and before long the DR calls me back, and I stand, and head back with her. I lay onto the bed, and she begins to feel my stomach, and take my vitals, and she says how everything is going very well and looking good. She then places a machine that she tells me is an ultrasound onto my belly, and she soon confirms that I am pregnant with one pup, but it's too early to determine if it's a boy or girl at this time. But the pup is very healthy and growing very strong. I can't help the tears that fall down my face. Mav is smiling from ear to ear. He is overjoyed and thrilled. Kila I love you so much I can't wait to get home. This is amazing Mav says with a smile from ear to ear. I love you Mav and I can't, either I am just glad you are alright and everything is okay as of now. But next time, I expect not to be lied to and I expect the truth. I say sternly. I hand up the phone ending the cow and I clean of my stomach and pull my shirt down. I head home and curl up in bed, I didn't realize it, but I am beyond exhausted, and now that I know everything is semi alright I can't seem to keep my eyes open any longer. I close my eyes and the next thing I know I am waking up in Mav's arms, Maverick's POV. I keep on beating myself up because I had to lie to Keela to ensure her safety and well-being because I was almost certain she was pregnant and my suspicions turned out to be true. The doctors just confirmed that she is about two weeks pregnant, and they will be doing more tests as time goes on to ensure my pups and Keila's safety. Kaylee's and I had to have an urgent meeting with another pack that's about six hours away from our pack because he wanted to tell us some information that he became aware of and it compromised the safety of our pack and other packs. Once we talked to Alpha Jared of the Violet Runners pack we learned that Rouges are attacking packs and they are taking all the women and young pups. Last attack was about 9 hours from our pack and 3 hours from Alpha Gerald's packs. We decided that their pack will take refuge and stay with us, and we will take them down. I will gladly accept all the extra packs. I can so we can take down these rouges, and figure out what their plan is and why they are taking women and young pups. Alpha Gerald announced to his pack today that they will all be going to our pack for a bit and that they will be leaving tomorrow and they need to gather all their belongings and essentials that will be needed for an uncertain amount of time. Kaylee's and I finish our journey home, and we informed Ash, and she said that she would let the others know in the morning, since everyone was sleeping. I headed into Keyless in my room, and I seen she was curled up and sleeping she looked so peaceful, but I couldn't help. 
but to scoop her up into my arms and hold her close to me. You're home. I very sleepy, Keela says. Yes, I am home, I say, as I kiss her cheek and set us down onto our bed, keeping her close to me and kissing on her as much as I can. Keela, I will explain it all. But can it wait until morning, or do you want to know now? I ask. Now, if you have time, she says. I begin and I tell her everything letting her know that another pack will be coming and staying with us for some time, and that we have to take precautions to keep her safe, and to ensure the safety of our pup. She remains quiet after I am sure she is taking in all the news, I told her. Okay, but will we be safe with double the amount of wolves within our pack? She asks. Keela, there is no way to give the answer. All I can say is that I sure hope we all remain safe. One thing I do know for sure is that I will die to protect you and my pup. I say kissing her head. Well, I sure hope, she says as she pulls away from me and stands up. She slowly takes off her sundress. She is wearing it's very cute and makes me want to shred it of of her. She is in white lace thongs and matching bra that she looks so sexy in, and I can't help but want her more. I slowly stand and pull her body against mine, and I start to passionately kiss her lips down to her neck. She can't help but moan into my ear and throw her head back. Craving more of my touch, I pick her up into my arms, and I lay her into our bed slowly climbing on top of her and kissing her lips and down her neck again, slowly moving down to her breast and ripping her bra of and kissing her breasts and gently playing with them. Keela is a moaning mess and can't control herself currently she is gripping my back. Pulling me harder into her I work my way down her belly until I am at her panties I whip them of her, and I begin to suck on her clit, making her scream and beg me to fuck her. I slowly slide one finger inside her making her back arch of the bed and having her scream and beg for more. Mav, please fuck me now. I need it now. She moans. I quickly get up and I pull my shirt of and take my pants and boxers of and I align myself at her entrance and I slowly insert my cock into her tight lil pussy. Oh fuck how I have missed this tight lil pussy wrapped around my cock. I keep on fucking her faster and harder, leaving her a moaning mess, begging for more and more as she squirts repeatedly all over my cock. Fuck baby harder she screams as she lifts up of the bed, squirting all over my cock. I keep on fucking her as hard and fast as I can until I come filling her up with my load. I carry her into the shower, keeping my dick inside her knowing that I will be fucking her again once we are in the shower. I turn the water on and get the temp nice and warm. Then I put her under the water and I start to fuck her once again hitting her guy spot every time, making her scream and beg for more I pound into her pussy. She grabs my hand and places it to her neck. Choke me and fuck me, she says. I hesitate but do as she wants I choke her hard, but not too hard to hurt her or my pup. Choke me harder, she says, and I comply. I never thought choking her would drive me wild the way it does I keep on choking her as I pound hard into her lil pussy. She has came so many times it's hard to keep count. I know it's well over 10x. She is a horny bitch, and it's even worse now that she is pregnant. But I am not complaining I love to be inside her, and I love to please her I gently place her on her feet, and I bend her over in the shower, smacking her as hard, and chalking her from behind pounding into her pussy, as hard as I can making her legs tiary. Emble and her cry out in slight pain. 
She is a freak. She loves the rough sex. I give her she loves it all. I slow my pace and I take my dick out of her pussy and gently push it into her ass. Yes, she loves it. She is always asking me to fuck her as BC it drives her wild. So who am I to tell her no she wants it? I will give it to her. I push myself deep into her as fucking her is harder and faster giving her everything she wants. Oh fuck daddy, she moans out and I fuck her harder and harder filling her tight lil as up with my load. She is weak and I can feel she is wore out, so I gently place her under the water and wet her hair and body. I wash her hair and her body, then I take her out of the shower, drying her body, of and carrying her exhausted self to our bed. I lay her naked body onto our bed and cover her up. I hurry and throw on a pair of boxers and climb into bed with her cuddling her closely. Kill us POV. Today is the day that Alpha Gerald's pack will be coming to stay with us for an unpredictable time frame. We have built a huge building to hold our food. We have put three semi-trucks into the building of food and drinks. We have also built houses to hold our guests. Our pack is nearly doubling. Today, we will be hosting a welcome party for the arrival of our new guests. We have been decorating and preparing all the food for our guests, and our pack tonight will be a party to welcome all the new wolves. It's a chance for us to become familiar with their scents, so we know they belong and our senses don't alert over our guests, and we are ready if we happen to have any intruders. We will also be joining them into our pack, so we can all mind link one another as well. I am excited, but also nervous I am unsure as to what to expect from the new Alpha that will be joining with us. All I know is that he is a young mateless Alpha, he is around my age. Kaylee's POV Today the pack will be joining us, and I have an odd feeling that Alpha Gerald will soon find his mate that he has searched high and low for. I just hope she is good to him and she means well for him. He is a very kind and caring alpha. He doesn't like to be a ruthless alpha, but he will if he has to be. He wants peace within his pack. But this rouges that are taking all women and children must be stopped. And we must save all the women and pups as we can. I can't have them be left. We must save all we can. Tonight I will be introducing them into our pack and conjoining our packs so we can all communicate amongst one another. Three hours until they arrive at 5 p.m. We will be having a ceremony and dinner to get to know each other some. It's time that I go get ready and everyone finishes up and gets ready. Mavericks POV There is so much I need to tell Keela, but I don't even know where to start she has more than one mate, just like her mom, and the only reason I know this is because I can see it in my dreams. I know that she will be meeting her second mate very soon, and I don't want to share my mate, I don't want another man to touch my mate, but I won't do or say anything. I will let Keela make up her mind and I will agree with whatever she wants, because I know she will make the right choice, and I am her mate, and I will follow her decisions no matter the hurt or pain it may cause me, because I know she is very gifted and I know she is wise. I just hope that he or she treats my mate right. Kill us POV. I head into my room to grab a shower, I put a cute sundress, that is white with sunflowers on it. The dress is short and low cut and is very revealing, but I don't mind showing some skin. Mav won't like it so much, but after all, it's my body, and if I wasn't pregnant, it wouldn't be as short as it is now. 
I also pull out a cute pair of flats and a yellow bra with yellow lace thongs. I lay them on my bed and head in the shower, but Mav is already in the shower, so I will just join him. Want company I say with a chuckle as I climb into the shower with him. I grab his face roughly and kiss him, passionately. I push him against the wall of the shower, showing him I am in control. I gently slide down his body and put his huge cock into my mouth, and I suck it in a teasing manner before I take it down my throat. Yes, I can deep throat and he loves it because it drives him wild. Fucks, he says as his eyes roll in the back of his head. I continue to please him taking all of him down my throat. Just when he is about to come I stop and I stand up and turn my ass towards him. I push my pussy onto his dick and I begin to ride him. He then grips my hips to get deeper and deeper into me, fucking me harder and harder making me scream louder and louder. My legs are getting weaker and weaker the more he hits the right spot. But Mav can sense that and he holds me in place and keeps hitting all the right spots making me scream out and need more. Please don't fucking stop ever I scream. Mav stops and turns me around picking me up and lowering me onto his cock, pushing my back against the wall and pounding into me very hard. Gosh this is beyond amazing I don't know how he does it, because he knows just where to hit it, at hand it drive me wild. He has no trouble making me come fifteen, or more times, before he comes deep inside me, leaving my lip body against him. Mav washes my hair and body, while holding me then he rinses me a van then takes me out of the shower, and sets me on the sink counter, and dries of my body. Then he scoops me back into his arms. He carries me to our bed and gently puts me onto our bed. You my naughty lil mate, I am not through with you yet Mav says, as he spreads my legs. Fuck, I know where this is going. Mav begins to lick and suck my pussy. He then inserts a finger into me nad finger, fucks me hard. Gosh I love this fucking man. He always knows when I need more and just what I need. Oh fucks I scream as I come and it squirts all over Mav's face. Um um baby you must have knew daddy was thirsty he says as he licks his lips. Then he cleans me up with his tongue. I say nothing instead I get up and push him to the bed and I clean his face of the rest of the way with my tongue and I ride his dick again driving him wild. But my juices taste so good I don't mind cleaning them of him. At all I actually kinda like it very much. After we are finished with round two we freshen up, and then get ready for the party that is about to take place very soon. I pull on my bra and panties, and then slide my dress over my body and put in my slides. Mav has a very unimpressed look on his face, so I know he is not happy that I am wearing a dress this short and revealing. You are not wearing that, he says. Oh yes I am, you got me pregnant and made it shorter, and I want to wear it, and I will I say. Because you didn't have any part of getting pregnant, it's not like I forced myself on you, Mav says, as he walks out of our room. I can tell I really upset him. A guy didn't meant to upset him, at all I was just trying to get my point across. And yes I want this pup, yes I want my mate, and no I don't regret any of it. Mav's POV. I don't know what's going on in Keela's mind currently, but she is acting like she doesn't want my pup, and as if she regrets it. But she was the one who said she was ready and she wanted it as much as I did. She is making me feel like I raped her, and that I forced it all upon her, and that is not the case at all she wanted it just as bad as I did.
Ugh women are so unpredictable and the stuff they say I swear they don't think before they speak sometimes. Kaylee's and I meet Alpha Gerald and his pack at the borders of our pack, so we can emerge them into our pack the correct way. As Alpha Gerald and his pack from the Violet Runner's pack will be joining our pack for an unpredictable time, we want to welcome them and grant them the ability to mind link among our pack and their own Kaylee's says. All of us get a rush as we all start to be able to communicate through our minds with both packs. We then all head towards where we are having the gathering to introduce everyone before we get them all pointed to a house. We help them all get set up and let them all have a bit of time to adjust before we have dinner. Dinner will be in 30 minutes Kaylee's announces through the mind link, so both packs can hear. We all get ready for dinner, I have not talked to Keela since she said that it was my fault. I honestly don't want to talk to her until she comes to her senses because I don't wish to argue with my pregnant mate. Pregnant wolves are very unpredictable. I am not about to upset her. I mind link her to let her know that I am waiting at the dining hall if she wanted to join me. She doesn't say anything. I stand and wait to see if she plans on meeting me so we can walk in together. I wait a good 20 minutes, but Keela doesn't come. I am getting worried so I head up into our room to see if she is there. I walk in our room and the sight I see beyond pisses me off. Keela is getting her pussy ate by another female. It just so happens to be a female from the Violet Runner's pack. Her name is Addie, she is around our age. She also thought she didn't have a mate, but now... She is eating my mate's pussy, and I want to rip her to pieces. Addie is a beautiful woman not as beautiful as my mate, but she is still very pretty. She is shorter, with long brown hair, brown eyes, freckles, and lightly tanned skin. What is going on here, I roar. Mav, please come here, and I will explain it all, Keela says. I walk her way, and once I am at the edge of our bed, Sit down please, Keela says. I sit down next to Keela. Mav, I guess fate had other plans for me. It turns out I not only have you as my mate, but I also have Addie as my mate. I know it's a lot, but I was thinking that you both can remain my mates, and we can just have three sums you know I like pussy, but I am addicted to you. But now we all can have fun, and you can fuck both of us, Keela says. Fuck, she has another mate, and it turns out to be a female now. I get to fuck two girls, every man's dream. But now it's my reality. But a part of me still only wants Keela. I am selfish, and I want her all to myself. But I won't go against what my mate wants. Please join, Keela says. Addie is eating Keela's pussy, so I take position behind Addie's naked body, and I begin to eat her pussy while she eats Keela's. I slowly insert two fingers into her pussy. She is tight, but not as tight as Keela. Addie is riding back onto my face faster and harder, but I need to feel myself inside my mate I stop. Keela eat Addie's pussy and get that as in the air I say and they comply. I push my dick into Keela's pussy and start to pound her tight little pussy. She doesn't take long to come all over my dick. I pull it out and insert it into Addie's mouth, making her suck of all Keela's juices. Mav fuck Addie Keela says. I am not one to argue with my mate, so I comply, and I fuck Addie until she squirts all over my shaft, and I make Keela clean it of. Then I have both of them take turns sucking my dick as I play with their tits. The girls continue to take turns getting fucked by my dick until they both are satisfied, and I comb all over their faces. Keela cleans of Addie's face 
by licking my comb of her face. And once Keela is done, Addie cleans up Keela's face the same way. Gosh, that was amazing. But I don't know how I will keep up with them both and my overly horny pregnant mate. We finish getting cleaned up and head down to the dining hall. Keela's POV. Today has been very eventful. I not only have Mav, but now Addie, as well two mates one of each sex, damn god dream, come true, I always liked girls, but I was not about to cheat on my mate, but now I don't, have to because she too is my mate and Mav, will have to come to terms with sharing me with another female, but he shouldn't complain since he will get to fuck her as well. I walk into the dining hall, and my wolf is going crazy screaming mate mate mate. I am confused I already have two mates I can't possibly have another mate. Mate a man growls, and he turns, I can clearly see he is a very handsome alpha mate, he must be alpha Gerald, he is tall, very built blonde hair with green eyes. Mate I whisper. Addie and Mav are confused and just look at me. I walk towards Gerald and get a better look at him. Before I can even say anything he grabs me and pulls me into him. I have looked everywhere for you and you have been here. The whole time he says as he kisses me. I hear growls Addie and Mav are clearly not impressed at all. As he is my mate as well I say. I announce to everyone that I not only have Maverick as my mate, but I also have Addie and Gerald. This is all so crazy, but we have all decided to talk, after the party is over with, or we get a moment alone. I am unsure what to do this is a lot to take in, but I can't reject any of them, because they all deserve a chance to be happy just like I do. Apparently the goddess had other plans for me and decided to give me two male mates and one female mate. I am happy I just hope my mates can all accept each other and agree to treat us all as mates. Gerald's POV I could sense my mate all day since we arrived, but I could not find her anywhere. I am standing in the dining hall talking to Kaylee's, when suddenly I get the most toxic scent ever. It smells so amazing my wolf is going crazy screaming mate. I slowly turn and see Keela with her mate Maverick and Addie a girl from my pack. How can a mated wolf be my mate? Mate I growl. Mate Keela whispers. I am confused maybe Maverick is not her destined mate. Maybe he is her chosen mate. Only time will tell I pull Keela into me. I want her to know that she has always been on my mind, and I am so glad to be hers. We have all agreed to talk later, because I guess they both, and I are all her mates. I don't know how I feel about sharing my mate with another male, and female, I guess. I will have to wait and talk to Keela and the rest of them later tonight, once we get a moment by ourselves. Keela's POV. This night possibly can't get any more crazy. I not only have one mate but three mates. Alpha Maverick, Alpha Gerald and Addie. This is exciting to an extent, but also overwhelming. I just hope my mates can all accept me and we can have a happy life together. I never asked for multiple mates, I just wanted one mate, but seems like my destiny has been planned different than I would have liked. We finish up at our party, and we all say our goodbye I lead everyone to our room, where we all set on our king-size bed to talk. First, I never asked for more than one mate, but I will not reject one of my mates, I will keep all three of my mates, we will have to discuss how it will work, because I am all your mates, but you're not each other's mates I say. Well, that's good news, I would love to be your mate as long as the others can accept me as well Addie says. Keela, I may not fully understand this all, but I did know you would meet a mate tonight, 
I just didn't think you would have more than one. But you're my mate no matter. What we will figure this all out together. And if they want to be a part of our relationship, then there must be rules. And they need to respect the fact that your pregnant mouth says, Ass, I want to know the terms of this whole ordeal. I want Keela as my mate. But will I ever have her alone for a date or for a lone time? Also, will we all enjoy each other and act like we are all mates, or how will this work? Gerald asks. Well, one I guess we will have to figure this all out as we go along with it to see what works best for us all. But I think we should consider joining PAX, because Maverick has his own PAX, as do you, Gerald. But I don't want to be torn between two places, so I think we should consider PAX joining and you both becoming alphas of one large pack. I also feel that we will all need time alone with one another for adult activites and group activites. I also think that we all should be able to enjoy one another and not just focus on pleasing me. I think that you both should feel comfortable in pleasing Addie along with me as long as she is willing. I want all of us to enjoy this and not feel jealous. We can all have a date night once a week. Fridays are already Mavs and my date night. So Addie and Gerald you both need to pick a day of the week for a date. Also Mav and Gerald you both need to pick a day to take Addie on a date night. I finish. We all decided that Friday's Mav is all mine. Then on Saturdays, I am all Addie's. But on Wednesdays, I am all Gerald's. But Gerald also said he would take Addie out on Fridays, and then Mav will take Addie out on Wednesday. This shall be fun. I just hope we can all figure it out. Well, I don't know about you all, but I am very fucking horny perks of being pregnant. I guess I say, while standing and stripping of my dress. I am standing in my panties and bra. It doesn't take Maverick long to scoop me into his arms and lay me on the bed, stripping of his clothes. Addie is next to join in she strips of her clothes and lays next to me Gerald you going to join or just watch. He quickly strips of his clothes and he looks a bit nervous so I gently push Mav of me so I can get on top of Gerald and I start to kiss him. I mind link Mav to tell him to start pleasing Addie if he wishes to while I make Gerald more comfortable. Maverick doesn't say anything instead he starts by eating daddy's pussy and I continue to kiss Gerald until he picks me up and lays me onto the bed. He puts his lips to my ear. Keela please be patient this is my first time Gerald whispers in my ear. I say nothing and look at him confused. I want my first time to be with my mate only. I don't want it to be a group party he says. Maverick and Addie I think Gerald and I are going to head to the guest room that was set up for Gerald and we will return. Shortly I want you both to finish each other of and do as you want we will return shortly and I will explain it all once I return I say as I pull my dress back on. Once Gerald is dressed him and I head into his room and he pick me up as soon as we walk into his room and he kicks the door shut. He carries me over to his bed, gently placing me onto the bed. He take of my dress and pulls it over my head gently. He then unbuckles my bra and throws it to the floor then my panties go flying across the room. Um you smell so delicious Gerald says as he spreads my thighs and he begins to suck on my nub and he slowly inserts a finger into my pussy fingering me hard and eating my pussy like something f-i-r-e-c-e i love how rough he is with me i oh ah fuck yes i scream moan gerald strips himself and aligns himself at my pussy and he gently pushes his shaft into my tight pussy 
He is bigger than Maverick not by a lot. But bigger it's very noticeable it actually hurts a bit. But it feels so amazing. The faster and harder he goes the more it hurts causing me to cry. Please stop for a second I say. Gerald stops and he looks down and there is blood. Not a lot of blood, but a little bit it's noticeable. Turns out, he just tore me a bit, and that's why it hurts. Just keep on going I say, as I wipe the tears from my eyes. Keela, we don't have to finish, I don't want to cause you pain, he says. Gosh this man melts my heart. Please let's finish, yes it hurts. But I need to get used to it, and let my body add sut to you in time. It gets better Mav tears me often, as well I say, and Gerald takes no time to continue to fuck me. Before long Gerald is pounding into me hard and fast it hurts, but it feels so amazing I am screaming begging for more. I am about to have another orgasm my nails find my way into Gerald's back and I claw his back open, causing him to come into my pussy with force. That was fucking amazing, Gerald says. Yes, it sure was I say as I pant like a puppy. We both lay next to each other for a few moments and gain our composure. Gerald helps me up of the bed and helps me get dressed. We then head into our room where Addie and Maverick are. I see that Maverick is getting his dick sucked by Addie, and he is fingering her. As she sucks his dick, I take no time. Into joining, I start to eat Addie's pussy, and then Gerald joins as well eating my pussy. I am grinding harder into Gerald's face, needing more, wanting more. I keep on pushing and riding his face. Addie then moves to suck on my titties, and Maverick slides his dick into my pussy and starts to fuck me as Gerald licks my clit and Addie sucks my tits. Oh fucks, I scream moan. I have never felt this much pleasure at once. Maverick fucks me faster and harder making me squirt all over his dick. Gerald then takes a turn fucking me, while Maverick fucks Addie. They keep taking turns fucking me and Addie. Maverick mind links me saying that he can't come in Addie his body, won't allow him to right now. So Maverick fucks me, to finish he comes deep inside me filling me to the max. Apparently Gerald can't come in Addie. Either right now this all will take time to get used to and to allow our bodies to adjust to one another. Addie gets ate out by Maverick, while Gerald finishes of inside me filling me, until it's running out of me. After we are all finished we lay in bed, and cuddle. One another it goes Gerald me Maverick, and Addie, we all soon fall asleep. Weeks later. Gerald's POV. Maverick and I have decided to conjoin packs at his pack, since it's closer and less of a travel. For Keela, since she is very close to her family, as well. But he have also decided to stay put until at least the pups are born because we don't want to risk the safety of the pup. He is alpha blood and he is strong, but until he is older we need to protect him. Our packs have all agreed to our terms, and they are all happy to be moving closer to the royal palace. Keela is huge and has a lil under one month left. The pup is doing very well and growing very strong. We also have been having a lot of fun inside and outside of the bed. We all have figured out what we all like and it works well with us all. Maverick and I are also both able to come in Addy. Now, I know it sounds dumb, but it is a big accomplishment. I just have to be cautious not to get her pregnant until I have at least one heir with Keela because she will carry a pure alpha, as Addie would only carry a half-blood, and I can't have a half-blood ruling after I no longer rule. I know it sounds selfish. But that's the way we have to keep it. After Keela delivers my pup, 
I can have Addie carry a pup of mine if she wants one. Today, we are all heading to Maverick's Pack to have our pack house build bigger and have it remodeled. Keela is going to be working with the designers and contractors to explain just what she wants and how she wants everything. She wants a huge nursery attached to our room, and she wants our room to be huge with a huge bed that's almost the size of two king beds put together, but our bed will be one and custom made to our liking. She wants a big walk-in shower with a juicy tub, big enough to fit all four of us. She wants a theater and she wants it big enough for all members to be able to enjoy. One thing I have learned is that Keela is the kindest person I have ever met. She is always helping someone other than herself. There is days I can tell she is in pain to walk due to her feet swelling so much, but she pushes through and smiles and helps others and refuses to let anyone help her. She is so loving to those she has never even met. But those who she has meant knows that Keela will go out of her way to help anyone and everyone. We finish up explaining the designs and structures we want. We head to go get some dinner at a nearby dinner. It's called Angelo's Family Dinner. It's a very nice dinner. They are a higher-end dinner, but don't charge an arm and leg, so all can enjoy it without breaking their wallet. It's nice we sit and talk and share laughs amongst one another. Oh, um, Keela says with the look of worry across her face. What's wrong, Mav? And I say in unison. The pup kicked and hit my bladder wrong, and it looks like I have wet myself. Keela whispers embarrassed. She doesn't have to say no more. I stand up from my seat and walk over to her. And I scoop her into my arms, and I carry her out to our car. I place my jacket down on the seat and place her onto the seat. She is clearly embarrassed, but none of us are worried or judging her. But she is worried. Addie and Mav said they will catch up with us later. I drive Keila and I home, and I carry her up to our room and into the bathroom. I set her down on the side of the tub. And I run warm water into it for her. I also put a very special bath bomb into the tub. Kila POV. Mav has been distant from me, and he has been spending more and more time with Addie. He has even missed appointments for our pup, but Gerald went with me at least. Every chance Mav gets, he leaves with Addie. All his free time is with her. Hell, I don't. Even think he notices me any more. Gerald has been great, and he has been doing very well at helping me. And we decided that tonight we will mark each other. Addie and I still haven't marked each other. She is full of excuses as to why she doesn't want to mark me and me mark her any more. I honestly don't care because at least I have one mate who truly cares for me. Gerald doesn't. Even like to fuck Addie, but he will when I ask him to. But I have to always make it up to him. I know he sees all that is going on, and he tries even harder to keep my mind distracted. I really appreciate Gerald and all he has been doing for me. Gerald takes of my clothes and he places me into the warm water. He undresses himself and gets in with me. I lean back onto him. And I gently splash the water over my belly. Gerald, I wanted to thank you for all you have been doing for me. These pups aren't even yours, and you're doing all you can for me. And the pup, I greatly appreciate it. I don't know what's going on with Mav and Addie, but I honestly don't care anymore. And I was thinking that you, and I could stay in the hotel. For a few days, give them time to figure out what they really want. I will explain it all to them, and they can figure out what they want to dominate it. I say, yes, I have noticed, and I know what they are doing is not right to you. I am not going anywhere, Keila, and whatever you want is what we shall dominate it. Gerald says. 
We finish up in the bath, and I am incredibly exhausted. Gerald, can we sleep in your room tonight? I think I want it to just be you and I, I say. Yes, let's go, he says as he pulls the towel around me and scoops me into his arms, carrying me to his room. Once in his room, he lays me on the bed and takes the towel of me and starts to kiss my belly. I don't know why, but it turns me on and drives me wild. But Gerald can smell my arousal. He gently kisses down my belly and starts to massage my pussy with his tongue. He then starts to finger my pussy, gaining speed faster and harder making me crawl up the wall. Um um fucks I moan. He then soon starts to fuck me getting faster and harder my nails are clawing down his back, and I know it will leave a mark. Gerald grabs my hips, and in a swift movement, he flips me over and puts me in the doggy-style position, fucking me harder and faster and choking me from behind. He flips me back over so we both can mark one another at the same time. The feeling explodes through my body, and it's so amazing it's like nothing I have ever felt before well besides when Mav marked me. It's driving me crazy and it doesn't take no time for me to come all over his cock. After we are finished we both head to bed. Mav's POV. Addie and I got home and it's just us in the room. Keela must be in Gerald's room or something. I head into Gerald's room and I see them sleeping in bed. Keela I whisper. Keela, PSSD Keela I say until I see them both moving. What she says as she sits up and Gerald sits up after her. Addie, and I would like to talk to you alone I says. Well, Gerald is our mate too and I believe that he can sit in on the conversation Keela says. She is really testing my patience. No Keela, Gerald is your mate not our fucking mate I snap out at her. Well, Gerald will be present. I am not sure what is going on with you. But I don't like this side of you, Keela says. Well, I will just say it now. I am through with you and the bullshit you come with Addie is also done with you. We will be leaving tonight. And also I don't want anything to do with that pup you are carrying. I'm sure that mutt isn't even mine. You're a whore. I'm sure you were cheating on me long before Mav says. And that is fine with me, but don't you ever insult my unborn pup. This pup is all yours. But if you don't want him that's fine with me, I will raise him on my own Keela says. I don't know what's going on with me, but I don't like it since Addie has came into the picture. I am losing myself, and I am not sure what's going on I am killing myself. By the stuff I am saying it's almost like I am being drugged and brainwashed. My mate was all I wanted and then some, but now it's like I care less if she is around. I say no more and walk out of the room, and Addie, and I grab our belongings and leave. I know Gerald is pissed of and it won't be long before he snaps, so we are quick to get our things and leave. Illus POV I kinda seen that coming ug, but why now? I just head over to Gerald and cry into his arms. He holds me and does the best he can to comfort me. I knew Mav and Addie were getting more and more distant. But this is unreal and I am completely lost and hurt. My chest is feeling like it is torn apart. I have never felt this amount of pain before in my life. I try my hardest to keep it together and to keep my pup safe from the pain I am enduring. I do all I can to shield them from all the pain I am going through. I just hope it's enough and it soon passes and eases up. I am too far into my pregnancy to go through this amount of stress. I cry my heart out on Gerald's chest. He holds me tight and kisses my forehead as often as he can. SH baby I know it's hard just know I am here for you he keeps saying repeatedly. I hope oh I shout and quickly get up. 
There was a big gush of fluid that came out of me, and I know for sure it was not pee of any sort. It must be time. I get up from the bed, and Gerald is quick to follow. He kicks into dad mode and races into the closet and grabs me clean dry clothes. He helps me get change, and then he scoops me into his arms and runs out of our room and down the steps and out the front door, and he races to the pack DR. As soon as he is inside, he is shouting and yelling, Please someone, my mate is in labor, he shouts over and over until they come rushing out with a bed to lay me on. They then take me into the delivery room, where they hook me up to an four, and also a machine that records my contractions, and I must say at this point, I am pretty lucky as my contractions are only mild. Noting compared to the pain, I am feeling in my heart. Tila, you're early, what happened? Everything was going well, the DR asks me. She went through a lot, can you please not discuss no more and worry about delivering our pup, Gerald says in a firm voice. Honestly, I couldn't agree with him more, because I am not in no condition to talk about the stuff I am going through. Currently, I need to focus on delivering my pup when the time comes. They let me rest until my contractions become closer. I doze of and I get woke by Gerald talking to my mom to explain what is going on. My mom is furious. I have never seen my mom this angry before it actually startles me. Mom, please, now is not the time. I can feel the anger radiating of your body, and it is making me more uncomfortable, I say, as I set up. You're right, honey. I am sorry now, is not the time or place to rip his head off. Right now we need to focus on delivering my grandson. Then later, I will plan on ripping of their heads, she says, as she kisses my head. I just smile, because anything I say won't be so nice and I don't trust, the words that will leave my tongue, so I will just remain silent. I motion for Gerald to come closer to be, because I need him near me, because it gives me comfort and helps ease the pain. Will you sit behind me and hold me? My back is killing me, I say to Gerald. Honey, it might be time I know, when I had you and your brothers my pain was all in my back, when it was time to push mom says, and it's nothing like giving me an instant heart attack, I don't know how to be a mom but I will learn alongside Gerald. I guess we will learn how to raise a pup together. My mom hurries out of the room to talk to the DR. Before long the DR is in the room, and she is checking me to see how far dilated I am. Feel it looks like it's time. You are now 10 centimeter dilated, and it's time to push. When you feel a contraction I need you to push and push hard, she says. I lay there holding Gerald's hand tightly until I feel a strong contraction coming on, and I grab his hand, even tighter, and I push with all I got screaming and yelling and pushing. Fuck this is more painful than I thought I just hope. I can pull through it with the amount of heartache and labor pains I am going through it's unreal. I push and push about one HR into pushing I hear a baby cry and all goes black. Gerald's POV. Keela is doing very well she is pushing as hard as she can given her current state. She is so strong. It's been about one HR and she is still going strong. She gives one big push and we hear faint cries. But Keela goes limp. I am unsure what is going on. DR, what's wrong with her? What is going on? Help her, I shout, I don't know what is going. But I can't handle losing her, I know. She is going through a lot. But the pup and I both need her. The nurse takes me out of the room so they can work on her and find out what is going on with her. And I am pacing the halls, trying not to lose my shit. It's been three hours and I still know nothing this is unreal. 
I can't. Wait no more I head to a room and barge in. I want to know what's going on with my mate, and I want to know now. I shout to them. Well, Alpha, it seems that we had to perform emergency surgery because she had a pup stuck in her pelvis, and the cord was twisted and wrapped around its neck, arms, and body. Both mom and baby are fine, but seems like she passed out due to the pain she is going through. Congrats, Dad, you're not only the father to one pup, but two, you have a son and daughter, the DR says. What one was born first, I ask out of curiosity. Your son was born first, your daughter got stuck. And I had to surgically remove her, DR says. That's awesome, we thought all along, that we were only having one pup. But turns out to be twins, one boy and one girl. I read the name tags on their cribs. Baby girl. So LBS Aussie. Baby boy. Who LBS Aussie. How great I got two very healthy pups, given they were born a bit early, but they are both very healthy, and they and my mate are all right. I sat next to Keela and I rub her face and kiss her on the cheek. You did so good, Keela. I am so proud of you, baby, I say in her ear. Yes, I know she is out right now, but I am sure she can hear me. It takes about two hours for her to wake up. The pup, is he okay? Keela asks with a worried look on her face. Well, yes, the pups are okay, I say, unsure how to tell her of what all happened. Why is there two cribs in here? She asks. Because it turns out we have two pups, I say. Two pups, they said. There was only one pup in all the scans. I had done, she says, confused, I help her sit up. I explain all that happened and how we have not just one pup, but two, and they are both very healthy given that they were early, and they are content babies. Can we hold them, she asks with excitement all over her face. I walk over and I scoop up our son, and I walk over to her, and gently hand her our son. She looks at him in all awe. Uh, I walk over and scoop up our little girl, and I hold her and rub her little hand. She is absolutely adorable, she looks just like her mother perfect. I take our daughter over by Keela, so she can see our little princess. She just smiles in all awe. Uh, Gosh they are perfect, she says. Half POV. I now know the plans they have been working on. The drugs they have been giving me are wearing of and I now know that they are planning to attack Keela and capture her because they want her alive and they want her for her own selfish needs. Addie has been working with the Rouges that plan to take all the women and children, but they are really wanting Keela and our pups because they are to Posse's powers and abilities after she delivers the pups. Something is telling me that she is giving birth to our pup, but the others are saying Keela was to have two pups, one boy and one girl, but she won't know about the other until she gives birth, and the birth will be hard and wear her out and take a lot out of her body. I don't know how I will keep away from Keela, but I do know that they are planning to attack in the near future. And now that the pup, or pups, have been born, they can take action sooner. Every passing day is becoming harder and harder to pretend that I am in love with Addie, and I am still under her spell. Addie was never Keela's mate, she used a spell on Keela to make it seem like she was her mate. But then Addie used me as her toy and drugged me to leave because she wanted to hurt Keela by making her lose her mate. I guess Addie's mate was a rouge and Keela killed him when he attacked her pack a couple years back, and that is why she is now on a mission to take down Keela and destroy her any way she can. I just want to go home to my mate, but I don't want to leave before I have more information. Where are you going? Addie asks me. 
Just for a walk I need to let my wolf out, and let him stretch his legs I say, as I walk over to Addie, and kiss her head, even though, it kills me to touch her. I walk out of our room and head outside, and I run as fast, as I can and get as far away as I can. I pull the cell phone I stole out and I call Kaylee's. Kaylee's I know I am the last person, you want to talk to but I need to tell you what's going on, and you have to keep it from Keela right now I say. You damn near killed your mate by leaving and the shit you said. Not only that but you made her deliver early, and put her through a lot, of unneeded stress. You could have killed my sister he says, and I can tell he is mad, and I don't blame him at all. Yes I know and I also heard there was a second pup, and they are part of a prophecy, and they will have rare and unique powers. Remember the group of people taking women and children well that is where I am and we are only about two hours from you they are planning to attack. Soon they have plans to use Keela to make all the pups. They have stolen have the same powers that Keela and the pups have they also want Keela to be used as their leader. But she will have to be put under a spell. They also drugged me to say the stuff I did and that is why I left. It was not me I was under the spell of Addie. She has been using me, and she was never Keela's mate. She used a spell on her to make Keela think she was her mate, and I know this all sound a little crazy and half as explained. But I have to hurry before they find me I say. Well, if this is true, I need more intel, and you will have to stay to gather it so we know when they plan to attack. I will fill in Alpha Gerald, because if I don't, he will kill me, because he is now very protective over Keela and the pups, and yes there are two pups, and they are all doing well now, but the pups are small, but healthy now get back before they become suspicious of you being gone Kaylee says, and the line goes dead. He hung up on me I destroy the phone and bury it so they won't find it I then head back to the house and back to Addie's side before she grows suspicious. Gerald's POV Kaylee's just came to me and told me that Maverick was taken against his will and they are using him to hurt Keela and they plan to attack soon since the pups are born. There is so much info, but I am catching on to it fastly. Keela and my pups are in danger, and that's all I need to know to listen and trust that Mav is being honest, and I sure hope he is be case. I will die to protect Keela and the pups. Addie will also be banned from our pack forever, and she will have a death sentence. If I shall ever see her again, she tricked my mate into thinking she was her mate as well and she has now put my mate in danger, and I won't have that. Today Keela and the pups will be heading home, and that's honestly a bit better, because we then can have guards outside the doors of both the nursery and our room, and also have guards hidden in each room, to ensure the safety of my mate and pups. Gerald, are you ready to go home Keela? asks as she pops her head out of the door. Yes, babe, let me help you gather everything, and we will head home. I say, as I walk into the room, and I help her gather her things, and I carry both of the pups, and she carries her little bag. We head towards the house, but once we are inside the house, I am a little annoyed at what I see. They seriously planned us a surprise baby shower that we didn't want or need since all that is going on. But Keela looks happy, so I will just go with it for now. I am sure it was all Keela's mom's idea be case. She just loves babies. I jet force a smile, even though right now is not the right time to be having a party, but we will just go with it. Everyone is touching and loving on the pups and taking them out of my arms, and I am not sure if I like this or not, but Keela seems okay 
with it so I am all right with it I guess as well. Kill a POV. It's been a long couple weeks my pups are stronger and stronger by the day, and my heart still aches for my beloved Maverick to come back to me, even though he betrayed me when he left and he forced me to go into labor early. Gerald has been more than amazing, and he has been a great father. Every time I look at him, and him being a great dad, I melt into a million pieces. Life is great, but my heart still mourns for my maverick, and I just wish I would wake up from the nightmare called my life. I am currently rocking the pups while I am feeding them. They are absolutely great. We named our boy Bo and our little girl Paisley. The names are perfect and they suit my babies well. I tend to get lost in Bo's eyes because he has Maverick's eyes and Paisley has Gerald's eyes. I have learned my pups are part of a tale we were told as kids. A rare she-wolf will carry a pup from one man and another pup from another man. Both shall be her mates and she will only know of one pup until she delivers she isle go through a terrible heartbreak, and she will be forced into labor early, and she will almost lose her life before she delivers two tiny healthy pups. The pups will grow fast and they will save their family, and save all our kind they will make us stronger and undefeated. We will end the war that is within us and make us L1 once more. The powers my pups and I have is rare, and there is no others like us we can float, fly, we are bigger, stronger and faster than any other we also can move plants kill with powers and control. All others that's just a few of the greatness we will have. I hate the powers we have I hate to risk my pups youth and their WEL being. I hope my pups can live a normal life without worry, but I don't feel that's an option for us currently. Hey baby you feeling better Gerald asks as he pulls me away from my thoughts. Yes I am just wishing things were different I say honestly. As well I am glad and I know so am I baby I am so sorry Gerald says. Gerald's POV. I wish I could help Keela it's hard on me to see her hurting and to see her miserable. She is being a damn good mother through all the hurt and pain. She is amazing at masking her pain while she cares for the pups, although we all can sense her pain, but she does mask it well. I wish I could take all her pain and hurt away, but unfortunately, I can't. But I can distract her from it, and that is why I have planned a nice date for her the pups and I. It is also so hidden cameras can be placed throughout the house, and also sensors that have facial recognition, so we know if we have anyone that doesn't belong within our homes or our territory. We are making it safer for the pups and my mate without alarming them and bringing more worry to Keela. Addie is still planning on attacking very soon and Maverick updates us as often as he can and gives us as much information as he can. Addie wants my mate, all because hers was killed by my mate, and I refuse to lose my mate. Addie's mate was a rouge, and he was attacking my mate. She had to defend herself, and Keela would have never harmed him if he would have left her alone, but since he came after her first, she had to defend herself and I will never hold her responsible for defending herself. The more information we get the better of we feel all I know is within the next week they plan on attacking and taking down the pack to take Keela and my pups and I refuse to allow that to happen. Keela I got a surprise for you and the pups tonight I say. Ass I don't feel like it, but that sounds amazing she says. We will leave in one HR I say as I kiss her head. I know she doesn't feel like doing anything, but I have to get her out of this house to make sure safety measures can be taken.
I head for the shower, and I grab a fast shower, and I jump out, and dry of wrapping a towel around me heading for our closet. I grab a nice blue dress shirt and a pair of dark faded wash blue jeans and I throw on a pair of socks and my white Nike shoes and I head back into the bedroom where Keela is standing there with lust in her eyes and hurt. I have no idea what has come over her for the past couple weeks. She hasn't wanted me in any way. She stalks slowly over to me without saying a word and she just pushes me back towards the wall, and I allow her to continue to push me back until my back is against the wall. She then kisses me with pure passion, and I return the kiss. I am needy I need her, and want her she takes of my shirt, and and unbuttons my pants, letting them drop to the floor. She then kisses my collarbone, and works her way slowly to my neck, where she bubbles, and sucks in my sweet spot, and I lose it I kick my shoes, of and allow my pants to fall off my ankles, I pick her into my arms, and I take her to the bed, and I lay her on the bed, I straddle her gently, and I take off her shirt, and her shorts, I take in her sexy figure, and kiss her chest, as I unbuckle her bra, and take it of her delicate body, I take my time to kiss, and massage her breasts, making moans escape her lips. I continue my assault and keep on kissing, and making love to her body, not missing an inch. I have her body begging for me, and I can't take it any more. I align myself at her pussy, and I slide it in and she screams in pleasure. I fuck her harder and faster making her claw open my back and scream hardcore. She is begging me for more and I make sure to please her well and give her everything she needs. Maverick POV We are getting closer and closer to knowing exactly what is going on and it is now just a matter of time before we can stop them from harming my mate. There is a lot I need to tell them about new information. I found out. They want to make Keela a breeder and use her to create powerful pups. They are planning on selling her to alphas to bring powerful offspring. They plan to run tests and try to make her powers even more powerful. They are planning a full-out war. All this information is running through New York head and I just can't process it all I am trying to pretend to be in love with Addie even though I want to choke her, but I can't draw attention to myself. Addie has been watching me closely. She knows I know a lot of information, but I think my cover is safe, and she doesn't suspect anything as of now. I will admit that I can't stand having to touch her body or have sex with her, because honestly her touch makes me want to throw up and I crave to touch my mate, and kiss my mate, and meet my pups. I heard they are doing well, and they are growing strong, but I haven't even got to kiss my pups, or hold them, or love on them yet man, I am missing so much and it kills me, but I know I need to do this, to ensure the safety of my mate and pups. I just pray it all ends soon, and I can go home, where I belong and explain everything to Keela. I just hope she is doing well. Addie's POV Maverick is making me suspicious. He hates me touching him while kissing him. I know the drugs are out of his system, but he still loves me. I can feel it maybe it's the mate bond between him and that bitch. I will just have to try harder and impress him. I need to prove to him that he doesn't need that whore anyway. What he needs is me and me alone. Maverick is a great man, far too great for the whore. He once had she didn't know his value. She thought she needed many mates, and she didn't want to share. I feel no remorse for the damage. I brought upon her she deserves it all. My eyes have been locked on Maverick for years. 
and she walks in and steals him from me, like it's nothing one dick, must not be enough for that loose whore. I heard she had some pretty powerful pups, I will make sure I slaughter them right in front of her, make her suffer the loss of not only her mates, but also her beloved pups. Hurting her will be the greatest feeling in the world, but the hell she will go through will make it even better. The plans we have for her will make her wish she was dead. In time, whore, you shall see your future, I say to myself. Two days and she will meet her fate. I can't wait. Maverick has no idea we plan to attack, so suddenly, and soon, but I am planning on telling him tonight. But first, I need to shop for a very sexy and slutty outfit to impress him. I have been missing his touch and the way he forcefully touches my body. He is far from gentle, but I love it because it's almost like he is forcing me and for some reason to or drives me wild. I guess I might be a little crazy hum. Oh well you only live once. I pull my thoughts together as I head out the door and downtown to a little store called Lion's Den, yes I am sure you guessed it, it's a sex shop, but they also sell junk stuff and sexy outfits. I walk in, and I see this very sexy red, and black leather outfit, it's very sexy, and very dirty, but I love it, I grab one in my size, and I continue to look around, I see lots of toys, and I can't help but grab a few I need to find a way for Maverick to want me like he used to. I need him to love me and fuck me like I am the best in the world. I need his touch. There is bottle of pills and I read it. They are called rock hard. They are like Viagra. But for wolves I grab a bottle. And now I know for so. He will want me in all the right ways. I grab a gag blindfold whips response, and I head to the checkout. The man checks me out, and once I pay, I am on my way back to the house to unpack everything and get a shower and change before Maverick gets home. Maverick POV. I got stuck training others to fight. They have been training extra hard lately, and I am sure it's because they are planning to attack my mate sooner. Rather than later, I head to the house, where Addy is I am so dreading going in that house. I walk to the front door and take a deep breath, and I walk through the door. All the lights are turned down low, with candles lit throughout the house. They are leading towards the bedroom. I follow the candle path, and I open the bedroom door. And there sprawled out on the bed is Addie trying to be sexy. The outfit is nice, but it would only look good on my mate, not on her. I hate fucking her, and I try to hurt her, so she won't want it. But nothing works. She likes everything. I won't lie, she makes me sick. I fake a smile. Don't you look good? I say through gritted teeth as my stomach turns. I walk over to her, and she hands me a little orange pill and tells me to take it. Take it, baby, it's like Viagra, but for wolves, she says. I wish it would make me forget her, but I take it knowing I have no other options. But to take it, she is making me sick. I hurry and swallow it, and within minutes, I am rock hard, and now I need my mate for a release. But I get trash. Instead of my mate, I flip Addie over so she is in wolf style. So I can't see her face. I picture Keela's face hard. And I fuck Daddy hard and forcefully. But Keela's face keeps fading. And I can't seem to get a fuck. I need my mate. My assault goes on for a few hours with no end in sight. Who's what baby within the next couple days, that whore will get what she deserves, Addie says, and I can't stop the growl that escapes my mouth. I hurry and try to fix it. Good, but I don't want you to fight or get hurt baby, I say, 
but I really want to rip her head off for threatening my mate. I will kill this bitch. Very soon, I will not tolerate her threatening my mate, or my pups, or anyone I cherish. I will kill them all if it's the last thing I do as long as everyone is safe, that's all that matters. Now, I got to find a way to warn them, all with our Angoni, knowing this will be fun a kill us POV. It's been weeks since Maverick betrayed my love, and I still can't get him of my mind. I wish this stupid mate bond would help me forget him and let me breathe, but instead I sit here, so in love with him and mourning over the loss of his love and touch. I need to clear my head. I get up and take a short walk to get my mind back on track. I walk about a mile into the woods to my favorite spot and set on a downed tree that fell during a storm. The sight I see it's truly amazing lots of sun shimmering through the trees and reflecting of the pond I am setting near. How can I love someone so much when all he has done has caused me hurt? But when he was good he was very good, and those are the times a hold near and dear to my heart. I lay back onto the tree, I am setting on and use it as a bed I close my eyes, and think about Maverick, and which things could be different with us. Kila you have to get up now. Kila I need you to run now. Kila wake up and run now a voice, keeps on yelling it sounds just like Mav. I open my eyes, and I see Maverick and a bunch of wolves running my way. I quickly collect my thoughts, and I shift and run as fast as I can back towards the pack house. Everyone we are under attack, they are quickly gaining on me. I am heading to the pack house, but I won't make it before they get me. I am at the southwest border, I say, and I keep running as fast as I can. I look back as I am running and I see Mav, trying to take down wolves, as he runs to keep on my tail. Why would he want to protect me, when he betrayed me? I am so confused and I feel tears filling my eyes, and running down to my snout. He is clouding my mind and I can't focus. Kila, we are on our way run, as fast as you can I hear Gerald say, through the mind link. I keep on running. Kila, I am trying to give you a safe clearing, but there is too many I need you to run faster. Mav says through the link. I try to run faster, but I am quickly losing my strength, and I am losing my momentum. But I will keep on pushing my body to run faster and faster. My muscles are burning and I am exhausted, I guess that's my fault, for spending too much time mourning Maverick when I should have been pushing myself harder to focus on training and to keep my mind clear and focused. Mav's POV. I finally get Keela to wake up and to run. I am relieved that she now has a head start and can get away from us one stride. At a time, I can only take on so many wolves and I need to keep her safe at all costs. I haven't been able to talk to anyone much to let them know all what was planned not that it mattered all too much since they attacked much sooner than planned. I think they knew their spell was no longer clouding my mind, and I was able to focus and think about saving my mate. Keela is a wonderful mother and a perfect mate, and I couldn't have asked for a better woman to cow my own, and my mate... She is truly more than I could have ever asked for. Now is my time to prove how much she means to me, and I will make sure I save her, and do right to her, and her pack. She has always been more than I could have ever asked for, and now it's my time to protect her. She is a true miracle, and I am thankful for her. I keep on running, pushing wolves back, and giving her space, to keep on running, she needs this time to keep focused and get back to the others before anyone can gain on her.
We are about a mile from the pack house, and another pack of wolves from the pack that took me comes and takes Kula down, and they are trying to restrain her, but she is fighting hard. Hurry, they are getting her, I shout through the link, and I keep pushing faster and harder to get to where Kila is fighting hard at. She is taking on wolves at once, and you can clearly see she is exhausted and needs a break, and I don't even know what to do to help her. There is no way we can take them all on, because behind me is wolves gaining on us as well. I get to her and take on wolves, and Kila, and I are quickly losing ground and losing strength. When I am about to lose, all hope I hear the howl that belongs to none other than Gerald, and I know the others are right behind him. I take a deep breath, and I rip apart the wolves on Kila to keep her safe. I take down the wolves. I can and I keep Kila safe. It doesn't take them all long to join in on the fight, and we all keep Kila safe and out of harm's way. We quickly get the fight under control and we are winning and doing good, and I know there is not any more wolves to be brought in. Pack up your wounded and leave my land now, or lose your life. You threaten my mate, I will take your life. I won't tolerate this absurd actions, but if you leave now, we will spare your life, but if you can't follow my command, I will not hesitate to kill you all. Gerald shouts loudly. They all quickly gather their wounded and they leave as fast as they have came. Mav, let's go, baby Addy says. You have a lot of nerve to take me against my will and separate me from my mate and my pups. Then you tried to harm my mate and make her a breeder and think I wouldn't protect my mate. I will not go with you. I don't want nothing to do with you. I never did. You think that spell actually worked on me? No, it didn't at all. I just wanted to ensure the safety of my pack and my mate. Now leave now, or I will kill you myself for the hell you have caused. I say to her. She hurried to leave and I can finally take a breath and relax a little. I know I have a lot of explaining to do to Kila and to regain her trust. But I know it will all be worth it because she has always been the one I wanted and needed in my life. Mav's POV We all make it back to the pack house, and we all head upstairs, as I know there is a lot to discuss. I need to come clean with her, we have been keeping it a secret all this time, to protect her, and to keep her heart from mourning me more than need by. I know this probably won't be too pleasant, and I know I have hurt her, and I don't even like to deal with the pain and hurt I have caused. Kila POV I guess there is a lot to talk about not only with my one mate, but with both of them, since they want to keep information from me. They have both hurt me, and I am not happy with either of them, and this is beyond annoying. Once we are in our room and the door is closed, I lose myself. What is going on here, and why would you keep it from me, Gerald, and Maverick, why would you hurt me this way? I am beyond pissed, I am about one second away from losing my cool, this will not be tolerated. I am your mate, and you keep stiff from me, and you let me get hurt, even more I shout on the verge of exploding. I don't know why my mates think they have to keep everything from me. I am not a fragile doll. I am not going to shatter. I can handle it. And I know it's not always easy, but they need to be more honest with me. They set me down and talked to me about what all happened and why I needed to not worry, as I already gave birth to the pups earlier than I needed to. They weren't ready to be born, and I didn't need the stress any more, but I didn't deserve to be lied to either. This has got to be a joke and not real. My mates were trying to protect me, but instead caused me more hurt and caused me to lose trust in them. I can't take this anymore. The back and forth is killing me. 
I get up and walk to the nursery to see my pups and how they are doing. I just need to get away and take a deep breath. They are so perfect, happy and healthy. They are growing like weeds. My pups are my happy place and a needed escape from my mates. I just can't handle all this at one time and I need time to process it. My heart is so full and I do forgive him because I know he was trying to keep me safe, but it still hurts a bit and is causing me some pain. Weeks later, these past few weeks have been great and I couldn't ask for a happier family. Mav is doing great with all the pups and he and Gerald are getting along well. We have all been much closer and shall we talk about the sex life? Oh my gosh, it's beyond amazing. I forgot how talented they were together. I am beyond happy and glad my heart is complete once again. Babe come quick Gerald yells from our room, and I hurry to our room. What is it I say as I barge into the room panting out of breath? I look up to see why noon is answering me, but it is all soon realized as to why it's silent both maverick, and Gerald are laying on the bed naked and standing at full attention. My mouth is instantly watering knowing that they are all mine, and they are going to stretch and fill me to the max I couldn't be any luckier to get the men I got. I slowly but very sexily take off my shirt and bra, slowly sliding down my pants and panties until I am standing completely naked. I am so horny my nipples are hard as a rock, and I have juices wetting my thighs. I hope other girls get to experience the life. I get to not only do I get pleased by two men, but I also get double the love and affection. I slowly walk towards them and stop about 15 feet from them, and I wink at them and run full speed into the bathroom, locking the door behind me. It won't take them long for them to realize that I am so going to drive them crazy and make them tear the door of the hinges to get what's theirs. Keels open this door baby Mav says. I say nothing and start running the bath water. Baby we will tear this door down. If you don't open the door, we will break it down. We can smell your arousal through the door now be a good little girl and open the door. So we can take care of you, GR says. I can't help but smile at them because they are right. I am going crazy and I do want them so bad, but I need to make them work for it. Let me get a bath because I am dirty and I need to clean myself before you both dirty me again. I tell them both. You best hurry because my wolf is fighting for control and it is taking all I got not to tear this door down, Mav says, in a very deep voice, and I know he is battling his wolf for control. My water finishes and I climb in moaning loudly at the contact of the water. Kila, you got to stop them sexy sounds now, or this door won't hold us back from getting what is ours, GR says. A guy can't handle this, I want them so bad. But I need to keep this going just a little longer. I slide my hand down my body and start rubbing my clit moaning loudly as the sensation is beyond satisfying. I keep pleasuring myself and before I know it I am being lifted out of the bathtub by two sets of very strong arms and before I know it I am being slammed onto the bed and my entire body is being kissed and pleasured extremely well I can't take this anymore please 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 I moan having a hard time finding my words I can't take it and I need more fucking less teasing but they seem to want revenge for me teasing them using my body against them. I will get them back for this. We need a new door for the bathroom, Jir whispers into my ear. A yes, I scream moan. I honestly care less about the door, and I just want more of them all over me, and I need them inside me now. You keep playing and I won't let you have any for a month, 
Now fuck me now, I say, and it doesn't take them long to comply. Before I know it both my holes are filled to the max, and I am screaming out in pure pleasure. They are smaking my body making me even more horny, and I am falling deeper and deeper into the love spell they are putting me in. I am completely hypnotized by them, and I want more and I need more they bring out the wild in me. I am moving my body back and forth with them, as they tear up my body, I have tears streaming down my face of pure joy. The suspense is pure magic, and I can't take the pleasure, I need more I need it harder. Harder I moan as I thrust my body down onto them as hard and fast as I can. My whole body is weak and I know it won't be long until I am squirting all over my men. They know to take it hard as possible and to tear me up because I need them to take control of my body and show me exactly what I have been missing. I need to know they are in control and I need them to act like they own me. Ah uh, yes I moan. I am a few thrust away from losing myself. They keep up their assault and they pound me hard as hell, and I am squirting all over them. They lay me down and lick of all my juices. Once I am all cleaned up they switch positions and now Mav is fucking my as hard and G.E.R. is fucking my pussy full force. I am beyond happy to have both my men pleasing me the way I was supposed to be loved and please. They don't just brutally fuck me but they also make love to me and gently please me. Today is hardcore since I teased them and myself. So much now I need it hard and hard as I can get it. They fuck me for another hour or so before we all have our release and we are all limp and weak on the bed. Keep fucking me like this and it won't be long before we have more pups. That was pure magic. I love you both so very much, I tell them, as I close my very tired and weak eyes. We love you now rest my love and we will take it from here baby. Gior tells me, as he is pulling himself up to head to take a shower. They both will take good care of the pups, and they will take care of me. Mav carries me into the bath and gently washes my body, and then he dries me and takes me back to bed to tuck me into bed for a nap. I am so thankful that they are very helpful to me, and they love me enough to take some of the stress of of me. I close my eyes and drift of into a deep sleep. I am woken up hours later to the bed dipping, and I know it's my men climbing into bed with me, since I can smell them both. They both kiss my head and tell me they love me, before we all go back to bed. Kill us POV. It been around 14 years and life has been great my family has grown, and there is so much love. Mav and Gerald are both amazing fathers to all our kids. They have grown and matured a lot and they take family very serious. I am one happy mate. I couldn't have dreamed of having better men to tell mine. We have kept the pups a secret as much as we could but they are now almost 15 and the world is starting to find out about them. We tried to keep them hidden due to the special powers that they have good things can only be hidden so long before word spreads and more and more people find out about them. But now that the secret is out my pups don't have to hide as much anymore and I couldn't be any more happy that they can let their true colors shine through. Paisley is a strong loving girl. She has grown to be so bright and brave she sees the good in all. She can make time slow and make people forget. She can also make them freeze. She is about five foot six already. She has silver blonde hair with sliver blue eyes and her skin is pale. She makes all bow down to her by the way she carries herself. And the aura that she gives of naturally, she is a true leader that makes men fall a little too hard for her. 
Bo is bright, fun, and loving. He is very handsome, and makes all the girls he walks by droll and fall at his feet. He has the ability to become invisible, and let me let you that has been a treat. He has been sure to scare everyone, and to sneak into places. He also can see the future through people's eyes and their fate. He is able to heal others by touch, and once he meets his mate, they both will be healers, as he will share that power with her. According to the prophecy, my babies will be finding their mates at just 15 years old, due to the future of our kind, and they will face a fight that will be marked into history and change the future of our kind. I don't know how to feel about it. But I know they will be allergic. They have been training their whole life, and they know what the future holds for them. When they go on to have pups, they will be strong and also hold powers. This will be the new normal. Making wolves have special powers to protect us all. In the past years, we went on to have twelve other pups. They all have powers, but nothing major. Like Paisley and Bo, I am thankful that they get somewhat of a normal life. I wish all my pups did, but the goddess had other plans for them. Vixen, she can start fires. Flynn, he can swim so fast and stay underwater for extended times. Jax, he can move objects. Grace, she can float for shorter amounts of time. Rachel. She can heal herself fast, and will be able to heal her mate or close family. Flower, she can make things grow or bring plants back to life. Hugh and Brax can see lies through eyes of the liar. Belle and Kate can control water. Logan and Miley can run fast. All my pups have unique powers, and they are all strong, and they have complete control over their powers. There is only two weeks until my babies will turn 15, and we are planning a huge party, since they need to find their mates. My mates are not happy that their pups will be finding their mates at such a young age, and I don't like it either. But I am sure this is the same way my parents felt, and I know I can't stop it. So we must prepare and allow fate to take control. Paisley POV. There is only two short weeks before I will have to share my life with my mate, as I will turn fifteen, and I just hope he is good and will be good to me, and for my family to accept him and treat his the same as they would me. But I have my heart set on a boy named Harley. I grew up with him. And he was my first kiss, and my crush growing up. I know he feels the same way. We both agreed that we would wait until I was fifteen to see if we were fated mates, and not to get too close to each other in case we are not mates, so none of us get hurt. Moon goddess, just make him my mate. I need to have him in my life. I know he will treat me right. And love me like no other, but I also know there is a prophecy that must be followed, and I must do as I need to so we can ensure the safety and well-being of our kind. I am scared to find my mate not knowing who he is is really eating me alive, and I don't know if we will even fall in love. I got my heart set on Harley, but my gut is telling me that he will never be mine. And I need to give up on that hope. I guess I will wait and see. I pull myself up and head into the shower. I shower, and I hurry to get ready for school. I grab a pair of tight skinny jeans and a crop top shirt, along with baby pink matching bra and panties. They look good on me. I also slide on a pair of white Nikes. I grab my bag and head down the step. And head to the car for our guards to drive us to school. The ride was short, and I got lost looking out at all the passing by trees and forests until the school comes into my view. I dread this school. Everyone keeps talking about in two weeks what shall happen. I am over it and tired of hearing 
about it I just don't want to deal with this anymore. I want to put it all behind me. I walk into the school, and to my locker I put my stuff into my locker and pull out the books. I will need for the next few classes. I skipped breakfast today, because I was running late, so I am already ready for lunch and the end of the day. I walk towards my first class. Keep in mind that our school is home to multiple werewolf packs, and starting next week, we will also have vampires. I must say I am excited for them to arrive in our school. It's something my parents have been working on for years, and it's finally coming to the light. They wanted the treaty with the vampires, and finally we have one. I am excited. I just hope they are nice. Hardly anyone knows at this time that they will be coming next week. They are all also moving near our castle, and they will be joining us for our party in a couple weeks. Bo's POV. I am so over this damn school and tired of all these women throwing themselves at me. I am not interested in any of them. There is only one I am looking for and that is my mate none of these girls will ever catch my eye as i will only ever need my mate the one the moon goddess has given to me two weeks and i will have my missing piece and my one true love i can't wait for that day to come i know she will be worth the wait school is my least favorite thing about growing up i can't stand having to spend eight hours in this place most of it is filled with girls falling at my feet, like lost puppies, and no matter how much I tell them I am not interested, they don't seem to get it through their heads. Some of my good friends are Jazz, Fred, Matt, Mike, Ty, Sam, and Chris. None of them have mates since it's not common to have a mate before 18 but my sister, and I are the lucky ones that we don't have to wait too long to get our mates. I just hope she can see through all the bullshit, and she will love me for me. I also hope once I find my forever that these other girls leave me alone and stop throwing themselves at me as I don't like it, and I know my mate won't either. Big changes are coming to the school of where Holler High we are getting vampires in a week. And we are also going to be having werebears, werewitches, and werefairies within the next couple weeks. I am interested to see how this will go since we are a leakin and werewolf school. Only my parents have worked hard to expand the school and to grow treaties with others to ensure all of our safety and to increase our numbers. It's not about keeping us safe, it's about keep all of our kind safe and at peace, with no more fighting and meaningless killings wars that could have been avoided. I know this is what the moon goddess would want and we are fulfilling her wishes. My sister is super excited about the vampires. I don't even know if she paid attention after she heard vampires to know that a lot more will be coming as well. Finally this day is over with and I can go home and relax and hang out with my friends. Week later. Paisley's POV. Today is the big day that the vampires will come to join our school and I couldn't be any more happy. We have helped them build their homes and castle since the king of vampires is the one who moved and also I guess there are other that are also moving and we are working on their castles, as well the king of werebears, the king of werewitch, the king of werefairies, will also all be joining us nearby, and their packs will be coming to our school. Our school has got a whole lot bigger, and I am excited to see new faces and meet and make new friends. I hurry in the shower, and I rush to my closet, and I grab a stunning baby blue dress, that goes just above my knees, and I grab a pair of dress sandals, and I pick out a blue bra and panty set. I brush my hair, too, and let it flow into natural silver blonde curls. I put in light makeup, 
and I rush down the steps and grab a couple cereal bars as I hurry out the door and into the car. Woe for once I beat Bo to the car and all the others. Bo, me, and other high school kids all travel together, and the younger ones go in another car. My parents try to keep us together by age, so all our age ride in quite few cars older ones drive, and younger ones ride in different cars. Once we are all in the cars, and we are heading to school, I can't focus, and I can't wait to make it to the shul, now my wolf is excited as well. Gemma what are you excited for I ask. Paisley, you will soon know but just be patient she says in my head. A gem is always vivid when she answers me about something is exciting. She likes me to wait and find out everything, and I hate waiting she does it all the time to me, and it's annoying honestly. Once we are at school I jump out of the car, and I fix myself before walking towards the school. I already see many new faces, there is a very beautiful girl, who looks identical to me, she is wearing a light purple dress. I see her looking at me curiously, as I am her I approach her. Whoa well, you look just like me I say surprised. This is crazy, she says. Yes it is, my name is Paisley, what is your name? I ask her. Nice to meet you. My name is Kinsley, she says looking surprised. This girl not only looks just like me, but she also has a name, very close to mine this is weird. We kept talking and realized we have everything in common. We both decided to trick our parents her, and I are going to change clothes, and she is going to my house, and I am going to her house, and we are going to see the way each other lives. Kinsley remember my room is on the third floor, and it's the fourth door, to your right ass I say. I won't forget Paisley, don't forget where my room is she says. I won't third floor to the left sixth door I say. I head to the car waiting for her, and she heads with my brother to the car. I climb in the car and I stay quiet, and don't say much since I don't know everyone's names at this time but I am learning a lot just from them talking. Kinsley is the king and queen's daughter. She is the youngest. She has a brother that is 19 and one that is 22 and 27. I am excited to meet them. All since none of them are mated. I guess it's hard to find your mate when you are a vampire and it's even rarer to find her before your 30 inch human years in vampire years. Once we pull up to a huge beautiful castle, I know this is my home for the night. I head into the house, pulling out Kinsley's phone, and messaging her. Your home is beautiful, I text her. So is yours and your brother is a sight to see, she says, and I chuckle. Does anyone notice you're not me, I ask her. Nope, none yet you. She says. Nope, all good here, I say. I put her phone back into my pocket, and once the door is open I see a bunch of people mocking. Throughout the castle it's huge, and so pretty it almost reminds me of home. I'm home I am going to my room, to do my homework I say. Okay sweetie, I will come get you when dinner is done a woman says, that I know is Kinsley's mom, by the description. Thanks mom, I say heading up the steps. I walk up the steps and I look down at Kinsley's phone to see the time, and just as I do that I walk into a wall on the steps. I lose my balance and start to fall back as I am grabbed by strong arms. I look up to see a man, about 24 looking at me with a smile. Oh thank you, I say as I chuckle. Any time, he says as he stand me back up gently, letting go of my arms, with a curious look in his eyes. I walk past this man, and I head to my room for the night, and I open the door. But before I could even close it someone pushed their way into the room, right behind me, shutting the door fatly. 
Who are you? The man asks me. Kinsley, I say with a cautious look on my face. No, you are not my sister, he says. Yes, I am, I say, pulling my arms out of his grasp. You are not my sister now, what have you done with her? The man says, grabbing my arms again, shaking me gently. As a fine, but please you can't tell, anyone I say a little frightened. Talk now, he says. Okay, I say, looking down at my feet and playing, while I fidget my hands. Well, I don't know where to start, but I will just ramble everything that has happened today. I met your sister, and her, and I looked identical to one another, and we decided we would switch places, so we could see how each other lives, and to meet each other's families. So here, I am I say not looking up once and keeping my eyes on the floor and at my feet. The room is silent for a moment, and I can feel him move. Before I know it he gently pulls my face up and makes me look at him, and I can feel my legs weaken and my heart start to race. He touches my arm and face, and I feel sparks and bolts I jump and pull away. You can feel it too, he says. Yes, I say looking at my feet once again. I have no idea what is going on right now. But one thing I do know is that I really enjoy when he is touching me, and it makes me crave his touch more. What's your name, pup? he says. I look at him curiously paisley, I say, and hurry to look back down at my feet. Wow, you weren't kidding when you said it was almost identical to my sister's name. My name is Raven, he says, as he pulls my face up gently to look at him. His eyes are pure and loving, and I know he won't hurt me, but I can't, help, but fear him a little bit. I need to ensure my sister, is safe, I need you take Cal her, or take me to her, Raven says. Oi. I can call her, I say, as I grab out her phone, and I pull up my number, and I press FaceTime. It rings a few times before she pops on, and I can see her she is still in my room. Kinsley, I need to tell you that your brother has found out our trick, I say. What? She says loudly. Raven grabs the phone out of my hand. Kinsley, what were you girls thinking? He says. I just wanted to see the way she lives and what her kind are like, she says. That was stupid of you to do. But I am glad you did, he says. You're glad, she says, sounding confused. Well, because of your scheme, I have now met my mate. Raven says. Kinsley and I drop our mouths and she yells what? I won't tell mom and dad. But you must keep it on the low. For now that Paisley is my mate, as she is too young to feel it fully but she could feel the sparks, as I could as well and that was how I knew it was not you, and it was someone that was pretending to be you. He says, I'm your mate, how can you be so sure I am not even fifteen yet, but once I turn fifteen, I will meet my mate I say rambling. When will you be fifteen and you're so young, he says sounding worried, and I am unsure if that is a bad or good thing. Five days we are having a huge party. I am sure your family has been invited, I say. Yes, we have been invited to yours and a male's birthday party, Raven says. That's my brother, and he too will be finding his mate. We hand up with Kinsley, and then him, and I sit on the bed, and we talk. I learn that he is 22, will be 23 inch three months, September, Mine is July 12th, and it's only five days away. I am scared since my mate I is 22 and I am only 15 that might cause issues for us both since we are supposed to be fully mated within the next two years before the war is supposed to begin. Every time he touches me, I can feel sparks, and they are growing stronger and stronger as time passes I am sure he is my mate, as he says, because what reason does he have to lie to me, and how else would he have known that I wasn't his sister, since we looked identical?
Time flew by and before I knew it there was a knock on the door. Coming I say. Dinner is ready come and eat mother says. On my way I say, as I get up from the bed, and Raven follows me down to eat. We walk into the huge dining room, and he leads me to a seat next to him. As we walk down the table to our seats a man smacks my ass and I yell. H I say. I hurry and turn and glare at this man. You will keep your filthy hands to yourself I say, as I grab him by his throat. Raven smirks, and you can tell he is angry and wants to tear him to pieces, but I place my hand on his arm. I don't know why I knew it would work, but I see my parents do it so often to calm one another down. I know that it worked he soon calmed down and his eyes went back to normal again, and we went to our seats. Who was that I ask whispering to Raven? Seth, he has always had a crush on my sister, and he tries this once a week, and she always freaks out on him, as well so it was to no surprise, that you did as well he whispers back to me, yummy we are having, spaghetti and garlic toast with a large option of side salads, and toppings, I am so happy it's my favorite food, and I am happy to be having it tonight. We finish eating dinner, and we head back upstairs, to my room it's now around 8 p.m., and I still have work to do as he made it impossible for me to do my school work. I go to shut the door, after saying good night, but Raven stops the door. Can I stay with you tonight? I just found you, and I don't to let you go he asks giving me puppy dog eyes. Fine, but you must sit and be quiet. While I do my school work I say smiling. Deal, he says as he hurries into my room, and I close the door, I hurry, and get my work all done. Then I grab a pair of short shorts, and a tank top PJ set, and I head into the shower, and I get all cleaned, and dressed. I didn't want to wear any bra, or panties, as I was going to bed as it's now 10 p.m., and I have to get up at 5 a.m. I walk into my room for the night, and I see Raven's mouth drop. He looks like he will droll over the sight, he sees. What I say sweetly to him knowing that I must be teasing him as this outfit is very short and not appropriate, but oh well. You make it hard to resist you is all he says, and I walk towards him, and he pulls me onto his lap, gently kissing my lips, as if I am fragile. I kiss him back, and he gently stands up with me in his arms, and he pulls the covers back laying me on the bed, and my shirt flis up showing my stomach and the bottom of my breast. His eyes darken as I hurry to cover myself up knowing that it will be hard for him to keep control if I don't hurry as I am not ready yet. I slide over and make room for him, and he climbs into bed with me covering us both up, and he places his arm over me pulling me close to him holding me tight as we both fall asleep. Kinsley POV I just found out that my brother Raven is actually Paisley's mate this can't be happening to us our cover was almost blown. I am in my room, or should I say Paisley's room currently? Knock knock. Come in I say, and I hear the door open, and close, but no one says anything I turn to look, and I see Bo walk into the room. Hey I am just finishing up my work, what do you need I ask? But before I say anything he comes stalking over to me looking at me confused. Paisley this is all so wrong. I am your brother why is this happening to me to us we are family, he is rambling. Bo woo slow down what are you talking about I ask. You're my mate I can smell that you're my mate he says and I gasp. He reaches slowly touching my arm and I to feel the tingles and I jump back in shock since I am only 15 and won't be 16 till next year and it's way too early for me to find my mate. Why would she trick us this way? 
You're my sister, I will have to refuse you, I can't mate, and mark my sister, and this prophecy will all be for nothing, and our worlds will never get the peace we so much deserve. Why would this be happening to us? He says clearly getting upset. Oh wait, before you do anything you might regret listen to me, as I am not Paisley, I am actually Kinsley. Your sister and I look identical and we switched places she is at my home, and I am well here I say. My sister is where he says clearly getting upset. I am nervous I look at my feet. She is at the Vampire King's castle my father's house, where she too has met her mate it's my brother, we agreed to keep it on the low, so new own knows, and we can switch still so she can see him no one knows, and tomorrow, I will have you meet with your sister, and we can all discuss this, but please we got to keep this on the low, if you still want to see me right now, as Raven is not ready to explain it all to my parents yet, and he wants to wait until she turns 15 as he is 22 and there is a huge diff. Rents, but I know him and he will wait for her until she is ready. I ramble on. Oh Kinsley this is a joke, or a dream right? But I am glad you're not my sister. Do you have any proof to show me that you are not her he adds. Yes, I have a few pictures on her phone of both of us at school today, and a map she drew of this land, and all the houses I say, as I pull out her phone, and I show him them all, and he looks amused. My sister has a birthmark on her back right above her. But can I please see your back, he asks, and I chuckle, because I don't have this mark. I turn and pull my shirt up, and I feel him rubbing my back above my, but where her mark would be. Wow, you really are not her. This is crazy and you're mated to me, and she is mated to your brother. What a crazy fate. We all have this should be interesting. I am excited for us all to grow together, and to bring our families together, he says. Yes, I am glad I found you since I am only fifteen and it's rare for us vampires to find our mate before we are thirty, or in our years, and Raven is twenty-two and he found his mate, as well this is amazing, and I am excited. I didn't have to wait fifteen years to find you, I says rambling on. This is all so unreal, and I feel like this is a dream it's so odd, that Paisley is mated to my brother, and I am mated to her brother, and we both look alike it's almost as if it's to hide who she is and to make it harder for anyone to take her. Why maybe I am unsure, but all I know is that I need to talk to her and let her know about it all. Knock knock. Coming I say. Dinner is done, have you seen Bo Mom asked. Yes, he is in here, helping me on my essay I say, thinking fast on my toes. Okay well Bo come down and eat then you guys can finish your essay mom says. Okay we both say as she walks back down the stairs. Paisley, usually sits across from me, but you my dear, are going to sit right next to me Bo says, as he leads me out of my room and down the steps, we walk into a huge dining room, that is already filling up with many many people, I won't lie I am a tad bit nervous. We walk on the same side of the table, sitting down side by side, and once I scoot in Bo places his hand, under the table onto my thigh, to help me calm down, and it works, all my worries seem to wash away Jut by his touch. I have never wanted to be touched so bad by someone in my life. I am so glad I got such a kind, caring and loving man like him. I just hope he will be patient and understanding with me. We hurry and eat dinner, and then I head up to my room, and Bo is right behind me, he blew of his friends, saying he had to help me with my essay for school, and they would hang out at a later time. 
Bo and I also decided to wait until his and Paisley's birthday to come forward and show are we are mates to our families. I know my family, and there will all be there along with a bunch of others. It's only five days and we need to figure out what we are doing and how we will tell everyone. I am scared and nervous, as I know it's rare that I will find my mate as young, as I did it's almost never heard of Raven, finding his mate, is also almost never heard of as it usually is thirty or later, but as I have been told Paisley and Bo are a part of a prophecy, and I guess Raven, and I will also be a part of it along with them. But might I tell you that I am so lucky not only did I find my mate fifteen years before most, but I also go lucky and got a very attractive and handsome man. He must be one of the most handsome men I have ever seen before in my life. Bo, I need to get a shower before bed. I need to see what your sister has that I will wear to bed, before I grab a shower I say, as I walk into her closet, and I find a cute pair of red silky shorts, and a matching tank top, they are short, but they are cute PGS, I then walk into the bathroom, and get my shower, and then I dry of and dress fast, as I cannot wanting to keep Bo waiting too long for me. I walk out of the bathroom, and Bo is like drilling over what he sees, and I can't help but blush and know that he likes what he sees. Dang you keep that up and I won't be able to keep my paws of a view, he says. I chuckle walking closer to the bed. It's only PJS I say as I smile at him. But those PJS are making me fight for control you my mate, are playing a dangerous game, he says. I laugh as I push him onto the bed and climb onto his lap. I whisper into his ear. I like living dangerously as I kiss his neck. You my mate are going to make me lose it, he says, as he lays me onto the bed. I might like it, I say as I chuckle at him. Kinsley, do you mind if I stay with you tonight? Just make sure you lock the door. If you don't mind, I just found you and I am not ready to let you go yet, he rambles on, and I can't help but chuckle. Okay, but no more than sleeping we got a busy day tomorrow at school, I say. Okay, he says, and I get up and walk over to lock the door, and I walk back to the bed climbing in beside Bo, and I lay down, and he is fast to lay his arm over me, pulling me tight, against his shirtless body, and the tingles are driving me crazy, but also making me feel so safe and secure. It doesn't take me long for my eyes to get heavy and for me to fall asleep. The next morning. Paisley's POV. A guy hate mornings, when I wake up Raven, is gone. But on the pillow is a note. I wipe my eyes sitting up in bed, and I pull the note of the pillow. My sweet Paisley is wrote on the front. I open the letter. Paisley. I wish I could be there when you awake. But in order to keep you a secret, I must get to the training fields. But don't worry, I will be watching over you to ensure you're safe, and I will see you tonight, as I will be picking you up from school. I think it's a good idea that we all go to dinner and discuss what's next until you have your party in four days I can't wait for the world to know that I got the most precious and beautiful mate in the world you my dear have made me the happiest man alive. Much love Raven. Also I your number into my phone and I will text you throughout the day. If you need anything please cackle or text me and I will be there. Oh he is so sweet, I couldn't get any luckier this man, is the absolute best, and he makes my heart melt man, I already love him, so very much. I pull myself out of bed, brushing my hair, and braiding it I head into the closet, and I pull out a pair of short jean shorts, along with a red crop top sandals man. 
I get a strapless bra and a red lace thong and put it on and rush down the steps to grab breakfast and get to school before I am late today is Tuesday and Saturday is our party. Once I am in the dining hall, I see Raven and my heart starts to beat faster and I can't control my emotions. I smile bright at him and wink at him. He pulls out his phone causing me to frown a bit. My phone Kinsley's phone dings and I pull it out. As sexy as you look you can't wear this to school. Now that we met I can feel your emotions. As you can feel mine, I can tell you feel sad. But I need you to change babe, he says. I text him back. I am running late. I am wearing this. I will be okay and no one will touch me or anything I reply. Fine. But I am taking you to school, and I will be picking you up, he replies. I look at him and smile, and nod my head his way. He is staring at me, intensely, and I can't, help, but wish I could just tear his clothes of and have him now. I don't know what has gotten into me, but I do know that I want him so bad, and I need him now. But I need to wait until I am at least 15, and I also need to wait until we inform our parents of our new discovery. I know what you all are thinking, that I am too young to be thinking about mating. But I am 15, and it's common when we meet our mates to mate with them fast, because it's our nature, and the age gap doesn't matter with our kinds as it is common that there is years difference as us women seem to mature a lot faster than men and most wolves don't find their mates until they are 18 or older. Other of our kind and other supernatural often mate as soon as their mates are found. But given my age, he wants to wait until I am ready, and I agree with him for the most part but I find it hard to keep my hands off of him. Ready Raven asks me, and I nod my head. We walk out to his car, it's a sports type car. All black with red seats, and black interior, it's very nice. I get in and he closes my door, and I buckle up. Ask you my mate are being very naughty, and you're going to make me lose my control, he says to me. I laugh at him, because I want to make him lose she control, because I need to know he wants me as much as I want him. I want the natural nature to take place, I don't want to stop it, or speed it up, too much I just want to tease him in the meantime, but maybe soon I will be ready, and I will give him my all. Good things happen to those who wait I say, as I reach over and place my hand, onto his muscular thigh. He smiles and his eyes darken as I rub it higher and higher towards his dick. I know I am playing with fire, but I happen to like the flames. Raven is a tall six foot six, or maybe taller. He has jet black hair and pale skin. He is very muscular and very, very strong. He has a body to die for and that could make girls Go crazy, I am sure. He makes unmated wolves. Wet jut by she smile. But I will kill anyone who looks at him wrong. Raven reaches over and holds my upper thigh, rubbing dangerously close to my pussy. And I can't help getting wet. And needing more, I grab his hand, sliding it up. He rubs over my pussy. And I can't hold back the moan that escapes my lips. I know I am playing with fire, but the feeling this man is giving me is driving me crazy. His eyes turn very dark and I know he is fighting for control. I got to stop, or else I will lose complete control. And it's not the time or place for this as much as I would love to baby, he says, pulling his hand away from my thigh. I can see that he doesn't want to stop and the way... He is standing tall in his pants, shows that he wants it as much as I do, but I do agree with him that this is not the time or place, and we need to learn more about each other.
before we just jump into mating. His and my bond is strong, and we can talk through a mind link. Even though we are not mated, he can sense my feelings as I can him. We continue to drive to school, and Bo and Kinsley is waiting there for us. We all decided that skipping out on school might be a good idea, and we all get into Raven's car. We head to a nearby park that I know will be empty, but it's absolutely stunning. We all sit and talk, and we get to know one another more. I honestly can't believe that Bo and Kinsley are mates. That is so exciting. I also learned that we did good masking our scents. So no one knew I was a wolf in a vampire pack, and she was a vampire in a wolf pack. We decided that we would keep it up as Bo wanted to be with Kinsley, and Raven wanted to be with me. So we decided we would stay switched until Thursday. Then Friday, we would stay at our own homes to prepare for the party Saturday. I know my parents will need lots of help from us, all since they have so many coming on Saturday for our party, and many will be staying the night at least, as some are traveling to be here. I am excited to tell my pack and everyone at my party that I have been keeping a secret and that I have found my mate I can't wait to show him of to everyone. Hazley POV Today is the big day. Today is the day Bo and I have officially turned 15. I couldn't be any more happier that I will finally be able to tell the world. I have found my mate and I will get to show him of to the world. I grab my phone seeing that Raven text me. Happy 15th birthday to the most wonderful mate alive. I can't wait to see you tonight. I have missed you and hardly got any sleep last night. I sure hope you slept better than I. He says. I reply. Thank you baby actually I didn't sleep good at all I don't think I slept last night to be honest. I kept waking up looking for you. But then I remembered. You weren't here. And I was at home and not with you. He replies. I will make sure you sleep very well tonight as I won't leave your side my love. I reply. I know you won't baby and I can't. Wait can you by any chance get here early? He replies, Unfortunately, I don't think that will be possible, as I will be droving my parents, sister and brothers to the party tonight. I will try my best though, love. I reply, Okay, thank you, baby. I also send him a picture of me, in a very revealing outfit. It was a very sexy nightgown, set its see-through on the sides of the shorts, and the whole back is open revealing a lot of my body. He replies, You're going to need spankings for that one my love fuck I am lucky. I love you. He also sends me a picture of him in his boxers, and his man is standing tall in those boxers. He is so big that it looks like his boxers are going to tear. I reply, Oh man I can't wait to see you tonight. I just miss those lips and that touch. I love you but you're killing me with teasing me. He replies. Now you know what I go through daily my love you're a little tease. I smile knowing I am getting to him. I don't reply currently since I know I need to grab a shower and get dressed. I pull a very beautiful short ball gown type dress out it's white with baby blue and has diamonds all over it. And it's very beautiful. I also grab a light blue strapless bra and matching thong it's see through and very sexy. I then head in and grab a shower. Once I am out I put in my dress and I do my makeup and hair. I put my hair half up leaving some bangs down and curling all my hair. My parents made it clear that today is a very big day for Bo, and I and we are not to help with anything, but instead enjoy our youth and birthdays while we can. I mind link Bo. Happy birthday brother. Today is the big day I am so excited I say. 
Happy birthday, Paisley. Are you ready to let mom and our dads know? He asks. Yes, I say. The mind link is cut. I finish getting ready, letting my hair and nails completely set. I am so nervous and excited for tonight. I know I am ready for everyone to know that I now have my mate. But I am scared as to what his parents and my parents will think. And I am so glad Kinsley is Bo's mate. Five hours later. Raven's POV. Time has sure not been nice to me today, as time has went so slow. We are now all on our way to my mate's pack, and I am honestly nervous, and I don't know why I have seen her so many times, and I have met her brother. All I have left to meet is her family, and I guess that is what is making me nervous, as I am 22, and she is just turning 15. But I won't ever take advantage of her, nor will I push her into anything she doesn't want to do. After a 25-minute drive we are finally pulling up to her family's castle. My hands are sweating and my heart is racing. I act as normal as possible. But it's really killing me waiting to see my beautiful princess. I decided to wear a dark blue tux with a matching tie along with a white white blue shirt. I just hope I look good enough for this event. My family and I walk into their house. Welcome to my family's home, a woman said standing next to a blushing Paisley. Mom, this is my friend Kinsley, her brother Raven, and I am guessing this is her mother Rita, and father Roy along with her other brother Vincent, and Gray Paisley says making me smile. I reach my hand out to shake her mother, and father's hands Paisley, is unique. She has two fathers, and a mother her mother, had two mates, and I just hope I never have to share her, with anyone as I don't do good at sharing what is mine. All three of them greet me back, and shake my hand, they seem very nice, and understanding, so I just hope they can accept me for their daughter's mate, and not judge me for my age. We all walk into their home, and it's beautifully decorated in pink and blue all throughout, and fifteen everywhere. They are very loved by their parents. I am glad that my mate was treated so well and my sister's mate was also treated very well. I know most people are going to be surprised that we both have found our mates at young ages, but my mate is still a kid. But she is very mature for her age, and she is very capable for making choices on her own. Wolves also tend to mate at younger ages, as they need to have pups, and they usually don't live as long as we do, but my mate will live as long as I do, or much longer, as once we mate, she will become part vampire, as I will become part wolf and I will also gain a wolf. The party is going very well, and there is a man that keeps touching my mate I swear. If he doesn't keep his paws of of her, I will rip his head right of. I walk over to my mate. Hello, I say looking at Paisley with a flirty smiles. Hey, she said as this man holds on to Paisley and pulls her to him. Harley get out of me let me go she yelps. You best listen to her, as I won't ask. I will remove you, I say anger clearly showing. I don't care any more, I refuse my mate to be forced into anything. Man, get out of here, are you even our age? The man known as Harley spits out at me. Let me go, Paisley says. I say no more and I grab the guy, and I remove him of my mate and push him against the wall. Don't ever touch a woman against her will, she asked you to stop, and to let her go. If another woman ever asks you to let them go ever again, I expect you do just as she asks I say, as I let the man go rushing over to check my mate and ensure she is all right. After close inspection, she has a few red marks that will go away very fast, but other than that she is all right. 
and I couldn't be more thankful I'd pull her into me and hold her tightly. I smell her wonderful scent, and she smells like the ocean and chocolate. Paisley's POV. Raven has been amazing. He knew I was in distress, and he came to my rescue, and he ensured my safety and well-being, and I couldn't be more thankful for him once he pulled me into a tight hug. I took in a deep breath, and he smells amazing the more time. Goes on the stronger, and better I can smell him, and feel the mate bond. He smells like pine and caramel, my favorite. I can't get enough of him. I honestly am thankful that Harley is not my mate, as he has shown his true colors. I am so thankful that Raven is my mate, and I got lucky to have such a great man. It's time to tell everyone our little secret bow, and I walk to the stage, and right in front of the stage stands Raven and Kinsley smiling proudly. They both are nervous, but they are hiding it. Hello everyone, thank you all for coming to celebrate our special day, as not only did we turn 15, but we also both have found our mates earlier this week. As you all know Kinsley, looks identical to me, and her, and I have switched places, and that is how we both met our mates Raven Black, is my mate and Kinsley Black, is both mate we are very happy, and they are both very great mates I say, as I motion for them both to come to the stage to join us. Raven comes alongside me holding onto me proudly, and Kinsley approaches Bo and hugs onto him proudly. It doesn't take long for my parents and Raven's parents to come to the stage. Raven, she is so young, but we will not question the mate bond. We are very glad that you have found your mate before expected. As for you, Kinsley... How you're only fifteen it's never been spoke of such a young vampire. Meeting their mate my dear Raven's mom says. Thank you mom and dad Raven says pulling me closer to him. Well I don't know how it is possible. But I do know that I am very happy he is my mate. As he is strong kind caring loving. And the best mate ever Kinsley says with a smile on her face. I am not trying to pry. But how old are you, my dad? Mav asks. Well, sir, I am 22. I will be 23 in September, Raven says. I don't much mind the age, but I would like you to respect my daughter, and please, don't force her into anything she is not ready for. But if she is anything like her mother, I know it won't be long before you can't resist her, he says. Dad. He won't force me we have already talked, and he is the one who wants to wait until I am sure that I am ready I say. Well, she has been a bit hard to resist, as she is very good at teasing, but I promise I will always respect her and never push her into anything she doesn't want Raven says. I told you honey that your genes run strong through our kids. Well Raven... I wish you good luck then, and I sure hope you have a high drive son dad says, causing me to blush. Hum, I must get my want and need from my mom. I couldn't help but blushing. My parents and Raven's parents couldn't help but laugh. They all seemed very happy that we have found our mates. Mom whispers in my ear. If you're anything like me don't worry about wanting it fast it's okay. It's not only the mate bond, but your sex drive honey, when you're ready you will know, she says, and I smile. Like mother, like daughter, I am ready, I just want to give Raven time. To know I am ready, I say quietly. You know vampires have good hearing and I heard all you whispered. Know that when you want it you can have it, anything you want will be granted, he whispered to me. I am glad he heard, that... But I won't try to turn him on just yet, as I want to plan something very nice for him, and make it very memorable. I want to ensure that he will never forget our first time, even though I am sure it's not possible to forget. Raven, 
Are you still a virginity? I ask knowing that he is years old in vampire. So most likely he is not and I can't even be mad as I am only 15 and I already have wanted him since I first met him. Yes, I am still pure my love and I know you are as well babe. When the time is right we will both know and we will make sure it's perfect for us both he says and I can't believe he was thinking the same thing as me. Raven, Bo, Paisley, and Kinsley, after the party is over all of us need to discuss living arraignments amongst the parents and ourselves. A couple hours later everyone is leaving AMD. We all head to the office to discuss the arraignments. There is me and Raven Bo and Kinsley their parents and our S. Okay, I will talk first and state how I feel I honestly know the mate bond and how it's impossible to keep your distance once you have met and we want you guys to grow together. So we feel it would be best as Paisley and Raven stay here in Paisley's room since Paisley is the next alpha queen bow. I feel the choice is yours and Kinsley and her parents we will support your choices, Dad says. I as well feel that is a great idea, and I will allow my daughter to choose where she wishes to spend most of her time. But know that at any time, you may stay at the other's house, as well as for you and Raven. If you guys wish to come spend time, or a few days with us, you will be welcome, Mr. Black says. As I don't know about you, Bo, but I would like to stay here during the week and spend weekends at my parents' castle at least. For now give everyone time to adjust to me, having a mate since Seth, and a few others like to flirt with me, and I don't need you to lose control, Kinsley says. If you wish for that then you shall receive the decision is yours, and I will always approve. Bo says, he is so love-struck and in love with her I am happy for them. We all decided that on weekends, we would all stay with Raven's mom and dad, and during the week, we would stay at our parents. My parents will have a lot to teach Raven and prepare him to become king alongside me. It's been a long day, I am ready to shower and get out of this dress and into something more comfy. Raven and I head into my room. Raven, you can go get a shower first, if you would like I say. Okay, but I don't have any clothes here right now, he said. I will grab you some clothes, as I am sure we have plenty for you to where I walk, and knock on my parents' door, and ask, if they have clothes that Raven, could wear, and they do have clothes for him to wear, they give me about four outfits and four sets of sweats, and Mom grabs me a new pack of boxers for him. I quickly walk into my room, and Raven is in the shower. I walk into the bathroom with a set of PJs and boxers, and I place them on the counter, and I look over into the shower, and the sight I see is pure goddess. I hurry and take my clothes of and climb into the shower with him. You're playing a very dangerous game, my love, he says, kissing my lips. As I know I brought you in clothes, but I suddenly couldn't resist you anymore. It's okay to see one another. We will wait for sex. But who says we can't play a lil? I say very seductively. You're very naughty, my love, he says, and I say nothing, only kissing him and wrapping my arms around his neck, pulling him close to me. He picks me up holding me, and I can feel his man poking me, but I am not scared, as I know he won't hurt me, and he wants to wait, as well, and whatever happens, happens. I don't much mind, I know he is my forever, and I couldn't be more ready than I am now. He kisses me passionately and moves to my neck and breasts. I can't help the moans that slip out of my mouth. He shuts the water of and takes me to the bed laying me on the bed. Do you trust me? He asks and I nod my head. 
He spreads my thighs and starts to rub my clit, and it felt so very nice, and I was very pleased. Then he puts his mouth sucking and kissing my pussy. I am scream moaning, as I know I won't last much longer, and it won't be long before I am coming. Oh, Raven, yes, yes, oh my, yes, I say. I push his head harder into my pussy, and he gets harder. I am moaning and screaming his name. I lose it, and I come all over his face. He is fast to lick up all my juices. I want to return the favor and make him feel as good as he has made me feel. So I start to suck on his dick, and I keep on sucking and trying new things, as this is my very first time, and I don't really know what I am doing. But by the sounds of it, I am doing something right, as he is a moaning mess. Fuck, baby Raven says, as he pushes me deeper onto his cock. I can't take it all, so I try to swallow it, and it works. Raven lose it and comes down my throat. Baby, that was amazing. You're a professional. That felt so good, he says, and I smile. We both go get a fast shower and get dry dove, and he helps me dress and carries me to bed. Let's rest, my love. I know I am tired, as it was a long day. I love you so very much, princes. I am exhausted as well. I love you so very much, Raven. I say, kissing his head. He holds me close to him, and we both drift off to sleep. Bo's POV. Today has been a long day, and I am very glad that I am finally able to relax with Kinsley. We both have showered, and are laying in bed now. She is laying on my chest. And I have my arms draped around her, holding her close to me. Bo, can I ask you something? She asks. Ask me anything I say. Are you ready to mate? She asks. I am very ready. My wolf is going crazy with want and need for you, but I don't want to do anything until you are sure you are ready, as this is a very special moment for the both of us, and I want to be sure. That we both have great time, and we need to be sure we are ready. I say honestly. Well, I am ready, but I think we should wait and let it happen on its own, babe. She says. I agree, my lovely. Now let's get some sleep. I say, pulling her close and holding her against me. It doesn't take any time at all for us to fall asleep, as today was exhausting for all of us. Easily POV. It's been a few months and everything is going absolutely great, and I couldn't be any more pleased. Raven and I have decided to wait to mate until closer to the suspected battle. We know we will be seventeen, and Bo and I are still currently fifteen at this time. Bo and Kinsley have decided to wait a bit, as well as it is common that once mated, we will become pregnant, and given our ages. We thought it would be best to wait some since we do have an upcoming battle. Six months later, Kinsley's POV. Bo and I have finally decided to mate, and we planned it all out. I am currently in town, picking up some fruits like strawberries, pineapple, cantaloupe, watermelon, and others. I also picked up some caramel and chocolate dip for them. I wanted tonight to be special for him, and I, as it is both of our very first times, I decided to come alone. Well, other than one guard, I am alone, and he tends to keep his distance and give me the space I need to shop. I don't know why, but I feel like I am being watched, and everywhere I look, I see nothing or no one. I don't know why I feel this way, but I don't like it at all. I walk into a store that sells very sexy lingerie. I am looking around, and I find a black lace baby doll outfit with baby pink trim. It also comes with matching bra and panties. I am in love with this set. I head into the changing room, and I try it on, and it looks so good on me. I know this is perfect, and it will make our night more special. It really makes my eyes pop, and I couldn't love this outfit any more.
I stand in the mirror, and I take a couple pictures of me in this outfit. I hear something and when I turn to look there is a male figure that grabs me. He pushes a needle into my neck, and I know by the pain it is causing me that it is a natural tranquilizer for our kind. Why did I let this happen? Why wasn't I more careful? Is all I keep thinking to myself. Unknown POV. I have been following my future maid around all day at this mall. I know what her intentions are. She is going to mate with that dirty vampire. That's right, I am taking Paisley, and I am going to keep her. For myself, she will be my mate before long forced, or not she will answer to me. I hurry into the changing room to sedate her. It works on wolves and vampires because I don't know if she has mated with Raven yet, so I took all the precautions I needed to. She looks amazing in the lingerie she is wearing and it pisses me off that she wants to impress that pig of a man. She should be modeling it for me and not him. It makes me so angry. I carry her out through the back, where I got a few rouges, waiting to help me take her to my new pack. It's a rouge pack, but she will fit right in, and she will make a great Luna. I know she will take a lot of training, and she might need discipline, but I will take proper measures for her to respect me and treat me as her mate. Kinsley's POV I hear a man talking, and he is confused he thinks, I am Paisley I don't know if I should pretend to be her, or if I should tell him that I am not her. Mom, Dad, Raven, and all other I was taken from the mall a man has me, and he thinks I am Paisley I don't know what he wants of me, but he has drugged me, and I don't know where I am am, but I do know the guy seems to know a lot about Paisley from growing up. I don't know who he is but I am scared I say through our Mindlink. The Mindlink will work for all families and mated vampires, no matter the distance. I have no idea what to tell this man, or what I should do. Tell him who you are and see if he will believe you or not and then give us as much information you can. Stay safe, we will be coming back for you, Mom says. You can clearly tell she is worried and concerned not only for my well-being, but also as to what he wants with Paisley. I can feel the anger from them I have to push them to the back of my mind. I start to move and I can't move far as I am being held by something I look and its chains holding me. Look who is awake, the man says. What do you want with me, I say. Oh, Paisley, don't play with me. You know you were meant to be mine, and mine, only that fucking pig of a mate you have will never be good enough for you, he says. Who are you, I say. Don't play stupid with me. I am the one who was supposed to be your mate. I was supposed to be your first, and last everything he spits at me, clearly getting angry with me. Sir, I don't know who you are but I do know that you are mistaken. I am not Paisley, I am Kinsley. She and I look identical, and I am mated to Bo, and she is mated to my brother Raven, I say honestly. Smack! He just smacked me hard across the face, and now I know he doesn't believe me. You lying bitch don't ever tell me another lie, I know you're Paisley, he says. What is your name, I ask. You know my name, he says, as he smacks me once more. I am not only your mate, but I am the man who has grown with you, he says. I am honestly scared to ask him anything else, as I don't want him to keep hitting me. My head already feels heavy. I lay my head back showing that I can't take much more. He gets pissed but he walks away from me. I am hoping he doesn't come back. He said he is Paisley's mate, and he has grown with her, and she was supposed to be his, and not Raven's mate. He claims that he is taking back what is his, and he will have me. When I told him that I was not her it earned me smacks across the face, I don't know who he is or what he wants.
but I do know that I can't take much more please talk to Paisley and ask her who he might be I say as I cut the mind link. Paisley's POV. Raven just came charging in toward me. Kinsley has been kidnapped and they think she is you. He said that he was supposed to be your mate and not me, and he is going to mate and mark my sister. He doesn't believe that she isn't her Raven rambles. I know exactly who he is, Harley remember at my birthday the man that kept grabbing me, and you told him to keep his hands of me it's him. He was so mad that I wasn't his mate, and he wanted to be my mate, since we were kids. All I know is that after that night he left, and he hasn't been back. I will talk to my dads and mom, and see if they might know where he went or who he is with or what is going on I say. We had a meeting and we think that Kinsley is being held in the new pack in the woods, about two hours from here, but we got word that Rouges are forming a pack, and they are new to the area and new knows much else. I know we have to try to find her fast, before he hurts her any more. Gosh this was supposed to be me, and she doesn't deserve this at all. Please moon goddess, keep her safe, as she is innocent, and has done nothing to deserve this fate. Please lead us in the right direction. Bo is a wreck, and he is pacing back and forth screaming, that it's all my fault, and I am the one who got his mate taken. Well, he is right, but I never wanted this to happen to her. My parents and my mate are trying to get him to calm down, and he finally realizes that I am not to blame, and that Harley is the only one to blame. I feel awful, but we are all working to find Kinsley and keep her safe. Kinsley's POV I am being held in a room that has ground dirty floors. I don't even have a bed or anything to lay on. I am going to have to lay on the floor. To sleep there is no bathroom or anything. It's a big empty room with only me and the walls and dirt floors. I can hear men's voices approaching me and I know it won't be long before they are here. I just hope he doesn't hit me anymore. A couple minutes later, are you ready to admit that you are Paisley yet? He says pulling my hair back to look at him. Yes I am whoever you want me to be I say, as tears are forming in my eyes. That's more like it he says as he kisses me, causing me to pull away and spit. That earned me another hit and a kick to the ribs. You will not pull away from me he shouts at me, causing me to curl into a ball, holding my ribs. He grabs me roughly by my arm, and he pulls me to stand. He doesn't say anything, he just pulls me to him, holding me, kissing my head, and rubbing my body. I am crying, I can't hold it back any longer, knowing that this pig is going to try to force me to be his mate. Please find me before it's too late. I am scared, as I want to keep my virginity for my mate as that who it was meant for. He throws me to the ground and tell me to sleep. I don't say anything I just lay on the cool dirt ground, and I go to sleep as I need to keep my strength. The next morning. Here eat something he says as he hands me a plate. On the plate there is one egg and one piece of toast, along with a water. I am very hungry I grab the food and I eat it. I drink my water. Sir, I need to use the bathroom I say. Find a spot and go he says. Can you please leave until I am done I say. I am your mate I will not leave he says. Great jut great. This is bullshit I can't even go to the bathroom alone. I slide back on the floor and just sit there. I refuse to bathroom in front of this man. He is not my mate, and he will never be my mate. This man refuses to leave my side, and I can't wait much longer. I will pies myself before I drop my pants in front of him. One of his men come in. Alpha, may I speak to you, he says. Yes, 
Let's go outside, the man who took me said. They both go outside. This is the only change I have. I hurry over to the corner, and I drop my pants, and I pee as fast as I can. Once I am done, I kick dirt over it to cover it and set back onto the floor. I just realized that this man must have changed me, as I am no longer in the lingerie outfit. I was in. I am not in loose jeans and a baggy shirt. None of these clothes are mine. This man has seen way too much of me. A couple minutes later, the man comes back in. Looks like we have some guests, he says, as he kicks me two times in the ribs. I don't say anything. I just scream and cry from the pain shooting through my ribs and stomach. Wait, he said someone was here, and he was mad. Maybe they found me. I pull my head up a little. Help, please, someone help me! I scream. That earns me a few more kicks to the head and stomach. I can't help but to scream out in pain. If I can't, have you then noon? Will he says as he keeps kicking and hitting me over and over. I start to fade in and out. Get out of your Harley. She is innocent. You are an idiot. You couldn't even take the right person. Now leave her alone, you pig! A woman shouts, and I know it's Paisley. There is no way there is two of you, he says, sounding mad. Well, there is, and I demand you to leave her alone. She shouts at him, coming closer. Kinsley, I am here. Don't worry, you are safe, she says. Bo is all I can mumble. He is fighting, and he will be here soon. I am to get you and to take care of this pig. She says as she lunges at that man I now know as Harley. She is fighting hard, trying to take him down, but he is a strong male. But she is even stronger. After about ten minutes, she has taken him down. Once he is laying limp, she comes rushing over to me. She breaks the chains, holding me, causing her to cry out in pain. The chains have burnt her skin. She scoops me into her arms and starts to carry me out of the room and takes me towards safety. As soon as the sun shines on it, it causes me to close my eyes, as it is too bright for me at this time. Once my eyes adjust, I open my eyes and see that the fight is about over, and everyone comes rushing towards me to check on me. Bo and Raven are the first ones to us, and Bo grabs me out of Paisley's arms, and Raven grabs Paisley and pulls her close. Bo keeps checking me over, and he is growling. Bo, I am all right. It's just a few bruises and probably broken ribs, but they will heal fast, I say. And he lets out another growl. He carries me towards the car that is waiting nearby. He gently places me into the car, and he gets in beside me, and the car rushes back towards what I am assuming as home. I am really all right, but now doesn't want to listen to me at this time. He needs the DR to look me over so he can believe that I am actually okay. Bo refuses to let me go. He is holding me close. Once we reach his pack, he rushes me out of the car and into the pack hospital. They are all waiting and are ready to check me over. I am all right, really. I just got some broken ribs, most likely that will heal, and bruises and cuts. But I am fine, I say. They all rush around and take crays and other blood tests. They determine I am all right. I do have broken ribs. But they have already started the healing process, and I will be better before long, maybe a day.